senses that you can't confess I'm just your ghost if we're not undressed A part of me wish that we never met But you act like we never Got too wasted in the bathroom of your parents' house Then you kissed me in the backseat of a taxi ride And we said things that were cheesy But we meant them that were feelings And now you deny it You're in love with the idea of me But you're not in my reality Find it hard to leave a picture in Cause my reality is your reality That you can't confess I'm just your ghost If we're not undressed A part of me wish that we never met But you act like we never Got to waste it In the bathroom of your parents' house Then you kissed me In the backseat of a taxi ride And we said things that were cheesy But we meant them There were feelings And now you deny it You're in love But you're not in my reality Find it hard to leave a picture in me It's my reality, it's your reality
Welcome everyone to the World Esports Championships 2023 Africa Regional Qualifiers. We are going to see uh, many amazing esports uh, titles starting with Dota 2, then moving to the PUBG Mobile. And uh, last but not least, the CSGO, uh, one of which is going to be the female version and then uh, into the male version. We are going to start today with the Dota 2 tournament uh, and we are going to see uh, two regions playing. The first one is uh, Northern Western Africa and then we are going to move to the South Africa. Uh, both of these matches that we are going to see today are in the BO3 format. The first one will be Egypt uh, versus Morocco. Then we are going to move to the Egypt versus Algeria. Uh, I think we are going to see amazing uh, games today. And uh, I also hope you will be enjoying this stream. Uh, the Dota 2 tournament is uh, right now from today uh, to the Sunday. And uh, yeah, then we will move to the PUBG Mobile. And as I say, the last but not least is the CSGO. Uh, so. The first game at uh, 16 uh, is uh, Egypt versus Morocco. Then uh, from 9:30 we are going to see Egypt versus uh, Algeria. And uh, also, I hope the casters are ready to go to the first game. I actually don't know what to expect from the first matchup. We know that uh, in the Africa there is uh, not so much esports tournaments, uh, and that's uh, very good news from this region because uh, the VAC is planning to do more of these, and I hope it will uh, prove this uh, region as well. So yeah, I hope the casters are now uh, ready. Let's go to the Otomo and uh, Robert and roll is up to you guys mm -hmm. okay there we go welcome in everybody as we get ready for this first game here it is going to be egypt versus morocco uh atomo as we get ourselves into it how are you doing today but as we get ourselves into the uh the regional qualifiers i'm good i'm glad to be here doing isf again i did uh, south A south asia last time and now i'm doing it with you and uh yeah it's it's cool it's nice to i love these tournaments where it's like country versus country you know where you get uh sort of like a national level it gets to increase a little bit so it's a lot of fun and i'm uh yeah as i said it's awesome to be here with you yeah uh, i'm looking forward to i'm looking forward to seeing what um a new region brings to dota obviously i've been doing a lot of these european stuff so i'm looking forward to seeing what um when we get into the draft you know how different it's gonna be you know what they've uh what matter they kind of evolve around and how they're gonna try and play this one and yeah see how this one's gonna go yeah, I imagine teams will just pick sort of what they like, you know, and uh, certain regions might have, like some countries might have a bit of advantage, for example, like Philippines, where it's like you see, you know, they have enough pro players to make a legitimate national team, but other countries, maybe they might struggle. But I mean, like Jordan has Miracle, for example, so they'll have a good chance. I don't think Jordan's competing. We only have uh, three countries uh, right? What we're going to be showcasing, you know, right now. So eh, it's a little unfortunate. It's going to be Egypt versus Morocco in game one. And... I don't know. I 
I wonder which team we're we're gonna was gonna come out on top. I hope it's not gonna be like just one pup stump after another. That would be the worst thing possible. Yeah, no, we're all here for a game of Dota, and hopefully it is going to be two best of threes that we're going to be watching today. So hopefully, you know, we're going to see all three best of threes, uh, all three games of the best of threes, and uh, yeah, be able to get as much Dota in today as possible. Um, as I do believe we're going to be able to move ourselves into the draft, so we're going to see already uh, the Win Ranger coming out with the Witch Doctor here for Team Morocco, and Spirit Breaker and Void Spirit for Team Egypt. Bans mm -hmm. coming through, Techies, Clinks, Batrider, Queen of Pain, Bounty Hunter, Doom, Magnus, and the Knicks. So anything there that pops out to you right away that Ten may be a little remaining. bit different that we might you know be in for a treat with uh the witch doctor is very rare right remaining. not saying this here being picked up much uh he has been receiving a lot of his heal i, I was checking the other day it's 46 uh health and damage uh, and it's like 650 radius it's massive yeah. um and we might see something like an io pop up we've seen the core witch doctor it can work um probably it's gonna be position five but other than that the other heroes seem very standard spirit breaker Good 3-4, Void Spirit, good mid, apparent, can be played as a carry, Wind Ranger, just good core overall. Radiant so, team it's only the Wish Doc that really is crazy to me. Yeah, um, I, I I know we've seen, I mean, I've seen the Wind Ranger popping up the past couple of weeks as well. Um, and I know that in high level pubs, it, it's it's really popping off, but it doesn't seem to yep. be that well in um, the pro games. Is it just yep. down to team coordination in pro seconds, games where three. the Wind Ranger isn't that effective, I guess? I'm not really sure because when I whenever I say Wind Ranger, I get the same impression that she's not that impressive. Like mm -hmm. Void Spirit, everyone picks her, and I see that here win a lot or at least do really well. Like I'm yeah. always impressed. Wind Ranger, um, her damage is very high, but oftentimes she feels like a very jack of all trades, master of none hero. She's not the amazing the lane say she's decent. She's not amazing at killing people. She's decent. Her damage is you know decent. There's nothing mm -hmm. about her that really stands out as amazing to me. Uh, Wind Run's kind of good, but. It's like the hero requires so much, you know, if you yeah. defuse a maelstrom maybe to her damage, but that takes a lot. I don't know. I'm, I've never been a big fan of the core Wind Ranger. Maybe she's actually better as a support because of her high damage. Uh, maybe. I mean, I know she likes to still build into the Glimpnir, so I know mm -hmm. a lot of people are going uh, Rod of Atos first just for the stats. Um, yeah, I'm surprised actually the Medusa got all the way through to the end of round two on the band. Same with the Bloodseeker there as well, and the Wind Range of the Witch Doctor coming out. So maybe neither team planning to actually get the chance to pick up that Medusa there and just letting it slip through. Obviously, Morocco going to ban it out in the second phase. But yeah, Spirit Breaker, Void Spirit coming out for Team Egypt. Very strong combination already. You know, the Spirit Breaker, whether he's played as the three or the four, uh, yep. it seems to be rocking it wherever he goes. And the Void Spirit, I mean, what else can you say about him? He just builds these mega stats, and he'll get so much damage. Damage and it's really hard to stop him from popping off in the game coming into that mid to late game so i'm interested to see how team morocco are going to try and deal with it and they go for the oracle coming out here and by the way i do like uh, one thing about the wind rangers which you mentioned was rod of atos first really good against uh, the void spirit and the spirit breaker you know like these guys will be charging around once if they want to be as small as possible rob you can dodge it for the void spirit but at least the spirit breaker you can lock him down an oracle comes out. I've seen this combo where you use the fortune's end on a charging spirit breaker, and it's like extra damage and lockdown when he lands. It's a bit gimmicky, but uh, it's still a fine hero. And brewmaster for Morocco. So Wind Ranger going to be either the one or the two. And the great team fight from the brewmaster. You keep the oracle up six seconds. You can dispel the bulldoze with the tornado. So it's also like just a very solid hero to have right now. I'm gonna have to check the brewmaster just to be sure I'm not saying something crazy. Yeah, um, I'm his abilities, his abilities well, change a lot, you know, yeah. so I don't, I don't want to be wrong. Radiant um, and yeah, no, I don't actually see him all that often. So, I mean, uh, again, this is what we're talking about Team Morocco. Um, They've got something that they've wanted to go into with the, the Witch Doctor and the, the Brewmaster. Obviously, got a plan for this one. So we'll see, you know, what they're going to be able to do as we are going to be able to see the rosters on screen as well. Just a quick flick at those before we get into the actual game here. Um, and yeah, players that, again, I'm not quite aware of, you know, have you, have you heard any of these names? No, but I do know what one of them means. In e the, one of the players in Egypt is, uh, he says, Inna illa wa which means, which is what from God we came from, to him we'll go after we die. So it's basically telling people that I'm going to murder them. So I like the. <laughs> I like okay. when a guy's you know got a cocky name like that. I don't think any of the Moroccan names are something that uh, like has a special meaning or anything. 
Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, I'm interested to see how they're going to be able to play with this. You know, new players coming into it. And I think we'll be able to take a look at the, the groups as well, just to see yeah, Egypt, Morocco, Algeria, all playing for that spot here to get through um, in these qualifiers. So I'm interested to see how it's going to go. Obviously, we've got two games today. We have the third coming up tomorrow, which is going to be you and Kips. And then potentially yep. into tiebreakers if needed. So it could be a full day of Dota for you and Kips. Uh, but yeah, here today, it is going to be um, Egypt playing. I think it's Morocco and then Egypt playing, uh, I know it's Morocco, I'm looking at the screen, I know it's Morocco, and then Egypt playing uh, Algeria is the second best of three, and yeah, we've got the Northern African qualifiers today and tomorrow, and then the Southern African qualifiers on Sunday, so looking forward to that as well, and I think we'll be able to get ourselves back into the draft, just to see how the rest of this has gone, um, as we're seeing a Sven and a Rubik coming out, um, and again, yeah, Rubik's dropped off a little bit since 7.33, yeah. he was a proper big hero, you know, one of the, the most picked supports in 7.32, what changed on this hero that made him, you know, not be as popular coming into 7.33? I'm not sure what the patch log exactly for it, but I feel like there's just better fours. The Spirit Breaker, the Clinks, the mm. uh, obviously Techies is just premium number one position four. Seems like yeah. they're just better options that to have than other than the Rubik. Uh, that's really how I'm seeing it. And uh, I want to go to something. Team Egypt, they go for Sven, and then Brewmaster, he does have a Dispel Magic ability. It's literally called Dispel Magic. The Cyclone does not Dispel, but this is an AoE Dispel, so you right. can remove Warcry on everyone. Like, it's not that hard to do with the Storm Panda. So a bit surprising to see the the Sven come out. He's not very meta to begin with, and yeah. I don't think he's amazing as the Brewmaster either. You got strength, he puts you in the air. Yeah, and with that purge as well, um, you've got to worry the Sven's going to be counted out by the Wind Ranger because the Wind Ranger, you know, once that Focus Fire starts going, can literally run circles around the Sven. And if the Sven can't True. catch up, you know, if there's a BKB or a Lincoln's in there as well, the Wind Ranger, the, that Storm Hammer, not going to be effective. So um, I'm interested to see how e Team Egypt are going to play around this Sven. You know what they're going to be able to do with it, but I'm kind of worried this Wind Ranger, if it is when it is looking like that position one Wind Ranger, hell, even a position two where Wind Ranger, it's just going to pop off against this fan, and this fan might be in a lot of trouble coming into the mid to late game fights. Mm, I don't know. I kind of prefer this Sven over the Wind Ranger. Yeah, I agree with the show on circles, but Sven can just char focus on other people. You know, the Witch Doctor, the Rubik, he can bring them down with a couple of hits. And uh, Wind Ranger, you can't control. You have Void Spirit, Oracle, and Spirit Breaker. Like you, there's a lot of control and a good amount of armor from this Sven. So I'm not. Like, I get what you mean, but I can't say I quite agree with you but we're getting to the last pick morocco seems like egypt they're not they're they're banning out the core the carry sorry so they do feel yeah. like it's going to be wind ranger mid or at least that there's a carry coming out i wouldn't mind alchemist because you look at team egypt sven's going to take some time farming you're going to mix stacks for him you're going to like you know he wants to farm so why not take an alchemist for yourself and be play the par farm game with a better version of the sven i'd say yeah um I don't know if I'd like to see something like a Terra Blade here as well. You know, big tank Ooh, yeah. deals with the physical damage. Uh, there's not a lot of AoE magic damage coming out on the side of Team Egypt as well to try and deal with these illusions. Could it be the Ursa Burr, though? So, yeah, again, if it's going to go, go man... So it looks like it is going to be the mid-wind ranger. And if it's a man-mode fight between the Sven and the Ursa Burr, you know, you look at these two heroes, and I I can only see one winner here, and it's going to be the Ursa Burr. Okay. Venomancer in the off lane. I, yes. I assume here coming up against the Ursa. I've seen Venomancers ruin Ursas. All that like I'm not saying like oh from the you know from the the mid game fights when he starts to get the the cat. I'm talking from the very get go of the laning stage. This Ursa cannot approach the creeps, cannot approach any farm at all, and just gets absolutely ruined by a Venomancer in the off lane. So I mean it was a quick pick as well. So maybe they knew if the the Ursa came out, the Venomancer was going to be the idea. Um, and I'm really interested to see how much that how much Ursa is actually going to get out of the lane now with that Venomancer being picked up. Yeah, definitely it's very hard for him to move around. I mean, even the Rubik and the Witch Doctor, you walk in through a couple of Plague Wars, you get slowed down. It's not something you want to deal with in the fights. And the, but I like your point in the lane. And whether it's the Venomancer 3 or 4 or the Spirit Breaker, like, I like that those two together should be enough to control the Ursa. Like, it yeah. should be with bashes and charges and slows. Like, you have multiple slows. Uh, you put in a, uh, what's it called, a Blood Grenade as well on mm -hmm. top of that. Should be very tough. Witch Doctor, though, is one of the best position 5 laners, I'll say. You know, you could you put a Maldic, you put a stun, you get him a couple of times. It's it's pretty good, but he's also squishy. I 
I feel like Egypt wins the off lane, honestly. I don't, I'm, I think it's going to be pretty hard for Morocco to get taken that situation. Uh, mid, oh, you first. Yeah, um, I think, uh, looking at it, I just think it's going to be hard for, even with the Witch Doctor going, like, say, great position five, but I just think it's so hard that even if he gets this mod down, he's going to have trouble getting close to do the damage because he's either just going to be chased down by the uh, the Spirit Breaker or the Venom is just going to take him down from a distance. Yeah, it's uh, it certainly feels like it's going to be like Morocco has like a couple of uh, levels before the mm. the lane becomes unplayable, right? Not playable, but like very hard. Like you have, you know, level one Spirit Breaker is a joke. Level yeah. one Venomancer, you know, you have the Venomous Guild, it's nice, but it's not going to be like winning you the lane. Well, once you approach like level two and three, once you have the Greater Bash with the charge, that's tough. Once you have a couple of points in the Poison Sting, that's also pretty tough. So Morocco, once we're looking at the four or five mint mark, they need to have won the lane by then. Yeah, and hopefully the Rubik will be back, you know, soon. Just going to have a quick pause while you wait for the reconnect. Looks like he's going to be there back in. Yeah, no issues, no dramas here. Um, and yeah, we'll be able to see the lineup from both sides coming through. Um, uh, again, how do you think this Brewmaster is going to do? Because it is a hero that we don't see picked up, or at least I don't see picked up very often. So in this offlane Brewmaster up against this fan matchup, d d is there a specific way you think it's going to go? I think it's going to be a farm fest, honestly. I don't imagine that mm -hmm. either side can really get kills. Like, Yurubik, it does, gives you decent offensive power. Oh, but smoke. But yeah. Morocco dodges it, going to the west instead of the east, and uh, on, they don't find anyone, but, which is, might be best for them. Egypt, they're camped next to that ward on the cliff, so very dangerous. They got five people there. Morocco, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you want to walk into this. No, pro I mean, they're going to try and go for... Oh, they're going to be in the river as well, so if this oh. smokes break, there might be the advantage, and... Do they... No, they don't. There's just going to be a rotation around. In fact, Killer might be spot here now them. as well. We see the Ursa Stormhammer comes out. Do they have the damage to take them down now as well? They've got the root. They might have the damage to get the kill onto this Ursa bird. And the Ursa is going to be first blood. And the ear... Well, they give it over to the Spirit Breaker. Um, so he's got himself the Orb of Venom. I wonder if that's going to be a full Orb of Corrosion as well. The Orb of Venom's great on a Spirit Breaker. Just being able to chase down like that. Uh, I, unlikely. I don't think you really want Orb of Corrosion on this hero mm -hmm. because most of the time it's like you don't really attack that much. And Orb of Venom gives you what you get what like but one no you get the same amount of slow thirteen thirty. I thought it was one percent more, so it doesn't really help you. If it was yeah. Bounty Hunter, I feel like you attack enough with that hero as a position four. It's worth it, but not Spirit Breaker. You're usually charge. You want attack speed, but you don't really care about the more the slow. Yeah. And I think he spots the Sentry. And. Do you think we'll see the mid lane here as well? You know, the, the Wind Ranger coming up against the Void Spirit in the mid lane. Um, do you have an idea how this matchup's going to go? Or do you, do you have a favorite coming into this one? Because, I mean, it, we're going to see the Void Spirit going for the Resonant Pulse, going to be able to block the right clicks. But the Wind Ranger, you know, usually builds up onto the power shot. So that coming through, do you think it might be a little bit more and be able to play at a distance as well? So it won't be affected by the Resonant Pulse yeah. damage. Do you think this is a bit more Wind Ranger favored in the mid lane? I think so. I'll give it a bit more to the Wind Ranger. Yeah, I mean, you are going to be taking some damage, and you can see that here, but he should be able to come out top. Like, you know, 60%, 60-40, you know, not not yeah. a big advantage, but I'd favor the Wind Ranger for sure. And do you see the ward they put uh, for Morocco side right behind the tier 1 tower on the on the high ground? That's a interesting one. doesn't give you any vision of the ruins, but can see rotations. Yeah, um, I, I do like that because, I mean, the Void Spirit wants to, like I say, he's going to be committing forward, especially if he wants to get the Harass out onto the Wind Ranger. So it will mean that, you know, he has to play in the river like this and will be susceptible to any gank rotation. So I do like the one that they've got uh, a little bit closer to him. But the one further back, you know, that's going to be defensive for the Wind Ranger as well. Because how many times have we seen it group up? Meanwhile, top lane, we're going to see some damage coming out onto the Ursa. Okay. Charge comes through. Mardik will be cast, but again, Ursa is going to be able to get himself closer to this one. One more right click, Mago. He's going to be able to get the and it's just still going to be a lot of damage onto the Ursa. The Venomancer just, I, again, choking him down. That Venomous Gale comes out, the Poison Sting, and then the charge coming through from Spirit Breaker as well. This Ursa really is going to suffer in this game. I like that, uh, I mean, Crocky used the Malik, but did not use mm -hmm. the Blood Grenade after. And I was thinking, man, Blood Grenade is actually like such a good combination with it, yeah. right? It's like an instant damage instant, and some damage over time, but he decided not to use it in that situation. Uh, kind of... I don't know. I don't think it would have made too much of a difference, but once you hit level 2 Maldict, it could. Yeah, um, and this is why I was thinking when I was reading the patch and seeing the the Blood Grenade in theory, I was thinking which Doctor was going to be one of those top tier supports. Because you do, you you know, you woke up, you throw the Maldict, you get a cask out, and then the Blood Grenade comes afterwards. And you're, all of a sudden, you know, they could be missing half of the health, even more. It could be a kill just from that. 
as once again, top lane, it's going to be the pushback here. But on the bottom lane, Brewmaster, does he get himself away from this one? The Rubik, he's just trying to do what he can with the damage that he can output. But yeah, the Brewmaster has to run himself away. We'll get some purifying flames to, uh, you know, walk himself away with. In fact, Oracle's just going to walk himself right up here to the Brewmaster. And the Brewmaster is going to be in a bit of trouble. But we can see that the Sven is just going to carry on farming here. Stormhammer comes out. They have the stun. Do they actually have the kill that they don't? And should be able to move himself away here, Brewmaster. Egypt off to a great start already. You know, mm -hmm. look at that. Four out of, the top, out of the top four in CS, three of them are on their side. I mean, the, the Venom is equal to the Ursa. Ursa's got two deaths on him. And yeah. Rocky, he's pretty low, so he might die in maybe a charge or maybe just a couple of hits from the Venom answer. <laughs> uh, this is a very tough situation for Morocco to be in. Yeah. Uh, bottom line? Bottom line? I think they're going to be able to get the kill here. There's going to be a lot of damage coming through. It's but... about one more hit. Hmm. Uh, There's about another more hit. The Rubik did turn back. So it looks like, I mean, again, on the top lane, we'll see the Harass coming out. Ursa's trying to get what he can. Um, but on the bottom lane, yeah, you can see just during the health bar, the, the Brewmaster got really darn low there. So it's, again, all over the shop. It seems to be a lot of Harass coming out from the side of Team Egypt. And maybe, you know, Team Morocco not just going to be able to deal with it. Charge comes through onto both of them. And they might be able to take this kill onto the Witch Doctor now as well. The cask will bounce out. The Venom Scale's already been used here. Meet your Bob. Can he get himself away from this one? Will just be able to walk himself out. Crocky has to go for the TP back to base just to make sure he isn't picked off. And it will leave the Ursa Burr alone. I mean, he has a self. But he's had to had to hide himself away from the vision because if the charge comes in and Venom Scale as well, um, Egypt will just be able to take this burr for a ride for the third time and do the damage and get the kill. And yeah, Ursa really struggling in this lane. In fact, I, I wonder if they're going to be able to get a quick tier one tower as well and do the damage that way to get the Ursa completely out of the lane. Because it looks like they're going to be able to get another kill on the Ursa burr in the top lane here. He's being charged. He's being right clicked. He is being killed off once again. I think you might have to consider putting the Rubik top. I mean, Brewmaster mm -hmm. is a fairly independent laner. Like, not exactly completely independent, but he can lane by himself. He hasn't been killed. And, oh, we're going to be losing the Witch Doctor again, aren't we? And now yeah. he comes up. It ain't enough. No. Uh, unfortunately, Brewmaster, he is going for, I think, Arcane Boots' first item. If he had Vanguard, I'd say 100% he can be left alone. Because, you know, that is the item for the offlane. But he's going for yeah. Arcane Boots first. So, um... Yeah, he's going to need some babysitting. It's not quite the same thing. <laughs> yeah, in the bottom lane, it looks like it's going to be both supports going down here. Just taking an eye, uh, keeping an eye on the mid lane here as well. Um, it looks like, I mean, there's going to be the diving onto the wind ranger once again. But do they have the damage here as the, you know, it comes through the 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 void spirit trying to get the dive in but again the wind range with the wind run just able to play himself back um three points of the power shot as well that the void has to be careful of and now we're going to see the level six as well so we see the charge icon coming through from the spirit breaker if we take a look at the map he's just gonna be charging himself right up the mid lane oh, here dear. and wind ranger it is gonna be six minutes but the runes gonna be bottom it's gonna be a regen room but the wind run comes out do they have the damage to get the kill where's that void spirit is he gonna be able to get the remnant off he gets himself yep. forward with the astral step and they do get the kill here onto the wind ranger Everything's going for Morocco uh, for Egypt's way right now. Not only did they get a kill on the mid lane, their mid laner gets a region. Uh, he just spent all his mana. Like it yeah. didn't even have a war. He they just you know it was like, oh really? There's a region. Perfect. And uh, Morocco, you, they're gonna need to sort of tighten up one of the lanes. You know, put the Rubik mm -hmm. top, get the rotations on the Wind Ranger and Ursa. He's being charred. I think he might be losing his life very soon. I'm pretty sure he's dead. The bash comes out onto the win uh, the witch doctor there as well. So there's gonna be the damage coming through. Crocky. He's trying to do what he can with the Maledict, but he's already gonna be down here. He's killed just TP himself to the top lane. So it looks like they might be able to get the kill onto the Oracle. Oracle only level four now as well. The charge down coming out, and this should be at least one kill, but he's gonna be able to get himself away from this one ring win ranger. Even oh, gonna, the Brewmaster's gonna TP in. He's gonna go down. And now it's a level, it's a level four Brewmaster. He even puts items in front of them. Did you see that? I did. did you... Oh. I did. Did he get the kill? Oh. Do? Oh. At least he take down the Venno. It's going to be a decent amount of gold to give over there as well. It looks like it was split. Was it a creep that got the last hit onto the Venomancer? Um, or tower. Or tower. Yeah, yeah, I think or it tower. No, it was yeah, early it was, creep. Yeah. As well. yeah. That's fine. At least he dies, right? Like, that's <laughs> what you need. Yeah. Dude, did you see that? He drops the items. It's like, all right, dude, you know, it's a bit too early to do that. You know, it's a bit... <laughs> No. Uh, just shows how Wait. confident he's, he is at the minute, though. Uh, take a look at the Holy. 
Yeah, the bracket's coming through 78% in favor of uh, Egypt. It's going to be the kill onto Crocky now as well. So you can see that Egypt, they're not going to be sticking around in the lanes. You know, they're, they're not um, too close about keeping the lane structure going. The Sven's getting the farm. Venomance is going to be able to put the pressure onto the Ursa. Everybody else is looking for rotations. They already got the one on the Witch Doctor now as well. Shackle comes out, but the Wind Ranger is going to be taking a lot of damage in the mid lane. And it looks like they're going to be able to get another kill here. Oh, the Rubik just TPs himself into the double bash from Meet Your Bob and into his death as well. I have bad news for you. You want to know it? Uh, do I? How bad is yes. it? It's what? pretty bad. Uh, Egypt got both wisdom ruins, so their supports are starved for their witch doctor is three, and their rubik is four. The enemy supports are both six. Well, actually, the oracle is five and three and three quarters. But uh, yep. Uh, well, it forever as well as got himself the double down during in the mid lane. Got the kill onto the witch doctor again. 13 and 3 at 8 minutes in here. We might even see the Oracle going down. Oracle can get himself away from this one. We are going to see all of the Pandolins come out and get the kill onto the Oracle. What else can he do here, Brewmaster? Looking for the rotation. I mean, Sven is looking pretty darn good in terms of farm. And going to be about 1,200 gold uh, above the Witch Doctor. Uh, if he could go, if he went for the Bounty he could have spot three of them. The Bounty and management is the one thing that you can say, Egypt, they're not really focused on they, you know they want blood it's like we just want to kill as many people as we can and it is go it's going well for me they just lost their the, they just got the mid-tier one but morocco that's something you could try to go for you know the small objectives the bounty ruins and things like that yeah and we'll see killer just continuing to farm out now as well void spirit how's he looking the void spirit's going straight for what looks like the echo server charge coming out to kill once again and killer really not living up to his name here listen like they're gonna be able to get the kill onto the wind ranger he goes down he is one and four on the wind range. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Oracle. There's going to be the false promise coming out now as well. Charge, they've got the kill. Yeah, Crocky. Okay, they get themselves on the board again. 14 to 5. And it's not, you know, too bad if the Ursa can continue to farm. Get himself towards that. Battle Fury. He can catch up. It won't be too far away from him. Um, but, you know, it's about the pressure. You look at where the Venomancer is on the map. He's going to push right up to the tier 2 tower here. And it's going to be rough. For, I, I think for the Ursa to get anything out of this with how rotation heavy Team Egypt are being at the minute. Yeah, we have a Spirit Breaker and a Voice Spirit. You're, you know, mm -hmm. the map is it's a lot smaller than it feels like because he's actually not anywhere. And it's not even a message super tanky. He's literally got what? A couple of bracers, a wind lace, and a magic wand. It's not like he's ultra tanky. He just goes straight up. He doesn't even have vision of the area. And look at that. The Rubik, he's fine. They yep. can't even do anything to him. Um, and I think if he had a bit of backup maybe from the spirit breaker coming over I look at all these plague wards on the, the high ground as well that if anybody tries to come over this they're going to be walking themselves into meanwhile though the ursa burr two heroes charging him down it's gonna be another kill and forever does pick it up four zero and four on the void spirit how many times have you seen a void spirit start the game like this and just go on to be like 20 0 20 by the time the bell actually rings for the end game uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if the game will last long enough for him to even reach 20. But top lane, Bruce Split is used. They might get a kill on the the Venom Man, so he may have, you know, got a little too cocky. Yeah, he might have overextended here as well. There is going to be the stun coming in from Crocky as well. Did they get the kill? As Oracle has rotated in, and they're currently trying to keep this Venom Venomancer alive as well. There's no false promise for the next 10 seconds. If you want to try and turn this one around, he's already used that Noxious Plague. And it, there's going to be the chase down now. Brewmaster trying to get on top of him. Mego, can he get himself away from this one? And they might be able to. They definitely will be able to. They get the kill onto the Rubik, and now they're even going to be able to get the kill onto the Brewmaster. Brewmaster, absolutely no way out forever with a double kill there. And they're even going to be able to put pressure now onto this tier Two. Looks like they're going to go as four once again. If anyone tries to defend this one, Morocco, they're probably going to lose another couple of players. And Egypt, they are just storming ahead at the minute. You got to get your sports level six. Mm -hmm. We have a Rubik who's level five and a half and a, and a Wish Doctor's level almost five. He's like four and like 99% or something like that. But geez, <laughs> man, they are so far behind. You look at what, what, what's the... Spirit Breaker is like almost 8. And he's going for... Uh, this is an interesting item. Solar Crest Spirit Breaker. It does give you movement speed, stats, mana regeneration. This is an item I've never thought of, but it could go really well for the hero, actually. I think it slows enemies, right? Um, 
to us. Yeah. We're going to see a smoke coming out here as well. So we'll see what the Spirit Break is going to be able to do. Um, and yeah, just being able to, like I said, that 18% movement slow. The Shackle comes out before he's going to be able to get the Nerd Strike off now. Forever, though, does he stick around onto this? It looks like they're going to try and go in the middle of four heroes, though. How strong is this Void Spirit, really? Meteor Bob going to come through, gets that Nether Strike off onto the Wind Ranger. The Wind Ranger has gone down. Now the Force Promise onto Meteor Bob. There's going to be a good double Storm Hammer. God Strength comes out. The Ursa Burr will fall. And it looks like the Witch Doctor is going to be the next one to go down. Did he get a full five mana wipe out of this? Meteor Bob trying to do the best. He will go down, but he's set up the stun now forever. Going to look for the chase. What was stolen here on the Rubik, the Rubik gets himself the Astral Step. Void Spirit drops out Remnant, tries to get the kill onto the Rubik here, but it looks like he's going to be the Brewmaster to go down. Oh, Rubik, he's hiding himself in the trees. No, he's going to be seeing the Astral Step right back into the base. It's not going to be a five man, but that's still a great couple of kills there to get four heroes dead on the side of Team Morocco and Egypt. They are absolutely cleaning up. And oh, uh, they go for the stack. It's not the biggest stack, and mm -hmm. now it's only a double, but. Uh, it's still a resource that Morocco was kind of like, yeah, we could really have used that. And we're starting to see the Egyptian supports overtake the cores on Morocco's side. And I am, uh, I shudder to imagine what, what chat is thinking about all this right now. You know, I'm sure they're being very polite and supporting the Moroccan, the Moroccan side. Sure, yeah, that's, you know, we're, we're a polite crowd. As they're going to be able to get a kill onto the Witch Doctor now as well. We're looking at 23 and 6, 13 minutes in. Um, Egypt, yeah, they've come to play. They are here to uh, make win. sure that, yeah, they, I mean, everyone's here to win and they're, they're absolutely guaranteeing it at the minute. 14 minutes Dyer's in. 14 minutes, 14 minutes, 15,000 gold advantage. This is more than the, uh, you know, what we call it, the death net worth or something like that. It's when one thousand, one thousand, you're 1,000 ahead over the other one. It's insane. They do get the wisdom ruin though, so that is something. You get your wish doctor level 6. You have the Death Ward, it does do a lot of damage. Do you remember this used to do 60 damage level 1? Now it does 90. Wild. <laughs> and it looks like the, the Sven Chase down comes out. The Focus Fire will be here, but God Strength, they're going to be able to turn this one around. Charge coming through on the Spirit Breaker now as well. We'll connect to the Wind Ranger as they take down the Rubik. Now the Strike now, but he's already used the Wind Run. He was on cooldown for one second, and the Sven, he's just going to be able to run Riot here. Look at this, he, you've got the Pandalins. They're going to try and run this Earth Panda away, but the Storm Hammer comes through. He's cleaning up Astral Step, even in the Brute Panda form. They get the kill. They've got themselves 26 kills on the board. Forever is running past Godlike, going towards this desolator now as well the charge onto the witch doctor witch doctor oh but this is not where you want it to be here and it will be a kill for the oracle i would be very surprised if they slow down here at all on the side of team egypt they might just look straight towards the high ground straight towards this tier three tower the enemy oracle is more far than all your cores all of them it is I mean, it's Oracle. It's not like you can say, like, oh, it's, you know, a hero that can get locked, like, can farm a lot like a Phoenix or a Jakiro, where they clear keeps. Like, it's Oracle. Yeah. This hero is notoriously bad at farming, and if this Oracle gets a shard on him or drops it from a Tormentor, it's just looking so tough right now. I don't know, man. I don't know how, how, how it gets better. It's... Yeah, it's it's a pretty uphill one. We're taking a look at, you know, we've seen the win probability coming out uh, every so often. We're on 98% now. And look at this, meet your Bob. Yeah, we're just going to be able to take the, you know, the wide view here of him charging up to this one. It's forever. Pops that shield room, but it looks like in the top lane. And we're going to see, you know, the Ursa go down once again. Uh, he's trying to do his best to keep himself alive. But again, the charge coming through. Now the strike did committed. The picky pole will be used here to try and get the Ursa away. But the blink forward, super Rudy. He's got himself a super killing spree here as forever. Godlike, unstoppable. It is coming out. They're getting into the base. But Tomo, I, I don't think this game is going to go for very much longer. No, no, I don't think it's going much longer. Egypt, uh, much longer either. Egypt has it in the bag, basically. Morocco, maybe playing for pride, trying to find some way that they can, I don't know, get something out of it. The thing is, it's not like you have like a pudge or a tiny where you can displace the enemy to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's having fun. For he's he's just having a bit of fun with it. The death one does come out from Crocky. Is that a damage. Damage on top? Yeah. Yeah, they don't get the kill though. Yeah, the Greaves does get popped by the Venomancer. They're going to be able to turn it right back around. Go on to the Witch Doctor. The Witch Doctor on the front lines. Never a great sign here, but the dive comes in as well from Oracle. Do they get the kill onto the Witch Doctor? Crocky, they do. Ego takes him down, and now Forever's going to be able to clean up as well. Ursaberg, he's just trying to run himself away from this one. Killer's going to be able to get himself in now as well. Bruce Blit comes out. Is there enough damage to take down the Spirit Breaker? Maybe. 
maybe not. No, Media Bob just to be able to walk himself away. Storm Hammer comes out from the Sven. They're just cleaning up here on the side of Team Egypt. They've got this draft in. You know, they, they came through, they knew their game plan, and they've absolutely perfected it coming through in game number one. And they're going to be able to get the kill into the Brewmaster. The Brewmaster, no way out of this. They're diving tier four. Yeah. Uh, they're diving behind the Ancient near the Fountain as well. Sven, False Promise comes out. Going to be able to get the heal onto the Sven. He's got that Mask of Banners as well. So some life steal to come through. And this should be the racks going down. Uh, but I gotta say, I really love Meteor Bob's item build with the uh, Solar Crest. I mean, it's one of those things where I'm thinking about. And he's going to be losing his life the moment I, I actually <laughs> praise him. Yeah, he does go down. He might be able to do the kill to the Voice Spirit as well. The Voice Spirit taking a lot of damage. No, Stormhammer going to keep the Ursa locked down in position. The, he gives up nearly 2,000 gold as the Rubik gets the kill. Fuck but, yeah. <laughs> um, Look at this, Guns. They want to go for this. Nine up, they nine up, nine up. The they might even be able to get the kill on the Venomance. So Venom's going to get dragged back. Telekinesis comes through here, but do they have enough to take him down? He has that Greaves. He's going to be able to pop it again. Storm Hammer comes out. Brewmaster going to go down. And Crocky, that's the dieback on the Witch Doctor. Base will be broken. And it looks like, yeah, the Wind Ranger, they're going to see this. They're going to call GG. I uh, can't really blame them, Matt. Uh, 23,000. Four of the top net worth are on the enemy side. Morocco uh, definitely feels like... I'm not going to say mismatch, because who knows, maybe game two they'll be able to come out. I mean, we're going to see the yeah. ranks after this, but Team Egypt, dude, they went for this break next lineup. Like, you can see all of them just go for these very cheap, very quick, useful items. Pavis, Four Staff, Max, everyone gets a magic stick. You know, nothing too expensive. No one's like going to be like, yeah, I'll get a Radiance. It's like, no, no, we just want to fight right now. And uh, it just, they look really good in this first game. It was a bit one-sided, I'll be honest with you, but fantastic for them. Yeah, and the damage coming through. I mean, the chase down every single time they saw a hero from the, the lane side. I mean, the Ursa going down first thing. It's just you see the damage coming through the charge down onto the Ursa. And every time he seems to show on the map, the Spirit Breaker was just charging towards him. So um, if you're Morocco looking at this now, coming through into the second game, what are the feelings? Because, I mean, that's going to be a bit um, of a, you know, a head dropper. But how do you get yourself back into this one coming into the second game? I think you just have to... I mean, if you go in thinking that you're going to win, maybe that's not the mentality. Maybe maybe it is. I'm not quite sure. But I think you can go in saying, listen, guys, these guys are tough. But let's try and learn what we can. Stronger lanes, dude. Like, they need yeah. stronger lanes. This We saw this with the... I mean, you have the Ursa, Witch Doctor. It's not bad, but you're up against the Venno. You suffer. Bomb lane, I did not like this Rubik pick at all. This feels like it doesn't give you much. Mid lane, the Wind Ranger is okay, but you lost the lane. So maybe yeah. something that can rotate a bit fast. Either way, get something that makes your lane stronger because their supports hit level 6 at like 14 minutes or something. Yeah, um, it felt nice for the Wind Ranger in the mid lane right up until the point where they, um, the, you know, the Spirit Breaker started to be able to rotate because he could leave the Venomancer alone on the top lane. And, you know, after that, the Wind Ranger just got overwhelmed. They tried to rotate the supports in, but like you say, the supports on the side of Team Egypt were like two or three levels ahead, and that yep. always seemed to climb. So, um, yeah, I'd like to see maybe, like you say, maybe just something that comes online a little bit earlier can win those lanes, get them into the game. Yeah, hell, try and take the Spirit Breaker for yourself because that hero at the minute, position three, position four, just seems to be able to, you know, run that lane wherever it goes. Yeah, and uh, I don't like some of the items that's coming coming out from the from uh, Morocco side. Like for example, we saw the Brewmaster go for Arcane Boots first before yeah. the Vanguard, and that feels like you know you want him to be solo so that you can see the Rubik go top lane and help them out. And uh, we saw also like not much stats coming out from the support. So you look at the Rubik, he's got Magic Wand and Tranquil Boots. You look at the Witch Doctor, he's got Arcane Boots and Stick. That's it. There's no stats. Which yeah. may seem like a small thing, but we're seeing a lot. what the pros do. They fill up with magic sticks. You know, they cap like they had a circlet or two because those stats matter. You know, it, you take less damage, you do more damage. So, another thing is that maybe the sports could beef up a little bit in game two. Yeah, uh, like you say, maybe that is something we're going to see. You know, just be able to use that resource a little bit better. Um, and is there anything that you think you know they should be? Because I've already talked about Spirit Breaker, but you know, do they need to? Because you don't, you only get the two bands coming through that first phase. Sure. What at this point, what can you actually let through here? Because you can't let the Medusa through. You can't let the Spirit Breaker through. But the Magnus is super strong. The Doom super strong. You know, there's a shopping list as long as my arm of heroes you can't let through. But it, is there something that they should pr be prioritizing here not to let through for Team Egypt to pick up in this next draft? I don't think there's. I don't think it's a draft. Like I don't think there's anything that you're really worried about. I'll be honest with you. I, don't, I think when the other team is 
teams better than you. There's no one thing yeah. where you're like, man, if we ban that, we can win. I think it's just more like you got to look into what you're doing wrong and fix yeah. that because – yeah, and that's really the only the honest truth. I don't think that there's. I don't think that uh, they were like out drafted and one pick was like screwing them. It's like more like they got lo- wrecked in all three lanes. You just have to, you have to draft better. Doesn't matter what you ban. Okay, well we'll find out how it's going to go after the break. We'll be back with the second game of Team Egypt versus Morocco to see if it's going to go to all three or if Egypt are they going to carry on going for the steamroll. Well, we'll find out after this break.
play around this one is this gonna be the marcy carry the doom off lane snap fires and shadow demon support so i'm just looking so looking for a mid laner i guess on the side of team morocco and yes, yes. uh how would you play this one because i mean we're not sure where this win range of the pudge is gonna be so i suppose it's gonna come down to what um team egypt want to be picking up on well, maybe not even what they want to pick, be picking up next because we don't even know if this venomancer is going to be a uh off lane venomancer if it's going to be a support venomancer yeah, it's still, uh, still, uh, still pretty up. I think the next pick is going to reveal a lot about Team Egypt's side, side, you know, because yeah. you're going to be revealing at least, probably a core that tells a lot. They're taking a while with this, uh, with this pick, you know. They were down to like 15 seconds for them. Mm. You know, I feel like if Team Rock can take something with a decent amount of sustain, that could really help for them. But Egypt, what they go with? They go with the Bloodseeker. Keeps their draft open still, because we have seen this here as a carry and an off lane, but mm -hmm. it does make you think that. Yeah, dude, it's pretty really open with this draft, isn't it? Like. We can we can really see anything come out. It could be Pudge and Vinner support, Wind Ranger off lane, and mid comes out. Wind Ranger mid and off lane comes out. Uh, support comes out. The Pudge, could, Pudge could be off lane. It's like this is a very open draft from Egypt. Yeah, and Egypt do have the final pick as well, so they're going to be able to respond to whatever team Morocco pick up here. It's not like you know they've. Uh... They've got to be forcing through this next pick that's going to reveal all Team Morocco. They've, uh, they're banning out the Oracle. So do not want to be playing up against that one. But yeah, they've got a bit of a guessing game on the hands as, as well as us. And I, I'm just glad we don't have to be the ones playing this game here. Because Team Egypt, whichever way they want to play this one, this could be, it's a very open draft. And I don't even know what I'd even start to think to ban here with this Team Egypt lineup looking at me like this. I like the I like the Morocco banning the Oracle though. Like yeah. that's one of the things that you know you want to get a kill. You doom someone. You get the you know he's about to run away and die in like a tick or two. Then Oracle comes out. False promise. It's worthless. So I like that. They're not quite sure, but they read that they saw that the Oracle was causing them problems. And you don't want to get the save here when you're up against a stronger team. Then he, because you're like oh maybe we can win this fight. We almost get a kill and then it's like oh crap he gets saved and suddenly all our commitment is useless. So really nice ban on this Oracle. Back. and yeah it's so the the next being ban out as well as we just saw before um i'm looking at this draft here from again from team egypt the yeah they are banning out mid laners they ban out the queen of pain they ban out the storm spirit so team morocco um i, I don't know what they want to be picking up in the mid lane this is going to be pretty rough i think for them as um yeah team egypt final ban i think is going to be the the tire blade um and morocco what do they want to pick? Because, I mean, I'm looking at it. Marcy, Snapfire, Shadow Demon, Doom. You, you've got yourself uh, the three strength heroes coming out yep. here. The Shadow Demon might be all right if the Timber Sword does get picked up here for us at the start of Team Egypt. But um, if 
he doesn't get the catch on with the disruption. You know, this Timbersaw starts to be able to, to run mental. Um, Doom, Snapfire, Marcy, all big heroes that are going to be impacted by this Timbersaw. So they go for the Wraith King. I, I've, I'm looking at this. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, what, Pudge Venom supports Wind Ranger in the, the safe lane. Bloodseeker. Oh God, do you, so who are they running mid? Wind Ranger, probably. Wind Ranger. Right? No. With the Pudge. Punch off you with the blessing yeah. and carry. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, so. I mean, I think so. But dude, you'd see Morocco super, super slow draft. Slow like, draft. yeah, Doom. Oh, they got the focus. Oh, come on. All right, that's not that fair. Uh, they have a Wraith <laughs> King carry. Usually, this hero wants what? Armlet. Maybe you want to go for a uh, freaking Radiance. You have Doom who has a long cooldown, his ultimate. Like, this hero is not as impressive without it. So, very. Very slow. Like it just feels like it's very slow. They won't be able to fight at all times. Egypt, that is going to be Magoo was their offlaner, right? Is that he takes the invoker. Yeah. Um yeah. so me you both. I think it's it's a roll swap. It's a roll swap. I'm sure they wouldn't go with offlane invoker. No way. No way. Maybe actually, maybe. It is possible. It is possible. That mana burn against the Wraith King is really good. Oh my god, offlane invoker, isn't it? Uh it looks like it might be, yeah, because um it was for forever, you know, playing on the mid lane in the last game as well. Whether they might want to put the Wind Ranger uh I don't know, maybe Forever plays it and they put him in the offlane anyway, put the Invoker mid. Uh, but meanwhile, on the side of Team Morocco, it's going to be the mid Marcy. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes I sense. mean, there's no way you put, I mean, you want no put you put Doom mid. You, I mean, you could, but he just doesn't. I feel like they want the mid Marcy. I like it because if she can get that fast armlet, she's very active around the map. She can help you out. And I don't think that the Doom mid, like, that's not going to reduce the cooldown of the Doom. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't really matter. What I want is the Marcy to be online a lot. A lot. So much of this game is on Killer. It's insane. He's really going to be carrying the team for the first. The I don't know, long know. period of the long game. Period. Very long period of the game. Very long yeah. Um, and I, I wonder if, you know, with Team Egypt coming into this one, maybe they do feel confident just to try some new things. So we'll see exactly how these lanes are going to go as we get ourselves into game number two. But it's... Yeah, maybe we are going to see a bit of a switch up here. It looks like it's actually going to be forever moving to the off lane. As, yep. as far as the lanes coming out of the base... You know, just on the map uh, forever. Everybody's moving down that way. We're going to see the smoke coming out, though, from Team Morocco. It's a five-man smoke. Do they have it in themselves to be able to get this first blood out of here with the smoke? Or is this just to get some information and get these wards down? Because I I'm seeing Team Smoke up more and more just to get the wards, you know, get some information, get themselves in a good position, but not actually getting aggressive with it. Especially the Radiant side, have you noticed? Like, this feels like the Radiant, or oh, that's where they usually fight. Like, that Radiant near the the, 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 the hill, near the bounty, is so useful. But yeah. each of them a different ward, though. They want to see if anyone walks there. Both teams very stuck together. Level 1? Uh, I don't think either. I think I feel like I favored Morocco's draft a little bit more. You got a couple of stuns on your team. Um, with the cookie, although he took the Scatterblast. Never mind! Never mind! Never mind! Um... Yeah, yes, we'll yeah, level, level one. Okay, and uh, interesting to see uh, Incurjo. I don't know. I'd say uh, he has a blood grenade on him. I I have seen cores get it, but I usually prefer just the supports carry it. You know, it feels like it's better use of their time. Yeah, um, it feels nice for for them as well. You know, it does just buff up the the health pool. Um, because obviously the supports, usually the supports coming into this are fairly squishy. It looks like it is going to be this lane swap coming through here. So the Invoker on the mid lane still. Uh, Wind Ranger in the off on forever. So it is going to be a... Well, it's actually looking like a try lane here in the bottom lane for now. As we see the Bloodseeker move up. But uh, yeah, okay. So very famous. He's moving himself up through the Twin Gate. And it will be a 2-1-2 once again. Mm. All, right. All right. So they have the shadow demon bottom. He's going. He has the point in the shadow poison. Might be able. And forever does not start with the magic stick. So, and look at that. Immediately, meteor bob goes top. They want to get this first blood as soon as they can. Yeah, the venom skill comes out there as well as the blood right, and it's going to be a lot of damage onto the doom in the top lane. I think top the hook comes out. They're going to be able to get the kill. They take that first blood. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, chase onto the wind ranger. Wind ranger taking a lot of damage here as well. The shadow poison's coming through. But like you say, I mean, he's only 
level one anyway, so it's only ever going to be that level one in Shadow Poison and forever. Just has to back himself away, avoid some of these, and use the tangos to get himself this health back. Losing a decent chunk, but the Wind Ranger going for the Wind Run at level one means that even if he did get under pressure from the Wraith King in that Wraith Fire Blast, was he able to move himself away once again on this top lane? Try lane coming up. Blood Rite's going to be there. The hook, do you want to throw it up? Blood Grenade will be used here. And Doom just turns himself right back into this one. This is going to be a sad, sad Doom as it looks like he's going to go down for a second oy, time oy. in as many minutes. I think that I honestly, think that as honestly, this is bad, this is bad, 100% this is bad, but as, oh, actually, they might be getting oh, a kill on the Venom Master, really the worth it. Very nice really move by the Snapfire. Cookies, the creep, gets, gets it to jump, jump lands a scab blast, blood, blood grenade, gets the kill. One for one trade, not too bad if you are in against a trial. One versus three, you're very happy with that, so I like it, but yeah, as I'm saying, if you are able to shut down the Wind Ranger and you give your your Wraithing a good lane, that's fine, that's honestly fine with me, yeah, but it looks Looks like, well, we're going to see a two-man rotation coming through. Twingate and TP here. Venomous walks himself up. Venomous Gale onto Crocky. Crocky, the hook comes through. And this is going to be, well, with a disruption. I mean, it's still going to be his death, but it's going to take a little bit longer here. Crocky will go down. And that's going to be a 1-0-2 for the purge. So once that... I don't think I've ever seen a oh, top lane, though. Doom's taking a lot of damage. Doom might be losing his life. Yeah, the slows. It's, it's painful. Denied, denied. That's pretty good. Hundred percent. Although, you know, you say that Doom's got two CS. I'm not able to kill Bendo. He's standing there very low. I mean, I mean, I say very low, but it's half health. You put the Doom on top of him, but Doom just need. I, I like that he's going for the Vanguard first item, but he needs to just CS for now. Like, do nothing but CS for like three minutes just to recover, because the dude's got three. Okay, now he's getting, he just doubled his creep lay, his creep uh, right now, just now. Down. Disruption comes out, and it looks like the Wraith King is going to go down. It's going to be forever that picks up in the bottom lane, back on the top lane. Chasing coming through onto the Snap Fire. Snap Fire, though, moving himself back in. Uh, got the boots already for the Snap Fire, but yeah, Incursio cannot get close. The Doom, once again, Venomous Gale comes out here, and it's Doom. He's going to be pressured down. Blood Rite's going to be there, though, and maybe they do get the kill for the Venomancer. Venomancer having to move himself Gavlas. back. Uh, Scatterblast will get the kill, but after that one, it's going to be split. It's actually going to be the Creeps that get the kill there onto the Snap Fire. Super Rudy trying to run him down, and Doom, Blood Rite comes oh. out, turns himself back in will be able to walk himself out of that one but super rudy wants to go for the chase here onto the doom and the doom magic he's got stick. nothing he's got a couple of charge on the magic stick but underneath just, the tower I here did he get the kill he's not got that infernal blade he's trying to dance around it but will still go down unfortunately they also lost the the raid king again in the bottom yeah. lane but you want to know something but mid is going really well for Morocco, really like well obscenely for well. For a lot of it's because of the max, max sidekick the against the Invoker who has no exhort, so you know that's kind of. I won't say expected, but he is 25 11 to the 17 and 3. Like he is crushing mid right now. Yeah. Killer is living up to his name in this game. Yeah, and we'll see here. Hello. Um, oh, hey, that's us. Uh, just how well he's going to be able to do as. Is he going to be enough to, to carry this game through? You know, get himself, his team into a good position. Do you do you want to see him when that six comes out to start rotating around and look for ganks? I think he might have to. And by the way, Invoker, he's also intending to do the same thing. He's got the urn. He's going for the meteor hammer. Like he just wants to make moves around the game. And this is what we call a radio broadcast. This is how it used to be before, right? When they used to do matches and for like football. So this is this is this is fine as well. Yeah. And. Um... We'll see just how this is going to go. I mean, the mid lane we're looking at, the tornado comes through here onto Killer. So Killer wasn't able to do the damage. Getting close to that level 6 on the uh, on the Marcy. Marcy going to be pushed away, though, by the hook comes in. And it looks like the hook from the purge. Do they get the kill onto the Marcy? The Marcy, though, on level 4 onto Meet Your Bob. So there's going to be the cookie coming oh, through from the snap fire. Do they get enough damage to get the kill? Well, it looks like everybody going to back themselves away. And even the Wraith King rotating into this as well. 
That was one of the best plays I've ever seen in my life. And <laughs> I, I mean, the people who missed it, they really missed a lot just now. But in the end, yeah, he was able to make that alive. Unfortunately, Doom is on his what? Third, fifth death? Holy fifth. moly. Yeah. I, li I like how you say the fifth. I say it as well like the fifth. He is, he is. He is. He's nearly got as many deaths as he does last hits, which is rough for a Doom. You know, trying to go into that vanguard, and usually, yeah, you know, at this point in the game, I'm. You'd still expect this Doom to be mid table in terms of net worth. He is struggling right near the bottom. Is the Invoker though? He might go down. Going to be able to get the Ghost Walk off, and while the Marcy cannot get the kill, chases onto the Marcy now as well. Do they want to try and go for this one? He's got that unleashed going here, but it looks yeah. like Killer's going to be able to get the the Invoker. Okay, the bottom lane. They do take down the Shadow Demon. No, Shadow Demon denies himself. Huh. Okay. Fair there, there is a lot happening, by the way. Uh, Wraith King died to neutral creeps. He was uh, jungling and he dies to neutral creeps. Um, the, which I think the Shadow Demon used his disrupted illusions to kill him. That's why he was able to uh, get the deny off. Mid lane, I, well, I think it was the pulse from the Unleash that reached him at the very end. Yeah. Because it is him who killed him, right? It's not like something else that... Um, mid lane, uh, you might need to farm up. They Will they be able to get any Wisdom Ruins? Looks like Super Rudy should be just fine. And there's a Meteor Bob right there. Safe. Oh, and wait, Snapfire got one Wisdom Ruin. That's actually huge. Like, pretty that big. does give you some... And Doom is on his sixth death, by the way. Yeah. Hey. Tried to go solo up against the Invoker and the Venomancer. So he just got slowed and beat down. Uh, Cold Snap coming out for the Invoker. Obviously, Venom scale. We know how powerful that is. Three heroes TP into the middle. They're going to try and go into the Bloodseeker. The Bloodseeker, though, does he get himself away? He absolutely does. He's got the Pudge for the backup. And it looks like he even forever going to rotate in. So this bottom lane is being completely abandoned oh. here. And the damage on the Rupture. Killer, can he get himself into a safe position? Four heroes. Listen, like Morocco, they want to try and fight already. Killer does dodge off that hook. And it looks like the Doom will go down. Forever picks up this kill. Blood Rite's going to be there as well. So the silence all to the Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon is not going to be able to get this dis disruption off. Tornado comes through. Now the disruption will be here. Marcy wants to come back in onto Forever. Forever though, can he get himself away? Winrun will be there. Looks like he might be able to move himself out as Meteor Bob does get the kill onto Crocky. And everybody in the Shadow Team Egypt will be able to get themselves out alive. Oh, oh dude. I, whoever, I mean, whoever is captain of Morocco side needs to tell uh, that Doom just go and farm just go yeah. and don't do anything else just go farm. look at what uh, we're seeing coming out from the Wraith King yeah his farm isn't like amazing but at least he's focusing on it you know like yeah. if he can get those net he can recover but the Doom shows up just to die zero seven very tough he's making it tough for his whole team but with these multiple uh, attempts and yeah. he's got he's max Snapfire gets seen. Shackle comes out just to get Pudge on top of him. There's going to be the cookie coming through, though, in the mid lane. Some aggression. The Snapfire should go down. The hook comes out. They get the kill. And back in the mid lane now as well. We'll see what this Invoker can do. Ghost Form comes out. Is the Shadow Poison going to be enough to get this kill here? Killer. Oof. Only just surviving that one, Invoker. Uh, unfortunately, I think the, I think the, I'm not sure if the fourth one hit or not because he had three. And you really want to get those like you know the third, the fourth, the fifth because the damage does yeah. multiply. You know, the, it's like doubles each time. And in the meantime, Doom is just well, that was kind a of oh, no. great shackle now as well. It's going to be TP in disruption. Saves the Master from being hooked back. And are they going to be able to get the chase on Pudge? Level 5, 3 points into the Rock, the Tornado. It's going to stop, Mor stop Morocco in the tracks. As this Bloodseeker here on the top lane is having a free time. We'll see just what he's going to be able to do with it. As it looks like everybody else apart from the Wraith King wants to group up underneath this tier 1 tower for the Radiant side. So it's going to be some 3v4 action it seems. As the uh, the Bloodseeker just continues to farm on the top lane. Looking towards this tier 1 tower. And yeah, Super Rudy having a really good time at the minute on the carry. Yeah. Yeah, Marshall did get the the hand of Midas nine minutes in, so it's not. I mean, it's like nine minutes fifty seconds, but still, it's nine minutes if you ask me. So that will help him out. He needs to not show himself in the bottom lane, though. If he shows himself, I think Forever is going to be able to kill him. He needs to be very careful. And he's got nothing else, by the way. It's quality blade, stick, and gloves. And he did show himself. I told him. And there's the hand of Midas. Okay, so. And Monster, though, will go down in the mid lane. So, I mean, Morocco, they're picking up kills. They're picking up a decent yes. amount of gold from these kills as well. But it's, yeah, the jump onto the Race King. Race King at least does have his ultimate, but no TP's here to help him out. Once he comes back alive, uh, even the lane pushing in, is Meet Your Bob setting up for he doesn't even come back alive? What am I talking about? Uh, no, ma no mana. I mean, no top lane, though. This could be a big one. Yeah, he didn't actually have the mana for it. The EMP stopped the mana for the reincarnation. Like Super Rudy, 
to get himself away from this one. He's trying to actually get a kill off Crocky. If he takes Crocky down, he's got a decent amount of heals to run himself away from this. He even gets the kill. He's going to be able to get himself out of dodge. He, I'm not sure he should have self-disrupted. I think he could have disrupted the Bloodseeker and then thrown out a couple of Shadow Poisons on him to do damage. By self-disrupting, he just like kind of waited for him. Obviously, if you self-disrupt, there's a chance that he will hit the Illusion instead of you. So that's kind of clever that way. But you play for the kill, not for the save, if that makes sense. And by the way, yeah. Doom still doesn't have Doom. Uh, that's rough. 11 minutes in, coming up to 12 minutes in. And... Yeah, he's just being picked on it here, it seems like. It, it is pretty oh. rough at this doom. Alright, Snapfire 6. That's something. You you have... you have. I gotta say, Morocco playing game 2 a lot better than game 1. I know it's like 8,000 advantage for Egypt, and the score is very one-sided, and they're probably gonna take the match either, either way. But they're playing better, except Doom. He's gonna die his 8th death now. Uh, he's no, gonna no. get the TP away. No, yeah, there's no stones hey. here. And he's gonna be able to get the TP out. And I, I suppose it, it is a learning experience here from Team Morocco that even if they aren't gonna win this game, they get themselves uh, some competitive experience. They get themselves some game tape as well to study. As Crocky, now he can be the most of it. Kisses coming out though, the blood right. Now gonna be the hook dragged back onto the Snapfire with this dismember. And it looks like it's still gonna be the kill. No, look at this meteor boss. Nice. Taking nice. so much damage from the Marty. The rupture will be used here. And it looks like Killer is still not even gonna hold his ground. He wants this kill on there the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker's gonna go down. Mego might be able to get the kill. Will be able to get the kill onto the Marty. I'm pretty sure. As uh, Marty just has to stand still. Yeah, right. will be the Venomancer after all, but gets a kill onto the Marty. But still getting something out of that before those two heroes go down. That was the first successful fight for Morocco in both games. Mm -hmm. I mean, they killed more than they lost. They were able to get uh, well, the Venomancer as well. They got two cores for their trouble. That was huge. Really well done for them. And they really cut the net worth deficit by a lot as well. Yes, it was 8,000. Now it's down to six. Bomb lane forever. There's yeah. the stun. This could He's be a kill. The win run though, he's trying to get himself away from this. Will be able to successfully get himself out of that. The TP, he knew the win run cooldown was there if he got in trouble. And again, no doom to, to set him on the path of the doom. So forever's just able to run himself away from this one. Back himself up I, and even going towards a diffusal plate here as well. I've been flaming the oh, we might be losing our rage very soon. He's not careful. Hook comes back in as well, dragging the shadow demon right back into this one. Meteor Bob disruption's gonna be here. And listen to the targets. Cookie comes out, but the race king's gonna be out of mana now. One more rightly come through. And invoker, which way he's trying to go for this one? They keep the race king alive. They're saving it for the Bloodseeker. Reincarnation comes out. They get the kill onto the Doom once again. Chase down now as well. Roll of Atos. They get the lockdown onto the Wraith King. Wraith King, no way to survive that one. He gets cleaned up. Rupture comes out onto the Snapfire. Uh, behind the tier 2 tower, Bloodseeker, he wants to go for it. Either way, there's no way to get out of this. The Snapfire, the cookie comes out. Super Rudy gets the kill. Well played though by Snap. Almost jumping out of that uh, situation. But again, it's a massacre by Egypt. And yeah. Doom is level 5, dude. I mean, I know I keep harping on about it. but And he wants to go for Hand of Midas 14 minutes in. Like, and he always oh, picks up the wisdom moment. Thank, thank every lord there is, you know, like what I mean? Like, he is level six. He actually messed up huge when uh, on the Wind Ranger kill just now in the bomb lane. He had the tornado creep. So he could have hurricane oh. her back into the tower, but he didn't. Like, just picks it up and doesn't use it, which is really unfortunate. I don't mean that to be me, it's just safe. Yeah. Well, uh, well, we're going to see the Shadow Demon die in most of the cases going through. Meet your Bob. It's going to be fine here. It looks like some protection coming through for the Doom. It does get thrown out eventually. Can they get the kill onto the Invoker here? Because they're going to be able to turn this one around. Yeah, right. It's come through. Invoker, not even bothered about the Doom, will be able to walk himself away. The two puts in the Quas, so regenerating through this one. And now Killer, he's going to be the next one to go down. And Super Rudy is absolutely cleaning up here in game number two. 9, 1, and 7. Killer is the only one who's actually having a game for his team. Like, he is... Yeah. He is competitive with the with the Invoker. Like, despite his team being 11,000 gold band, he is actually he is keeping up with the Invoker. Tower. Not far yeah. behind, no joke. He's had an amazing performance. But you look at the rest of the other four members of his team, bottom four Radiant network. One of them is a hand, one of them is a team, and one of them is a rating team with Hand of Midas. Like, this should not... This really shouldn't be happening. You know, yeah. it's kind of hard to... Uh, but then, you have a Snap... The Snapfire is doing also kind of okay, honestly. Like, uh... He's been involved in six kills, only four deaths to his name, doing what he can, but it's not it's not enough. Meet your Bob, misses the hook. It's it was close, but close, you know, it, it only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades and uh punches neither. 
with his hook there. Uh, you've got the Wraith King still trying to farm up, trying to get some items out of this, like I say, using this Hand of Midas to try and get as much net worth as possible out of this. But what do you see the Wraith King, you know, really being able to do? Because these fights coming out from Team Egypt, they look like they just want a five-man now from the get-go. In fact, there might be another one coming through. They get the Rod of Atos hook, dragged back onto the Wind Ranger. Wind Ranger going to be slowed down here by Crocky. Do they have enough to get the killers? The Invoker War takes himself in. There's going to be a tornado into the EMP. Yeah, there's going to be the focus fire coming out from the, the Wind Ranger once again. Looks like you're even going to be able to get the kill to the snap fire. Meet your Bob does it on the back line. Killer from range forever will be able to take him down. And now, but they've even got themselves a dismember on the push. Crocky trying to get himself out, but Rodovator comes through. Doom will go down once again. TP doesn't matter. Crocky, he goes down to the rot of the push. He has Hurricane on the... Not enough. It's just not enough. Doesn't use it. And, uh, yeah, they were able to get a kill on the Venom, but it just doesn't... It doesn't seem to matter. Meteor Bob is like he's the offlaner in this... In this uh, sorry, he's like more of a core than the Venom. Yeah. He is, and uh, Marshall, he's got the Hand of Midas. Let's hope he can... Oh, wait, there's no creep to him to use it on. So he's just going to die with the Hand of Midas unused. That feels great. Meteor Hammer comes out. It's all about the efficiency of the carry, but the Meteor Hammer comes so out. Good steps up here from Mega with the Tornado. Um, the cold Snap coming through as well. The damage, it just racked up and up and up. And the Invoker was able to get the Meteor Hammer into the Sun Strike, get the kill onto the Wraith King. And yeah, um, you can see that out of the top six, five of them from the side of Team Egypt are running right here at the minute. And I don't know, even the Wraith King, is going to be down below. There's going to be the hook coming from the Pudge once again. Shackle to Latch. And you get another kill onto Crocky. This is something you see with teams that are sort of, you know, putting their foot, they're dipping their toes into the competitive pool, is that they start focusing a lot on fighting. But yeah. what you really want to do is open up the map as much as you can. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a hero in every lane, a hero farming enemy neutrals, whatever you want. Because when you stick as five, the enemy team is just, they're out fighting you, they're out farming you. So. It's very easy for Radiant's Egypt to continue to grow this lead because they just walk together and they find five people every time. They lose their Venom answer, but I don't think they care. No, they're going to be able to go. Focus Fire comes out on the Doom now as well. Dismember from the Purge. Most of my cases will start to rain down, so maybe the Wraith can get some stuff out of this one. But the chase is out. Wind Ranger with the Wind Run. The Shackle to the Creep now. Hook comes back. Purge Wind Ranger. This combination is absolutely running a muck in this game. They might be able to get something more out of this as well. Crocky trying to get himself out only the Snap Fire from this fight. Able to move himself away. Killer. He was on his way, but just had to leave it in the, the, the balance. And Snapfire does get himself out here. Scan, though. Did they actually get the kill? Killer? Just backing himself away. Killer actually went for the Aghanim set straight away as well. I like it. Go on, explain. I like it because uh, it feels like it, it gives you so much extra damage because all your abilities unleash. And you, you get the, the silence on it. So that's one way that you can if you can just slow the enemy down. They might go get a kill for, for on the uh, on the invoker. That could be huge. And the Doom comes out. Yeah, overkill to work. Uh, absolutely worth it. Uh, at this point in the game, you know, you are uh, any anything helps. So just yes. being able to, to get a kill like that on the invoker, you know, absolutely worth it. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for the fight recap for us to show just what they got. They got 1300 gold and 1700 EXP out of that. So well worth it. And Unleash is pretty low cooldown. The Doom is the expensive one, but, you know, there's a small chance he might run away. So he might as well get it. And guess what? I, I have a surprise for you. Go on. Doom finished the hand of Midas. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's better uh, than not finishing it. It is better than not finishing it, yeah. And we'll see what he's going to be able to do with it. Because, I mean, look I at the top lane. There's going to be another push in coming as well. Did they get the kill onto? No, wow. but they back. They get the drag out on the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker is going to be A-OK. -okay. And once again, I mean, he's popped his BKB for this one. But again, we'll be able to heal up off the creeps. So, um, really... It looks like Egypt, they've got a plan on this Pudge at the minute here. Meet your Bob. MVP for me with these hooks. 21 uh, strength heaps, by the way. Stacks. Oh. 42 strength. And uh, he played that so well. He blinked far away and then hooked him to safety. Really nice of them. And I mean, I don't know if they were going to be able to kill Super Rudy, but he he was scared enough to pop the BKB. So he definitely felt like there was something coming out. Yeah, and I like that the, um, the side of Team Egypt realized that they could be in trouble if the Doom comes in, if he gets caught out like that, and there's no punch to hook him back. So they're setting up for the Roshan, and the big man, he's going to be moving himself towards the bottom pit. And we'll see, the Invoker's just using the Illusion to push this one out. But yeah, everyone from the side of Team Egypt, everyone else from the side of Team Egypt, pushing into the Roshan pit, and it'll be an Aegis. No way for Morocco to contest this, it doesn't seem either. Gotta say though, Morocco, they're playing in this one this game so much better than the previous one. As much of a stomp as this one is, the game one was way worse. And this one game, they're playing it better. This like 
you can see that there are some improvements that they can make to the team that will give them much better chance. Like, Doom could have really farmed safer. You know, same thing with, like, the Radiant. I'm not quite sure what Radiant's item build is. It might be Radiance. I mean, he's got the item. He's saving the gold for it, but... Like, a bit of tighter gameplay here and there, and you have a real force for you. Right now, yeah. Egypt, you know, they're uh, looking very hard to kill. But it's it's nice. It's like they're doing better on Morocco's side. I don't know. It just makes me happy. Yeah, I mean, this is... Uh, everybody loves an underdog, right? And just yeah. to see them not being... Like, 20 minutes in, 21 minutes in, not being base raced out of it. Um, yes. It does feel nice. And like you say, you've got to play the games to, to improve. And this will be a really good learning experience for the side of Morocco. And I mean, they could... I mean, upsets do happen here. Invoker trying to sell, scout right. himself around in the ghost form. They know. And Crocky TP's out. Very wise. The Snapfire oh. also gets out. So good escape, except... Oh... This member comes out. They're going to be able to get the kill into the Wraith King yet. Didn't even need the hook there. Just a bit of a celebratory hook. Um, while that was going on, the Bloodseeker and the Wind Ranger were at the, at the top of the map, you know, trying to take the Dire Tormentor. Wind Ranger popped the Focus Fire, and I was just watching the health just absolutely disappear on both heroes. And I didn't know what was going to die first the Wind Ranger um, and the Bloodseeker or that Tormentor, because it was very close between the two of them. And uh, wait, did anyone know that, who got it in the end? Who got the, uh, the shard? Punch. There you go. Does it show? Uh, try to see. It shows for me. I just press enter and it. Oh yeah, it shows as a chat message. I thought it's supposed to show as a side message. That's supposed to be interesting. I thought that, that was part of the fixes. Crocky loses his life, but that's okay. He's wow, twelve deaths. Yeah, that's a it, lot. I mean, it's been rough all over the board here for Team yeah, Morocco. Cool. So we'll see if they're going to be able to repel this one because, I mean, Aegis in hand for Team Egypt. We've got only one Tier 2 tower remaining um, on the top plane, and it looks like they want to push in on the side of Team Egypt. Trying to bake the base. Excuse me, bake the base. Don't bake the base. Break the base. Bake it till you make it is what I always say. In top lane, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to be, might be losing our old friend, Mr. Marshall. And yeah, he is going for Evans Halberd. Changes items. I think he... Oh, Killer loses his life as well. And so does Crocky. It's ugly. It's very ugly. It is pretty rough here. Uh, Super Rudy going to be able to push him onto this base with the help of his teammates. Onto the tier 3s. Buy back everybody but the Doom here on the side of Morocco. They're going to try and go for fortification. Not long on the respawns, but how Egypt could just go straight for the um, tier 4s after this tier 3 tower break. So we'll see what they want to do. If you want to try and go for racks here as the punch just continues to push the top lane in. It looks like it is going to be a, a base breaking operation from the side of Team Egypt coming through. These racks will go down, but everybody on the side of Team Morocco will be coming back alive. So Egyp, are they going to respect this one, or do they think they're powerful enough just to take another team fight and go for these tier fours? It looks like they're going to be able to take the shackle onto the, the spirit, uh, excuse me, the shadow demon, and it looks yep. like the doom jumps itself in. The doom will be dead, and two heroes dead once again. And the bloodseeker wants to go for more. He still has this Aegis, so even if he goes down, he's going to be able to get something out of this. Red King gets low, has to go back to the fountain, focus fire into the hook. Marcy is dead here, and yeah, Team Egypt, they want to go for a second tier three. It looks like down towards the bottom lane. And oh, buyback. two buybacks coming out from Team Morocco now, with ultimates being down on the side of Team Egypt. Can they define? No, there's going to be another hook in onto the Shadow Demon. The Shadow Demon power shot comes through. Shackle doesn't actually latch, but the punch will be jumping himself forward. The rupture. Look at this. Even the cookie. It's going to be a lot of damage onto the Marzi. Underneath these three or four towers, heroes, they are being absolutely destroyed, annihilated, and cleaned up here. The hook comes through onto the Doom, and this is going to be a five man wipe once again. GG will be called. Unfortunately, in 24 minutes this time, Team Morocco will be going down to Team Egypt. They played they played the game, game a lot better. I mean, yeah. honestly, the only issue with them is that the draft seems a little bit unfo was a little unfocused compared to a game. I mean, not that the game was focused, but like you have two guys who really want to farm, but you also let know the enemy team is going to run at you, and they were able to hold on. I gotta say, Killer as well as the supports played it really well, as well as yeah. you can in that situation. But we saw Doom was like 111. Yeah, no, or something like zero eleven. I don't know. And uh, your carry is all. Is, he's also zero ten on the Wraith King and one fourteen on the Doom. So combined, these guys are one twenty four on yeah. two of your cores. It's super hard to play in that situation. But everyone, they, the rest of the team did play well. Like it's it's really impressive. They were able to do as well as they could with with the deficit they were with they were in. How do you play that lane? If you're that Doom coming up against the... I know there was a rotation from the Pudge as well, but if you're the Doom playing into this Venomancer in the lane, how do you try and do... You know, how do you improve yourself there? 
I mean, he did what he should have, which is getting the early vanguard. The problem is that he yeah. kept leaving the lane. Like, the, the, he should have just stayed in the lane, just go and farm. Like, you can eat creeps, you can farm up. You're very... You, there's no stuns, so yeah. you should be able to almost always get yourself to safety, which we saw him do, like, once or twice. So I'm very surprised that he just left the lane, tried to rotate, because Doom early on is so useless. Level 4 Doom. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever had a level 4 Doom TP in front of you, and you're like, wow, he does nothing. It's, it's adorable. I've been a level 4 Doom that's TP'd into someone to try and fight and just not done anything. But, um, yeah, the, the cleanup's coming through as well. You can see that once he got themselves again, another advantage here. We'll see if it was actually the Unleash on this replay as well. Was it one more to come through? It looks yeah. like it was the proc there from the Unleash that got the kill on the Invoker. What? Wow, did you see the AoE on that thing? I did not think it was that big. And this is one of the infamous Doom rotations. Shows up, dies, and he's like, my job here is done. Yeah. It's like, and it's still a movie, but you did nothing. And he's like, no, I'm gone anyway. I'm dead. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I would have liked to see him. I mean, he talks about him leaving the lane, but I would have liked to see him move into the triangle with the Scorched Earth and the Devourer and just try and find the farm that way um, instead of coming back to the lane where he was just being picked off. I mean, I, I know it feels bad to abandon a lane like that, but the Snapfire gets some solo XP as well. Um, in the in the lane, you're maybe just hiding in the trees just trying to soak the XP, and you get your farm through the Devourer and that Scorched Earth in the triangle. You see that? That was nice three-man rotation by the support. And this one also, like, he disrupts... Oh, man, they missed the... Disrupts himself, which I... Again, if he didn't do that, you would have been able to throw out two Shadow Poison. That would have been, been a kill. Yeah. This was one of those things where it's like, mm, you can go back and sort of think about it and be like, yeah, I could have done, played this one better. But uh, I agree with you. The Doom could have gone Triangle. I don't really care whether it's the lane or the Triangle. As long as he avoids fights and farms. Like, I don't mm -hmm. care what it is. I think he could have laned fine. I don't. I think it goes either way. This was the first time they won a fight for uh, Morocco in, in two games. They killed two people. Sorry, three people and they lost only two. Yeah, uh, and every positive trade, you know, when you're behind is a good trade. So, yes. I mean, every, even most neutral trades as well. And, yeah, you see here the Pudge. There was just a bit of a, uh, a target priority situation coming through with the Invoker. You know, the Wraith King was low, but the Invoker changed his mind. They want to go for the Doom. They pop that Wraith King anyway. The Doom comes out here, gets cleaned up, and the Wraith King, by that time, the Rotovatus is ready. And, yeah, they were able to get the kill. So, it was, I mean, TG, Team Egypt looking really good. Some strong rotations. Um, mm -hmm. And they get themselves in a good position in the groups i mean they look like a team you know what i mean yeah. like they look like a team or the way they're playing like like you don't see like one guy randomly off in some weird corner of the map getting caught and dying it's like no when they rotate they all rotate together they're all like age so i really like it on the other side uh, team morocco this is a very good learning experience you know it's the uh, best thing you can get for yourself but egypt they came to play man they get the they have 50 to 10. that's uh, so yeah. good and maybe you know good set of practice and warm-up for them here as well um they were able to get themselves on top of the doom here get the kill out and i don't know what else you can say team egypt they they're warmed up they're ready to go and uh, they're gonna be playing on second best of three as well so um we'll see if they're gonna be able to continue on this quality moving themselves through and how it's gonna go in the the second series but i think we're gonna go back to the studio after the replays you know take a bit of a longer break and we're back um in a while i think actually for the second series yeah, we don't have a running schedule. We are supposed to be, you know, set schedule here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, we'll see how long the break is after this. And uh, it's just uh, a little bit sad to see uh, to see them going. Uh, people were saying Algeria is a stronger team, that this, this okay. should be a more even match. Uh, I hope so, because, uh, you know, Egypt get going, going hungry. And remind me that the winner of all this is the one who's going to be advancing. Unlikely that we're going to get tiebreakers. Because I'm not sure if like we'll see Egypt beat, beat Algeria. You know, it's like whoever wins the next match is probably going to be the one who advances. If that makes yeah. any sense. Uh, but for now, we will be jumping back to the studio. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll jump back to the studio. We'll be back with the second best of three in a while. But for now, enjoy the break, and we'll see you after this.
Thank you very much, Otomo and Robin Roll, on casting this uh, beautiful matchup that we saw against uh, Morocco, Egypt. Wow, and uh, dominant performance coming into this match. Two zeros uh, against uh, Morocco. Uh, we know that Morocco still has a chance to continue in this qualifier, uh, but their match will be played on tomorrow. Today, uh, later, we are going to see Egypt versus uh, Algeria. But guys, before that, we are going to watch the best plays from uh, this match, Egypt versus Morocco. Ripplers are ready. So let's go for it. There's no denying what we've done There's no denying what we've done 
careful with your pretty eyes and run with me yeah, yeah. cause you and i and i are a secret I remember the time when it was on like that. None of it rhymed, there was no home back. I gave him my all, then it's done like that. Remember how I could stop the crime? I paid all back, was it all a lie? I couldn't move on till it started right back. Oh, it's twice done, here we go again. It's hopeless, oh, what to do on the world? So 
so lost I love the way that you move And how the lights keep off the groove Girl, I can't move Baby, but it's ending too soon By myself, trying to figure ways to you. Your voice stuck in my brain. We never got to see it through. And I know I feel more pain if we're speaking truth. Cause when the daylight comes, I still lose. Comes, I still lose. So when I feel it again, I just don't know. And I'm hoping I'll find a way to let go. So if you love me, how could you leave me so long? So when I feel it again, I just don't know. I 
just don't know
was all your love Wrapped in lies, oh, oh Showing off, pretending to be nice All I heard about was all your love But you crossed the line, oh But I got no heartache, heartbreak, grief about you now
hard to take it If you feel something, boy, you gotta tell me
Ouija. Razor sharp and luminous. Can't say that I'm not ambitious. And then a surge of adrenaline, I wish I could have a pony card. We'll be running. Won't you say why you're strange enough? Your eyes escape from mine when I sit you down. Don't you feel like we're holding on? Onto a fairy tale, but the magic's gone.
Hey stranger, tell me why I can find the beauty in the little things I see in your impatience in your eyes. Don't be shy.
shines bright as the stars align in the shape of you. Everything beautiful makes me feel so blue.
I'll play my games Go ahead, do you Cause I'll do the same And I know we'll bloom Cherry blossom flames Tracing skin, we're making shapes And no one can replicate us Yeah, winter came Still you blew me away With a heat that saturates
Okay, guys, never mind. <laughs> One more time. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the World Esport Championships 2023 Africa Regional Qualifiers in the game Dota 2. Uh, we saw a uh, very astonishing game from the Egypt side in the first match uh, against Morocco. Now it's uh, the next BO3 against uh, Algeria. If the Egypt uh, will be able to win this matchup, they will advance uh, to the main tournament. And uh, I think they will be able to do it. Uh, but we will see on the server, we actually don't know what to expect from the Algeria side. But we know the Egypt is a very strong opponent. Uh, so, yeah, I think we are uh, slowly ready to get into the next BL3 matchups. Our caster skips and uh, rob and roll. It's up to you. Hello and welcome in. We're going to get started here with the second series of the day. It is going to be Egypt versus Algeria and Kips. I think this one's going to be a little bit closer. I've been taking a look at the ranks between the two teams and uh, the Algerian team, they've got a couple in the top 500, one in the top 2,000, one in the top 3,000, one in the top 4,500 and I think Egypt were all in the top 1,500 I want to say. So a little bit closer than the first series. Um, any thoughts coming in? to this one you know uh, new region new drafts uh, anything you want to look for anything you you know maybe surprise or two to come out i mean listen i am on the juggernaut hype train after okay. the uh, the finals that i casted a couple of days ago i just want to i just want to see more juggernaut i want to see if it's actually imba or if it's just that one player making it look like that so if this draft has a jug for me i'm happy Okay, okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, i've been seeing more and more of the juggernaut coming out as well. Uh, i didn't realize because i you know didn't really pay attention to patch notes because I saw them and it was like three days worth of patch notes and I was like, eh, okay. Um, but the change to the Juggernaut talent uh, at mm -hmm. level 20, you get the 50% lifesteal yes. on crit. That's Kips, the one. Why? Why, Kips? Why, why, would you, why would you give a Juggernaut something like that? Well, because otherwise he's just like white bread and he, he doesn't really do anything special. Like there's so much that goes through BKB these days, that is, so the spin TP is like eh, whatever, you know, or I should say debuff immunity. Mm -hmm. uh, so many stuns that will cancel your TP through that. And then of course his scaling was previously purely dependent on whether or not you would be able to outfarm your opponents when you're like a carry that is not a lane dominator and that also does not have like a built-in farm amplification. So he needed something to work towards and to actually like have a power spike that had something to do with like you know him as a hero as opposed to just like yeah i'm an item ahead of the enemy now against all odds so okay. there there you have it i can see why something like that is there however i do yeah. th think that in its current form is a little spicy yeah um that's, that's what i've been seeing in the, the past few days you know with juggernauts that the kind of they do all right up until that level 20 but as soon as that level 20 comes out like they just the the, the switch flips and they're just like okay i'm, I'm God, ready good. yeah i'm not even it's not even like they're done farming it's just they're done leveling now whatever they've got that's what they're going to take into the fights and more often than not they do win them um so i yeah i'm up for a bit of that i'm looking forward to seeing it uh i think we will be able to get ourselves into the draft soon um to see what the teams are picking um and we'll be able to take a look first, though, at the standings. Egypt, uh, again, from that first series of the day, being able to beat out onto Morocco. Morocco, they made a good go of it, but I think the, the power level between the two teams was just a little bit too high. Egypt taking mm -hmm. both games in about 20, 25 minutes or so. So, again, hopefully here, you know, we're going to get a full series. We'll get a, a, a full run out of the games, and it'll be a little bit closer coming into this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, I watched a bit of that, and I, I gotta say that uh, Meteor Bob does truly look like a very scary punch player, so who knows, maybe we get a uh, treat to some nice hooks again. Yeah, hopefully, you know, like I say, something a little bit different as well. Uh, we saw a couple of wind range of mids um, coming through, but it looks like, like I say, as we, we're going to be able to get ourselves in. Um, and this isn't the only day I know you and Otomo are going to be doing the final series tomorrow and then going on to potential tiebreakers. So there is more Dota to come tomorrow and Sunday as well as we do the South African qualifiers. Uh, so it's a weekend of qualifiers to get through. A, much, uh, a lot of Dota to look forward to as we going to be able to get ourselves, like I say, uh, hopefully we'll be able to take a look at the draft in in a couple of minutes but um coming through into this one 
Is there anything that, like I say, you, you want to see the Juggernaut? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how maybe we, we avoid some of those universal heroes that are coming out all the time, um, as I'll be able to go through. We've got a draft here going through the bands. The Clinks being banned out in the first phase. Tell me about the Clinks. Why is it so scary? This, I mean, I know in pubs why it's so scary, because, <laughs> you know, nobody buys dust. Nobody, nobody at my level buys dust. But why is Clinks seeing a bit of a resurgence now in the game? I think that he combos up with a lot of, like, really well with a lot of heroes in the uh, in the lane. Like, the tar bomb is phenomenal at enabling a lot of offlaners to excel in the trades. And then, of course, you have the fact that this Clink's hero can build a lot of different things, especially the Orchid buildup feels very good for him, but you can also go Medallion. And he really fulfills that role of a DPS from a non-core role, which yeah. is one of the reasons why we see the techies also so heavily utilized and so heavily banned in uh, in most of pro play <laughs> yeah no i never thought if you'd have uh when techies was first announced and being played if you'd have told me back then that techies was going to be a first ban material hero i probably would have put dota down because you know before the rework that that hero was absolute hell to play against to play with as well it kind of ruined nine people's games uh, so yeah you tell <laughs> me that hero is going to be seen every other match i'll be like okay dota is not the game for me um Running through the draft as well, we've got Algeria bringing out the Vengeful Spirit. So, again, something a little bit different. Um, what are you looking forward to seeing th this hero be able to do in the match? I mean, if I see the Venge here, and then you look at the Pugna being in here as well, and the Magnus mm -hmm. having been added uh, already all the way at the start, this is an all-eggs-in-one-basket kind of draft, right? This yeah. is all about the Medusa. This Medusa is going to have a battery sitting behind her, a save sitting behind her, an RP for possible team fight resets, <laughs> plus of course the extra damage that comes in from. Uh... So of course it's not a lot since you're a range here, right? But you're going yeah. to be uh, cleaving just a little bit more with that empower. So yeah, the the Venge really fits into that, and especially with the Darks here over on the other side, you want to be able to take the Medusa out of the wall ASAP. Yeah. Do you think this was a bit of a trap here from Team, e Team Egypt because they leave the Medusa in, um, obviously gets picked up here by Team Algeria, they immediately go for the Shadow Demon and the Darkseer, you know, two heroes that I'm seeing having massive impacts up against the Medusa, so is this, uh, was it a bit of a bait here from Team Egypt, do you think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely so. And I gotta say, we spent a bunch of time talking about Juggernaut some, uh, just now, but he still mm -hmm. is in the pool, and I have seen him utilized, especially versus Did Medusa, as she cannot actually stand up versus the raw damage that that hero offers. Plus, you of course have your your spin to turn on when she uh, she activates that stone gaze for the disengage. It's mm -hmm. oh. I, yeah. Um, I was gonna I say think the Omni get the well. one. Yeah. comes out. Uh, you know, Stone Gaze gets popped, just pop the Omni Slash. You know, you, you can't get turned into stone if you're not there, technically. <laughs> technically. In, out, in, out of reality. Yeah, it's and like uh, Dragon Ball Z, where, you know, you, you know the fighting, but it, from the normal person just looking up, they just see, like, specs moving around. Yeah, flashes. I would not be surprised at all to see that hero come out here right now. Because yeah. it feels really good in this draft as well. You're going to have yourself a Dark Seer, like we all know that Vacuum into Omni Slash, or even just Vacuum into Spin are phenomenal tools. You've got the Void Spirit for the uh, the extra added burst damage. Spirit Breaker, Shadow Demon to back you up. I I think it would round out the draft pretty well. Of course, your only problem is that you're up for Sapugna, so you do need to build a Nullifier if you want to not waste your entire Omni Slash. Yeah, um, I am seeing more and more uh, in the Eastern European region. I'm seeing pretty much every carry at the minute because Pugna seems to come out every game. He's mm -hmm. not um, scary enough to ban out. I mean, he's a, he's a skeleton on fire. What gets scarier than that? <laughs> Apart from, obviously, the Broodmother. But, um, yeah, no, he de does seem to be popping up every game. So I am seeing the carries now uh, prioritize building into that nullifier coming out. So we'll see. I mean, Egypt going through the reserve time. 34 seconds left on the clock. Um, and, yeah, no, it might be something, or it will be something that whatever carry gets picked up, like you say, you, you know, rightly that it will be considered. Um, the rest of the draft from Team Egypt, we've got the Spirit Breaker coming out in the Void Spirit. Now, Spirit Breaker, I'm seeing being played between the three and the four. Uh, it looks like it might be the four coming out here, but it, it's running the lane when it, wherever it comes out in the place so what makes a spirit breaker go from seeing zero game time to being so so strong in the current matter i think first off people are just not picking because they're like okay global presence but we have a 
we have a twin gate now on here. It's it's yeah. like we set this up from the beginning. We <laughs> already knew. We have already told you why Rudy is going to be an absolute menace on this juggernaut. Well, once level twenty hits, like yeah, you're yeah. really walking the tightrope before that with this hero. Um, yeah, and meanwhile on the start of Algeria, they did go for the Phoenix as well. So looking at this lineup, I mean, I think it's going to be a core. I want to say a core Phoenix. I'm going to let me just give it a quick, uh, a quick double check because I hope the team's right. Yeah, because we've got mar uh, marijuana yes. uh, uh, and forgive me any pronunciations um, <laughs> because again, this is the first time I've seen the names, but I want to say Maruani. Yeah, Marwan, I don't know, but he is certainly the offlaner. Okay. Um, and if anyone, you know, send me a message, because I'm awful. Even the, again, the Eastern European, I get messages like every broadcast. Yeah. Uh, hey, that, that player's actually pronounced this, and that um, four in his name is actually a CH, because it goes back to, like, the Cyrillic, and it's like, cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that, like, Yes, please hands, tell no. us. Yeah, no, absolutely love them. Um, so looking at this, it looks like it's going to be the offlane Phoenix, but like you were saying, all in on the Medusa here for Team Algeria. So um, is it just more utility to come out to help this Medusa, like with the Sunray uh, Supernova coming out as well, maybe to hop on the back of the Stone Gaze, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Algeria now has three ways in order to say no to a team fight that they don't <laughs> want. You can pop an RP, you can pop a Stone Gaze, you can pop the Phoenix Alt. And those are just AOE ways, right? You also still have the Swap from the Venge, and you have the Decrep from the Pugna to add some extra no to the uh, to the already sizable pile. Okay, and looking at both lineups, any uh, favorites, any thoughts before we get into game number one? Mm, I do favor the team with the easier teamfight execution normally. Mm -hmm. But... In this case, I'm wondering if it's not at the cost of, for example, their pick-off potential. They absolutely cannot pick off anything on Algeria unless they get a swap in yeah. from Spy. So, in that regard, like especially combined with the fact that Egypt does still have the higher MMR uh, all over, and it it does matter a lot still in like the thousand ranks of immortal yeah. there's such a big gap between like a 3k immortal and a 1.5k immortal that i will um uh, i will favor the more well-rounded lineup of egypt here and of course as i said i'm on the juggernaut train yeah um we'll see how that one's gonna come out super rudy's had a good series already um running riot on the Bloodseeker and the last you know he just I, he literally could not stop him and it you know it, it did really play off for him so we'll see if super rudy's gonna be able to have a similar performance um looking through we're not gonna see any aggression i was talking to Atomo about this as well that i'm seeing a lot more level one uh rotations a lot more smokes coming out into enemy sides of the map um even past getting the vision out in the mid lane and is it just teams looking to get that is first blood just so valuable here that it's worth making like the five-man rotation into the enemy territory to try and pick it up Honestly, I'm not so sure. Like the the more I'm, the more I'm looking at it, the more it's like no, it's about getting the vision down. Yeah. Or just literally just having something to do. <laughs> okay. Well, magic missile gonna be coming through onto forever. Um, nobody gonna be getting that lower water bounty rune in the water though. We'll see if the spirit breaker moves over to it. it looks like Meteor Bob will be going towards it here, and. Just looks like it is going to be the two for two in terms of runes. Now, I did like in the first series, Egypt were able to utilize these uh, twin gates as well. We'll see if Meet Your Bob is going to be able to do something like that. Um, he did it on the Pudge in the second game, which just able to get around, get those gaps going. So, looking forward to seeing the momentum going this way. Any lanes we should be watching out for, particularly here, the matchup coming into this first game, do you think? Well, this mid lane here for sure is going to be uh, a bit of a problem for Forever. Shushu should be out damaging him pretty heavily. And if you don't get, like, if you don't make really good use of your resin pulses here, as oh, I am, uh, I'm so sorry for distracting us away from the, uh, the offlaner immediately going down. It's okay. I get caught monologuing all the time when I'm solo casting. <laughs> you know, I just get so into it. Um... Yeah. I mean, it looks very simple, though. They realize that the Phoenix has fire spirits, and they spin on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And being able to do the damage in, 
Like I say, this this Pogonio, there's no prep to come out yet, even if there was the spin, uh, would have been able to carry on. The, the Nether Blast, he's just going to be able to avoid it. They're going to be able to go in, another disruption coming out now. They don't have the spin for the next five seconds. Charge is going to be here for Meteor Bob as well, so maybe buying this time here. And it looks like Newbie Show is going to be taking a lot of damage. Spin comes out. This is going to be another kill. Going the way of the Jug. He will just be able to walk himself away. Some harass coming out, but he has that level two, so I'm assuming a healing ward to come out with the sick charges. Yeah, yep. and then happy story here for Super Rudy. Yeah, that is a great opening for him here. And yeah, as you said, Meteor Bob immediately going to take the Twin Gate back to top again. Where this Darkseer, he's not up first as a purge, which usually means that he's already going to have his farm no matter what. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's very hard to keep a Darkseer from farming if you cannot literally <laughs> stop him uh, from the Ion Shells and the Surges. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be able to get a couple of last hits in as well. And, um... Yeah. Was it? Okay, so all the days are kind of bleeding into one, so please remind me if I was talking to you, or I was just talking to myself, which happens more often than I'd like at the minute, but um, uh, did we see the Darkseer and the Spirit Breaker lane when we were casting together a couple of days ago, or was that, when I, like I say, when I was solo casting? Because this lane... I think it, that was you solo, but it's it's a monster, isn't it? Yeah, it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting that um, meet your Bob, especially with the Twin Gates now, that he doesn't even need to be on this lane to be effective, but... I know! Gonna be able to just run in with an iron shell, get that harass out, and if you're in his path, uh, you know, hopefully there's some mercy there. But Meteor Bob, he doesn't look like a merciful fellow from what I saw in that first series. No, no, he is definitely of the the non merciful, and it it, it feels so good, right, to have one of yeah. those really tanky guys uh, with the iron shell on it. Although not that tanky now that he just eats a full Mystic Snake like the later Bansons, and now actually, yeah, oh, good there's. Vacuum. But he's still gonna get punished. Yeah, but as an off laner, if I take somebody with me before I go down, I'm like, job done. Like, uh, disrupting the carrier, they're gonna be able to get a kill on the bottom lane, though. They do take down the Shadow Demon before Super Rudy's gonna be able to get the return kill onto Nubi Show. Um, and yeah, Super Rudy, I mean, Super Rudy's packing up the levels of two here as well. Uh, Icarus Dive on cooldown, so if there's a rotation quickly from the Shadow Demon TP, they might be able to get another kill. Um, Mid? Do they actually... They do. They're going to be able to come in forever, trying to get it up. But could be some body blocks coming through now as well. Turns around with the resin pulse. Do they have the damage? Shu Shu trying to get himself away from this one. It's only level one in the poison. But three or four stacks in this. It might be enough, especially with the damage coming through. Magic Missile, though. Yeah, they're going to be able to get the kill. Megio gets the kill into Paradox in the top lane. And I didn't think, with the help of the Spirit Breaker, obviously, but I didn't think that was going to be happening anytime soon here. As Forever moving himself towards the Water Rune. Spy just takes it right from underneath in the charge. Coming through, do they get the kill? They yeah. do get the kill onto Forever. And now meet your Bob. Tips come out. I mean, great play, but maybe just a little bit of overconfidence there from Forever. Yeah, he did that to himself, I'm afraid. And it's he is counting on Meteor Bob to come in there, but Meteor Bob mm -hmm. has been occupied on the top line already. So, comes in a little late, and that gives Spidey perfect opportunity to do what he came into the lane for at first, and Shushu doesn't even get pushed out in the end. Yeah, and like I said, the advantage, you're talking about this mid lane as well, the three points now on the Empower for Shushu, so we'll see how much more he's going to be able to get over. He's already got a level difference by one, uh, as they get the kill on to Spy in the top lane. Um, yeah, we'll see how much more in favor of this mid lane this Magnus is going to get. And at what point do you think this Darkseer gets left alone, uh, left alone on the loan? Gets left alone <laughs> on the lane by the Spirit Breaker? Is it when he gets this Vanguard out, do you think? I mean, I, I already don't think that Meteor Bob has been particularly attached to this lane, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think he has been very, very free to go wherever he pleases. I don't see a reason for him to necessarily spend more time in other lanes, uh, unless, of course, like, Spy is very high level and he deals a lot of damage. I'm actually pretty impressed by that. Yeah, bottom lane, there is going to be a curse to have TP. Do these, does he actually get in time in time? It looks like the damage is not going to tick up here. Maybe show bottom lane. And he just TP'd himself back to the tier 1 tower, and it looks like Famous wants to carry on going here. He's going to one more right click. No! He has the one charges, and it looks like Famous, he needs to be very careful as well, because there might be a nether blast in his near future, which might just be enough oh, yeah, to secure very, this kill. Especially here now. Oh, <laughs> oh, he goes right and Nubi Show goes left here through the trees. He's juking, he's breaking some ankles. He's going to have to get himself away though from the Pugner. The Pugner again, one no. of the fastest heroes in the game. One more right click through the trees. Nubi Show, does he guess right? He sees the vision, gets the kill onto the Shadow Demon there. Clean it up, but now the blast comes out. Spin was a little bit too late. And Nubi Show, where the rotation coming in from Phoenix. I think Super Rudy just needs to break some ankles himself. 
Yeah, he is going to get right on out of there, which is the correct choice, but that does mean that this bottom lane has now officially... This is a big wave coming into the tower. First catapult coming in here. This is going to be a lot of damage. Yeah, top lane. There is a charge going to come through with the spy. Mega is pretty darn low. He's already used that vacuum now as well. Shadow poisons from the, spirit, the shadow demon. Did he get the kill? They get down spy. And now the disruption. Darkseer is only level 5. There's no wall to be dropped here as well. Paradox looks like he's going to be able to get himself away from this one. There's most of his mana, but the TP back to the tier 1. He will just be able to sit back, regen, and uh, not even count his lucky stars. You know, he 100% calculated the, I think, from the Medusa. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this this top lane, and I, I think you were actually correct in asking like when Meteor Bob is going to leave, but this top lane has only really gotten worse, surprisingly, for the Darks here. He really did better at the start there than he's doing now. Um, and is it a case then of maybe the you know the Twin Gates going into play, getting the Shadow Demon up here more and more? Or is it kind of that you just let the lane go how it's going, and the Spirit Breaker now starts to roam himself around and look to put the pressure onto the other lanes? So normally what I'd do is not reinforce a losing lane further if you can't fully flip it into a winning lane. Like you would much rather reinforce your winning lanes to win harder than yep. prop up a losing lane where the Darkseer is like, eh, I'm getting enough out of this probably. Okay. Well, there is going to be the chase down onto Spy once again. A little bit of damage, Mystic Snake bounces through. Back to the Medusa here. The wall will be dropped. Did he actually go for this one, Spy? Going to be able to walk himself away. The vacuum goes back onto Paradox. So Paradox, Omega is completely out of mana now as well. That Vanguard. Pretty much saving his life is he's gonna be able to walk himself away. Spy on the hunt, but meet your Bob got that charge up. One second was that bash. Never mind. Magic missile comes out. Gonna be able to get the kill. And the illusion from the Medusa or Dark Seer's illusion on the Medusa. Even the surge. Spy should be able to run himself away from this one. It's got four seconds left, and he shouldn't be able to get the kill with the illusion before it ticks out. I know it's a really good illustration of why I'd really rather meet your Bob goes anywhere else in that lane. Because mm -hmm. you already know you're not going to be able to flip it into a win. You'd much rather, yeah, here, bot lane. Mm -hmm. I love that. The disruption of Susa Acris Dad comes through. There's the Omni Slash if he wants to go for it. And it looks like they're going to get the Phoenix Flow charge coming through from the Spirit Breaker here as well. Maybe just to try and finish off this kill. Super Rudy has the phase boots. Like for the chase, Omni Slash comes out. The egg is there. Is it going to be broken? One more right click. He's going to be able to get it, surely. Yeah. Yes, he does. Very nice. Dominating screen for Super Rudy. He is having one hell of a good start. Yeah. That's the, the full cornucopia he's going to be flying in right now. Yep, that, that thing's annoying as all hell <laughs> to build up, so he's going to feel happy about himself. Yeah, it's pretty much, you know, the Perseverance light um, coming through. The the fact It's like the old Perseverance as well, because it gives, is it seven damage it gives? Uh, something like that. Yes, yeah, seven damage. Through. Yeah, so like the old Perseverance that uh, used to get damage here as well. Mid lane, Meteor Hammer comes through. Are they going to be able to get the kill here? Famous trying to get himself away from this one, but the rotation from, well, the Shadow Demon only ends in Demise and Forever just has to back himself away. What was that? Three, four heroes in the mid lane there looking for a kill on the support. Yeah, and right now I'm starting to regret um, favoring Egypt after the draft <laughs> so much. Because... Oh no. It, it really looks like Algeria just has their team slightly more together. Like, especially the fractured play with uh, Meteor Bob going to back to top lane several times felt a little... Um, like they felt they should be able to solve it like this instead of with some, some more adaptive and some more creative thinking, right? Yeah, and I do like the Algerian. Look, looking at it now, the Ventual Spirit, um, because the Magic Missile is effectively, uh, you know, an instant cast, as long as he's running towards you, you're going to be able to stun up the, you know, the Spirit Breaker every single time before it connects. Charge comes back. The skewer's going to be there, though. Shushu does get the bottle on the Arcane Rune. What damage can they do? It's going to be the Magic Missile coming through. Spirit Breaker trying to get himself away from the drain. But with the Haunting Wave coming through, one more right click from Shushu. I mean, Shockwave, anything. Skewer, he's going to try and deny himself the neutrals. They will take it. And Shushu, just a little bit too slow to get the kill on the Spirit Breaker. Must be too fast, too furious. Top tower is under <laughs> and Super Rudy in the tree is going to be able to pull himself back. That's something we didn't talk about, though. When he had to TP back to base, he did lose that tier 1 tower. Mm -hmm. So even though he's getting Dyer's a lot out of it, this this attack. safe lane, it ain't so safe anymore. No, this, this safe lane is over now, and this is now mm -hmm. Merwan's kingdom, and he is going to be very happy with that indeed. And he's got the Meteor Hammer as well, so that means that if... Uh, Rudy does try to leave this bottom lane and try to get some impact done elsewhere. His tower is going to start taking damage from that Phoenix. Yeah, the Banish comes out now as well before the Icarus Dive. The charge connects while the disruption is still going. So now, Icarus Dive comes through, meet your Bob, still only level 5. There will, will be the diving from forever. Boy, 
Remnant goes down. Can they get the kill onto the Phoenix? The Phoenix, he's just running himself away from anyone. The swap comes out. Egg will be dropped, but not cracked here. As the Phoenix gets a complete reset. And like you were talking about, everybody on the side of Egypt needs to peel. Otherwise, they would have been taking an egg to the face. Yeah, and that was four Egypt heroes just trying and failing to kill a single Phoenix. That is so much time wasted. You'll happily spend one or two ults. Uh, in order to actually keep them from getting that kill. That's massive. Your Medusa was just farming Ancients all that while. Yeah, uh, looking good here for the Medusa. We take a look at the net worth, you know, 6.3 to the 5.7 of the Jug. But I've got to say, I thought it would be a little bit more, and this is before the Battle Fury for the Jug as well, so the Jug going to have more than enough room to catch up. Yes. Uh, you know, team permitting. So what is the objective? You know, how do Egypt need to play this? Do they need to pull all this aggression away from the Juggernaut here in this lane? Or is it more looking to protect and push onto that tier 1 tower in the bot lane? And a lot of it depends on the build of the Darks here as well. And if you look at him right now, he's actually going to go for the pipe. So we are going to look to group up. This is not a, a selfish Darks here. I'm going to, you know, go for the normal punch immediately kind of mm -hmm. build. He's building to group up. He's building to take towers with that Juggernaut, which is, in my opinion, the correct way to go at it. Otherwise, you're reduced to playing a pickoff game versus a team with a bunch of saves. Yeah. Um, how do you want to play then if you're, uh, you know, Algeria? Are you just, I mean, the Medusa's still farming, so are you yeah, just trying to play un <laughs> under vision, you know, uh, and, you know, looking for those defensive saves? Or can they run up, you know, Team Egypt here and try and get some more out of this game? As it looks like this night, Pugna might go down. Does he go down? So it might be there, but they're still going to be able to get the kill. And now Spy might be in a little bit of trouble. Now the strike will connect. And we'll say they might have damage here as well, but the Void Spirit is actually going to change his mind, walk himself away as the Phoenix comes through here. And uh, Icarus Dive actually coming out. Oh, there's no egg. It does just come off cooldown. So maybe with the charge, no. Should we cancel behind that tier one tower? Magic missile on the shadow demon here. So the bench is going to do a little bit of harassing out, but it looks like everybody after that kill onto the pugna looking to maybe play nice. Well, I don't know how nice you can get with the magic missile going down here. And famous, there is going to be some shadow poison. Charge comes through as well. Do they have enough damage to get the kill here with the bash? It will be enough. And the spirit breaker does take the bench down. I mean, the funny part during all of this is, of course, that the gold differential briefly peaked up to 3k for Algeria. Despite of it being their hero that goes down. Yeah, and I mean, Medusa with split shot, you know, just, yeah. just money, you know, printing money here for this Medusa. Absolutely. I mean, she's got full points in all of her abilities right now and is going to go for the standard item versus the Juggernaut, which is the Butterfly. Really going all in on being able to sustain the fight versus yeah. that Omni Slash. So, already has a bunch of items to build. He's going to, yeah, he's going to go Mad style as uh, Marwan's chipping away at the mid tower. It's going to be some harass but not to simulate though, used by the Void Spirit. Uh, Pugna rotating in as well. He's got this Invis rune. The tower's going to go down here. Does he want to go for it, though? There's going to be the dive in three heroes around forever. He wants to be going into it with the resident pulse coming through as well. Omni Slash, it does connect. And it looks like it's going to be connecting completely onto Spy. Spin comes through. They get the kill. Now the charge onto the Phoenix. And it doesn't matter. He doesn't have Renicorous dives to get himself away from this one for another couple of seconds. The right click, though, it won't get the bash off. And he's going to be able to get that dive out. Sunray coming through. Void Remnant does go down here. And it Not looks again. like Spirit Breaker. Does he get himself away? <laughs> He does! <laughs> ah, supremely annoying. <laughs> Healing Ward doing work, coming in clutch. Absolutely. I love Paradox coming in here, though he is an absolute unmovable object. There is nobody in this game that can take him down currently unless he severely misplays, especially with the Mantis style in his pocket. Yeah, and we'll see what he's going to be able to do. There will be the charge up from the Spirit Breaker, though, towards the top lane. Rotation, did he get enough damage onto the Magnus? Magnus is going to get low, but the RP is going to be committed now as well. Reverse Drain coming out, the Stone Gaze now as well. The drag back underneath the tower, and the Phoenix does and finally take down the Spirit Breaker. It looks like the chase is on, though. On the back lines, they do get the kill onto the Magnus. Will this cost forever his life here? Magic Missile comes out, swap back into danger. Going to try and get himself away with the Dissimilate, but there is three heroes waiting on the edge of the damage here. Phoenix will still be able to get the kill and look like Egypt they'd already given up on him so they moved themselves away and now coming back in maybe a little bit of saving your friend syndrome coming out here Nubishu to try and chase down Mergu has got himself to jump out here with the tumblers toy and it looks like Burly team Egypt will be able to get the shadow demon as well as Darkseer away 
Well, there's still another win for Algeria. They are, I feel, a little slow at backing each other up, but mm -hmm. not so slow that Egypt doesn't get punished for the actions. So that feels really nice. The only thing they need now is to get somebody to that middle tower where Super Rudy is chopping away. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, the Pugna rotation is going to come in. So will the Magnus. And it's only going to be about down to what? Just below half health, about two thirds of its health gone. Um, so we'll see though. But it looks like there's going to be a bit of a push pull coming out here. You see the TPs coming into the mid lane. So the rotation comes out. Egypt, uh, they're looking for more. I mean, the Medusa's already away. So it's just going to be illusions on illusions here. But the Magnus. You might want to go. The RP is still down for 38 Wait, seconds, though. No. They, they see me, your Bob. There's going to be there's going to be no drag back, as there is going to be just that straight up charge away. Does he want to go back in? No. Uh, and now finally, Algeria is falling into the pattern where they group up too much and are losing farm opportunities because of it. So, if you know, with we with Egypt trying to apply this pressure, how would then you would like to see Algeria play? Do they just maybe only send one or two and let the Magnus farm through the jungle while the Medusa's on the bottom lane. What is it you'd like to see Algeria doing? See, I think this Blink Dagger on the Magnus is a little bit late. The fact that he went for the full Harpoon, if you have a Blink Dagger in that situation, you can just, yeah, skewer back people without having to risk yourself. Oh, big wall into the vacuum though. Mega's gonna get himself away from this one. He does pop the pipe. There's gonna be the need to have it being dropped now as well, but did he get enough damage to get out here? They will be able to get the kill into the Magnus and then back themselves away from the Supernova. No, don't go back in. Get yourself out here, Super Rudy on the back line. Gets the kill onto the Vengeful Spirit here. Mm. Newbie Show trying to get himself away. The remnant will be dropped, but he dodges it off. And now the chase down Iron Shell doing a lot of damage. Spin to win comes in, and they get the kill onto the Pugna. And this is going to be the Phoenix. I mean, he is here, but how much can he defend up against four or five heroes? It looks like he no. might just leave this tier two to go. I was going to say go down, but it's not even taking that much damage. No, it's not, and th that is the direct result of the Greed of the Magnus, right? Yeah. If you get, if you have a Blink Dagger there and you skewer that guy back behind your own tower, or if you've done that like before, then it's not that easy for Mego to just run in, pop the pipe, pop the wall, mm -hmm. uh, without any punishment or without anybody intercepting him before he can do that, right? Bottom lane. Could be some pressure. Medusa gonna be charged now as well. Down to half mana. These illusions coming through here. They're gonna be able to get the charge out. Now the strike now connects as well. Do we have enough damage with the solar crest coming out? The reverse drain. They're trying to keep all of his mana up, and it looks like Meteor Bob may have overextended the four heroes to defend the Medusa. While this is going on, though, it pulls the aggression away from the top lane where Super Rudy and Mago. They want to put pressure onto this tier two tower and maybe even take down a Phoenix in return. And he just goes for the Icarus dive away. Really good map player from Egypt now, though. The way yeah. that they pull. Oh, as uh, that was an interesting interaction. You see that? Uh, no, I was looking at the top tower. What happened? No, so the Magnus was disrupted, but he was also still skewering back forever. So the bubble was moving and pushing forever towards the tier two mid. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, it's one of those things, he just becomes an unstoppable object uh, when uh, once he gets going. So, yeah, it's quite literally in the name and forever. Well, luckily he was able to get the Dissimulator. I saw the, the end of it, I saw the Dissimulator away there as well. So, forever maybe counted himself lucky with, again, two, three heroes waiting, rubbing the hands together, waiting for them to be put into their clutches, and he gets himself out. Quite a yep. And Algeria's now got one of the tools that they are going to need to use the the butterfly is up on the dusa and this means that as far as the siege siege tank capability of this hero goes she's kind of has to be ready unfortunately yeah. the butterfly buildup does mean that she's still very vulnerable to the rest of the damage that's not um stopped by evasion yeah so still probably not as tanky as you'd like her to be but the other item is a blink dagger on a magnus which is up right now and they're immediately smoking Okay, okay, we'll see how this goes here. And it looks like it might be a 3v5 as both the, the Boy Spirit... No, Boy Spirit's going to TP himself down. Shadow Demon, he's going to do it on foot, it seems like. Got the regen boots for a little bit faster. The jump comes in, big jump in. Great RP. It doesn't even matter. Shadow Demon just go home as Egypt lose four heroes and might even be able to get a Rosh out of this here as well. Roshan back into his home. And that was just an amazing jump coming out from the Magnus. He sees one of them step off the ramp and he 
He knows, man. He knows the guy. <laughs> They're all right there. He just yeah. makes that judgment call and he gets rewarded with a four-man RP and the absolute annihilation of Egypt. And this is precisely the game that Egypt did not want to play. They did not in a million years want to team fight Algeria. There's no way to win that. Uh, although, really, normally it should go slightly better than this. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, losing four in one Damn big swing, that's that's not, I mean, I'm not a great player, but I know I think that's yeah. not a great move for Egypt. It, it, you know, it can only be better next time, but that was <laughs> yeah. one of the, the well, juiciest well. RPs I've seen this week. It could even, well, it could also be a five-man RP into a straight-up team wipe, so, uh, well, let's... It was going to go through. There's going to be pressure coming through onto Shushu. Shushu just gets the immediate drive back with the skewer. They get the kill onto the Shadow Demon. And now, Paradox, even if he does lose his mana and his health once, he's got that age of Super Rudy. Completely ignores this Medusa. Wants to go to the back lines. But even the back lines, they are pretty darn tanky very well. here. Yeah, Snake jumps on. It's going to be the Mantis now being popped by the Juggernaut now. Can they get enough damage to get through? Wall does get dropped really Ooh, that's back very nice. four or five heroes. What damage can it do here? There's going to be a lot of damage coming through. Stone Gate will be used as well. It looks like they might be able to get a lot through with the spin. And yeah, Paradox is going to get real <sighs> darn low sneak. on its mana. Can they do it twice though? Do we have enough damage as Algeria? It's going to be their turn to lose three, four heroes as Shushu. He stops the farm. Got that RP in 10 seconds. The wall will still be doing its job here. Medusa could be taking a lot of damage, but everybody inside of Egypt is pretty darn low. And the Magnus, he's just waiting. He's got that RP two seconds away. They're going to group up. Are they going to be able to get the jump out? Skewer comes out. Oh, he catches onto the juggernaut. The spin comes through. That's going to be the death of the Magnus and the Medusa. Oh. Super Rudy survives. So yeah, no, you're right. It did get better. Yeah, yeah, that, that got a lot <laughs> better. I mean, Algeria making kind of the same mistake as Egypt. They're all clumping up in the same small area versus, in this case, the only team fight spell of Egypt. But it doesn't matter because all the team fight on Algeria is down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's hard though because they're correct in grouping. They're yeah. correct in standing together because the Medusa needs to be covering the supports. As long as the Medusa, as long as you know, if you're attacking the supports of Algeria, the Medusa also needs to be hitting you. That's the kind of positioning yeah. we're going for here, if you're Algeria. You need to get punished for daring to touch her supports. Unfortunately, when you're in like an awkward place like that, sometimes it can lead to these moments where just everybody is standing on top of each other, you know, on each other's toes, kicking each other's heels. They go, mm, sorry ma'am, excuse me ma'am, I'm coming through. And the wall was perfect. Yeah, especially around behind those trees in the new part of the map where it is, I mean, I know it's a wide open space, but to get into that wide open space, you know, it's a lot of little paths you have to get through. And like I say, Dark's here with the absolute perfect wall here. We'll see what they're going to be able to do. They're even going to be able to get the drive back onto the Medusa. And again, this time Medusa, no Aegis and the swap in from the Venge. Going to be taking the brunt of this damage from the Illusions and the Medusa only just gets out here, this Vengeful Spirit, 80 health left. And that's after ticking up some. Yeah, those illusions, man, the fact they basically don't take any damage, the Pugna <laughs> really needs to be on point. Yeah, and we'll see what he's going to be able to do with it. Just looking at the Jug's items, he got the Diff Blade in after that last fight. He's going to go towards, well, for the minute he's got a Scotty queued up, but with the Butterfly already being here, would you prefer to see an MKB, or are the stats in that Scotty just way too important for the Jug? Ooh... The stats on the Scotty are very important for him. There's a lot of physical damage over on the enemy side, and you need to do something against that. Yeah. On the other hand, if you want to get stats, I mean, I, I know it's not nearly as good, but you could also go for uh, for Aghanim Scepter here, which would bulk up your stats as well as your damage output. Yeah, and being able to get off the, the Swift Flash there as well. Maybe, you know, you do catch either the Pugna or Spy out of position. Uh, just be able to get a quick one off and then have your main ultimate still going. Uh, it wouldn't be too bad. How's Forever looking on the lane creeps? Okay, some rune pickups. But yeah, for the most part, it looks like everybody getting uh, mostly off the, the lane creeps. And what's what's the big item for Medusa next? It's going to be a Daedalus. So damage on damage on damage. But again... Uh, yeah. Double-edged sword here with all these illusion potential coming out from the side of Egypt. Yes, absolutely. She is... I mean, at, at least there won't be stats, right? But... <laughs> you're... You're going to be very, very vulnerable if your saves are not on point. On the other hand, your save should feel pretty happy knowing that as long as they stand decently close to you, you're going to be killing everybody who tries to breathe on you. But if the decently close vacuum wall, yeah, you know, it's, it's big vac. boom. <laughs> vac is the problem. 
Yeah. And um. the other problem with that is that there's currently absolutely zero force staffs over on the side of Algeria, which is something that I think they should definitely consider versus this lineup. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, if, in general, what? I'm never happy to see zero force staffs. By the way, I think that if you if you have zero force staffs, you're playing Dota wrong, and that Egypt is is once again the better team. Okay. <laughs> because uh, they have one on the SD. <laughs> no, Kips, please don't hold Dyer's back. Please tell us how you really feel. <laughs> so uh, many feelings are all. <laughs> <laughs> they jump in. They're going to be able to get themselves to Trevor Fight. Comes out on the bug now. The Yule set to there as well, trying to save his life spin. Oh, coming through here with the Omni Slice. They're going to be able to get Spy now as well. Back lines. They do still take down Nubishu. And Shushu has to go for the charge away. And Paradox. He pops this stone gates, but the illusions are already here. Can they get even more out? Do they want to go for this wall on top of the Medusa? Quite Medusa low. getting low on mana. The wall comes out immediately. The Medusa drops now. The Super Rudy trying to get himself over What's to this, this egg. Back? I think they have enough to get the pop here. One more right click. No, the egg, it explodes, doesn't break the charge. It stops the mid Icarus dive. The banish comes out from the destruction. They're going to be able to hit the kill onto the Phoenix now. Cleaning up three heroes. They don't lose anybody, even with that supernova coming out and exploding. No, very good spacing by Egypt there. If you if you played a team fight wrong, you're going to either get RP'd from one side or that ultimate from the Phoenix is going to come out way earlier on the other side and they might actually save the Medusa. Yeah. But I also think that Algeria sort of calculated the longevity of their Medusa role because you can see that Phoenix going in as soon as the Medusa's mana gets low and that's that's too late these days. That's an old <laughs> reflex. It's like, oh, her mana is nearly over. This is where we counter-initiate. Yep. No, no, you don't, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> the mana's low, the hero's gone. Um, yes. And I know we talked about in the draft a nullify coming out for the carry, but it looks like Juggernaut obviously on his way to that Scardy, so it's going to be the Void Spirit, actually. And, mm -hmm. you know, I do like this. He's got um, backline dive, so he can get on top of this Pugna as well. Uh, you know, with the Juggernaut, he might have to invest himself in a Blink Dagger first. So having this on the Void Spirit, he's going to benefit from the damage coming out as well. This is a big impact item, I think, for the Void Spirit. And is it just going to be purely, you know, Void, uh, as soon as he fights kick off, just dives to the backline and tries to look for the pick off on the Pugna? Yeah, he could do that, or he can sit in the trees for a while while his Juggernaut does his thing, and as soon as an Omni Slash comes out and the decrap happens, you step in and un uncrapify. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh... Whoever is currently crapified. Um, I'm... <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, no, because if you're decrapifying oh, someone, yes, do, you, uh, do you recrapify them? Recrapify, re yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And. Yeah, Jug's having a good time. Jug's on top of the net worth in here as well. We don't have about a thousand gold. And, uh, yo, we did talk about how with the, the Battle Fury coming out, yeah, Jug, a couple of good fights, but being able to keep pace with the Reducer in this game like this, a game like this, so, so important for the Jug. And, mm -hmm. yeah, Rudy is up for the task. He is, and especially, I, I was counting this a couple of levels ago already when he was behind the Medusa. He was 17 mm -hmm. and she was 18, I believe. He is now level 19, nearly to that mythical level 20 where the Blade Dance lifestyle is going to come in. And the Medusa is only three quarters through 18, so she Dyer's is not going to get to her, either her Stone Gaze or her Mystic Snake Dances. What do you pick here? Do you go for, I mean, with the illusions coming out all over the place, do you want those Mystic Snake Bounces or is the Stone Gaze? Snake. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Especially also because your up first is a lineup that is mostly melee. Everybody who wants to deal damage to you is going to stand around you in a circle and slap you. And the yeah, I know that snake... feeling. <laughs> I'm very sorry about your high school experience, Rob. But this is not the time. Radiance top tower is under attack. We'll see. At least the Phoenix being able to get himself over to the sideline actually steals away the Radiant um, Wisdom Rune. So we've seen the Phoenix going for. He's got the Hand of Midas, the Meteor Hammer, and the Shivas. How mm -hmm. much do you actually? First of all, how much do you like this offlane Phoenix, and how much do you like the build that he's actually gone for here? So I have no qualms with the build. Yeah. As a, oh, oh, he's gonna pop the Supernova. Is he gonna yeah, be able to get himself away from this one? I mean, he's. Yeah, he's, he's still away. charged, though. <laughs> the banish comes out. Yeah, the charge is coming through. He's trying to get himself over the high ground. He can't get himself away. He's going to be bounced back and forth. And he do get the kill onto the Phoenix. So, uh, rough here for, you know, the Phoenix looking at yeah. 5, 6, and 5. I, I gotta say, this map is really big. Meteor Bob was all the way on the bottom side, and it took him <laughs> forever and a day to get here. Like, that didn't used to be the case. Oh, they the Juggernaut in the camp of death. 
Yeah, they're going to try and commit on something. He's going to go for the spin now as well. Snake Bounce is coming through. But, I mean, the swap comes out. He's going to be in the middle of three, four heroes. Super Ace just straight up dead and being caught out without the rest of his team around. But that is the Stone Gaze down here. Let's see if Egypt is going to get the dive onto the back line. Take down Spy Charge. Come through again if they get it off. There's a good wall potential. Banishment onto the Medusa. The Medusa tries to get himself for the wall. The vacuum into three. Nice. He's able to get even more. These illusions should clean up. He's even got the normal punches coming through as well. Juju cannot get himself away. Paradox out of mana, out of life, out of time. And that was a five well technically a four because the phoenix wasn't there but a four for one five for one five for two as the buyback comes out from the shadow demon um yep. you know really good fight even when they're not there they were still able to follow up and catch algeria out of position and that was algeria's initiation yeah they they chose that entire fight they had already killed the juggernaut i I have to question the Magnus here a little bit again, unfortunately, because there's no reason for him to be standing so close to the Deuce in a moment. Yeah. Just, there's just none. And we'll see here. I mean, the, there are buybacks available, but Egypt, they're coming to break base. They're going to get another swipe of the Phoenix, and he's going to go down again. 50 seconds, no buyback here on the Phoenix. And we did get interrupted when you were talking about this Phoenix on, on the fight, on the Phoenix pick on himself, so... Will we see the kill on the movie show? It looks like he might go down. Will Steps comes out, but yeah, how much did you actually enjoy this Phoenix offlane being picked up? It's alright if you actually get somebody to make up for the fact that you didn't really pick a utility hero on your offlane. It's very... I think it's very visible that this game got hard for Algeria the moment that the team items came in from the side of Egypt and they just didn't have any. Yeah. Like, it's just a dark share shows up with a pipe and it's like, oh yeah, we, we don't have a pipe and we now take, you know, <laughs> uh, 300 extra damage per hero. So, would you have, I mean, I've seen offlane Batriders even going into the Crimson Guard. Would you have preferred to see the Phoenix go for the, for the Crimson and be a little bit more defensive over the Meteor Hammer, or was it just that the hero's gonna build this way anyway and it just, you know, didn't really pay off? I think the hero should build this way anyway, because you need right. some sort of threat out of your offlaner, I think, and in this case it was tower threat, and he did a decent job of that. All of the tier ones are down without too much, um, you know, he, he got picked off a bunch of time, but it was not because he was taking towers, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a jug, Got the Scardy complete now as well. Actually going to be going towards a butterfly of his own. Uh, Aegis in the bag as well here. So I think this is where Egypt cheese on the Void Spirit as well. I think this is where Egypt are going to start to look towards making the your final run at the base. And what can Algeria do to try and push them away from this? Not much. Okay. That's fair enough. Yeah, if that's going to be the RP though, it does actually catch on to two. They're going to be able to get the Juggernaut printed down low, but the wall comes out. And this is going to be a really good vacuum back. Once again, Paradox getting low on mana. Having to try and do what he can with the Mystic Snake. He just did get popped though. And now Jug is he going to be back with Avengers trying to get himself in here. The charge comes out, but only as far as the racks. And it looks like maybe Super Rudy. No, the spin comes out, so he's not going to be pulled back. Normal punches onto the Medusa. And the Medusa still on half mana. The illusions from the banishment on that disruption. Paradox, he has to pop the BKB. Omni Slash still coming through though, it's Paradox. Paradox is completely out of mana. Has to be so careful and finish the physical damage coming through. Again, Nubisho on the back lines. Do they actually ever get the kill on the Medusa? He's about yeah, no. through loads. Charging. Maga, yeah, he's taken him down. And now, well, the reverse round to Shushu in the fountain. But they have been forced back. They have no Medusa for the next 68 seconds. And the Rax, the second line of Rax will fall. Do you just go straight to tier 4 here if you reach it? Yep, absolutely. You're just going to check if that Dusa has a buyback. If she doesn't, then it is GG for you. And there's absolutely no way that Algeria can, for example, cut the creep waves behind you right now. They're not in position for that whatsoever. They don't have the time, really. And a deserved, Mago. Yeah, they're uh, coming right into the fountain farm and now, it seems. And... While the Void Spirit looks to finish off the base, they're going to try and get a little bit more something out of this. There's no Supernova. Dive comes in, normal punch. Onto the Phoenix, there's going to be a skewer back, and they might be able to get the kill. A little bit of a consolation prize there before game number two. And otherwise, though, this will be the Ancient Four, and Egypt looking to pick up game number one. And, I mean, it was a bit of a back and forth, but after that... Um, big fight, you know, the, the, the vacuum back into that wall and taking away the Aegis from the Medusa. I don't think Medusa was ever, ever able to get back on the horse and get back into this game. No, she couldn't really. And one of the pro one of the reasons that's true is because you have a very reactive lineup and you need to nail a couple of these reactions 
properly in order to stay in the saddle there. But instead you let Egypt drag you around the map a little bit, where after this good laning stage, by the way, with uh, Mago, this is one of the last times that he ever gets like um, a good opportunity on his lane, I think, because afterwards it was mostly just his Spirit Breaker going down. Yeah, and... Never tried to do anything. Yeah, no, you were talking about you're like, obviously the Spirit Breaker looking to you know not back up a losing lane there, and they were able to do I mean, it was fairly even in the lane stage, and then, like I said, coming through, it did seem to be in Algeria's favour, and I was surprised when it turned around, but one good fight, it gets them back in at Egypt. So was, was it just down to that fight for Algeria, or was there more that they could have done to try and get themselves back in that game? So the problem is with a reactive lineup like that is that you getting the game back is not really up to you because you have no right. way to force plays. All you can do is bait and hope that they take it. Like that is the most agency you've got. Uh, and they tried that a couple of times or they got forced into that a couple of times by engages from Egypt and ultimately just simply not good enough reactions from Algeria to actually make that happen. Like I think this this savior on the phoenix was one of the best pieces of wasting time that they did but apart from that uh i'm, I'm gonna have to be like uh, a bit big. i don't want to keep hating on the magnus but if you want to pull this lineup off then the magnus has to be the one with these big return rps yeah. uh once they once they go on you and you, you start pulling back, they group around some hapless victim, you need to pull off a big RP. But he got caught in the wall so many times, he was half health so many times. Uh, he didn't have his blink dagger for the longest time either. And that all compounded into a point where even if you get those reactions off, Team Egypt by that point is too tanky to really have to to care too much. Yeah, and I mean, I had this was. This so that was <laughs> yeah that was probably what we say play of the game yeah play the game the play of the game unfortunately we don't have the uh the silly animations that play post game for play of the game like some other games do but um but like this this here as well and it's, it's a shame that we don't get to see how this moves into each other but the fact that the medusa is just caught on the wall there she's trying to make her way over all the way to the left hopefully for like this respond RP, but it feels like Egypt is actually wise to that trick. Yeah. Here uh, as well. Magnus, there is an RP waiting in that corner right now. And he just doesn't get to pull it off at all, because he's already been spotted. And the the team fights coming out from Egypt, yeah, maybe they did learn from that former RP that they were like, maybe we shouldn't be stood on top of each other. Here as well. The the juggernaut pickups comes in, but he we just he just he just wastes so much time there. Um, to, you know, for, for the rest of his team to rotate in and be able to get that pick off even after the Juggernaut goes down. So coming into game number two, you know, there are signs of life here for Algeria. It's not like they got stomped out into the game. Um, looking into game number two, then what would you like to see them draft and what would you like to see them pick in here to maybe give them a bit of a better chance up against Egypt? And just something with a little more agency. Honestly, I think it's already solved by grabbing a POS4 with some form of playmaking capability. A POS4 that can move something. Um, that could be, you could be thinking towards a Mirana, you could be thinking towards, uh, you know, the Spirit Breaker. You could be thinking towards an old school Earth Spirit. Something that can actually go in, have a disable and move something in the game. That would already go a long way towards enabling their other cores. Okay. Yeah, um, I think with the Pugna coming out, you know, it did start off quite well. But like I said, they didn't actually have that initiating for the fact that they went for both the Pugna and the Bench. I like the idea on the Bench. Don't get me wrong, you know, being able to deal with the charge from the Spirit Breaker coming through. But yeah, like you say, maybe it was just a little bit too uh, defensive minded, uh, I guess, for, for the side of Algeria. So coming through into game number two, maybe they do go for something a little bit more aggressive. And, and they've sure they can do it. You know, they've sure they have great team fight. So we'll see if they're going to be mm -hmm. able to fight it back into a third game or if Egypt, if they're going to go home happy today win two two zeros um but first i think we will be able to throw it to a break and uh be back for the second game after this so we'll see you after the break Oh, 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 oh,
We can say, we can say, we can go one more day. We can try, but it's all the same. Hold on to who could have been. We just saw it on a chance. We can try, but it's all the same. Oh, I didn't want to waste my time. But I still love the taste of my bittersweet. No, I didn't want to waste your time. When we can't make our hearts get peace. What if you like letting go?
everyone, welcome back. This was a lot of closer game that we saw in the first matchup against uh, Morocco. Egypt had some struggles, but they managed to take the first game into their hands. Uh, but still, Algeria has a chance to uh, do 1-1 uh, in this matchup. Uh, but if not, and Egypt will uh, take the 2-0, they will advance to the main tournament. I heard the, the second game is ready. So again, Kips and Robin Roll, it's up to you guys. Welcome back into game number two. Kips, in that first one, I mean, it was a bit back and forth, you know, very close game. And, you know, what are you expecting to see now from Algeria? You talked about that reactive draft. Um, was it a, a lot of that game, like you say, down to the draft? Or was there more they could have done in that first game to win it out, do you think? I think they could have, but it would have required a lot of, like, coordination from the team around their Magnus, enabling the only playmaker on the team, which was the Magnus, in order to pull off the plays and i'm not sure if they didn't enable him fully or if he wasn't quite on the ball uh, i think it's most likely a combination of both of those things so they could have pulled out a better game there but they didn't make it easy on themselves like if you have only one playmaker then you're going to fall short compared to teams that just have two it's it's as easy as that so okay. i think that they can absolutely go toe to toe with egypt if they just enable themselves to make some more plays Okay, and we'll see how it's going to go um, as we should be able to get ourselves into the draft soon here for game number two. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing how it's going to play out. And looking through it, we're going to see the ban on the techies as standard. The, the clinks, the Medusa this time. No Io, no Morphlin, no Windranger, Bounty Hunter, Magnus, Slark, and Doom. And getting into it, the Spirit Breaker comes out again. This time, though, Algeria will pick it up with the Ember Spirit. You want the side of Egypt, Venomancer, Void Spirit, Bloodseeker. And Bloodseeker is getting Ten back up there in popularity. Mm -hmm. How much are you a fan of the rise of the Bloodseeker? I mean, I, I think he's already pretty, pretty like played out as a caster. But like, if you'd ask me as a coach, it's simply like, a hero, hero is winning. Hero is good against all of the meta. Just keep on picking it. <laughs> Nothing to see here. And we'll see what Algeria want to be picking up next. But the Spirit Break and the Ender Spirit coming out here. Um, how much does the Bloodseeker do? I, I, we all know you. If he charge, this charge comes out from the Spirit Breaker and the rupture is going to be there. You know, he is going to suffer, but the Ember Spirit, how much is he, he going to be worried about this Bloodseeker? Maybe one of these team fights start to come out from Team Egypt. Not that much, honestly, because you are invulnerable as long as you perform either of your movement spells. So <laughs> both the Slide the Fist as well as your ult don't really hurt you in any way, shape or form. Interesting that they pick a Five Phoenix into the Bloodseeker, because... <laughs> That's another hero that suffers, but I, I guess they're just really attached to the offlane Phoenix because SP yeah. Crystal Maiden should be their support duo here. Now, very important compared to the previous game. Ember Spirit's a playmaker, Spirit Break is a playmaker. Uh, even your Crystal Maiden can get things started if you position yourself aggressively Ten enough with, uh, with your Glimmer Cape. So, all I'm hearing is Crystal Maiden first item BKB. You know, run in, drop your freezing fields, and profit. I, I even said Glimmer Cape, Rob. <laughs> BKB. All Crystal Maiden has to buy. Uh, I mean, as, as a Crystal Maiden player myself, you know, you're not you're not wrong. <laughs> as a, again, as a core player, I don't even know what a Glimmer... What is a Glimmer Cape, did you say? Yeah, so that's the thing where you go sort of see-through and you you take less oh. magic damage all of a sudden shadow blade yeah okay i get it yeah yeah no. also your support is yelling at you to get the fuck back <laughs> dive forward and get kills mm. I, I think you'd really really empathize more with egypt's uh plan of attack here than so yeah, yeah, the, the, vo the Void Spirit is the one that suffers the most from the Bloodseeker out of all the Spirit Brothers. So the Bloodseeker, a little bit of a block pick there, I think, as mm. well. And then now we have an Oracle. Interesting. So a save coming out towards the other side as well. This and, spell is but... neat versus the SP and the Ember. Ten seconds yeah, and remain. just being able to get the save, I guess. If you get the save on the Bloodseeker, I mean, he can do the Five rest as long as he's remain. getting kills. Um, you, you pop the false promise and you, I suppose you kind of like, it's a fire of forget on that ultimate if it's on the Bloodseeker. Um, looking Radiant through, they did play the core Venomancer in the first game of the first series. It was up against the Ursa and 
I'm not lying when I say that Ursa just straight up. I'm surprised the game went as long as it did because if I was that Ursa, I probably would have just gone up, got up and walked away after like the fourth or fifth death in the lane um, <laughs> after the Venomancer being so, you know, so aggressive. So uh, are you looking towards, with the lineup coming out already here, we don't know what the, um, well, we, we are going to know what the, the final pick is for Algeria before Team Egypt, but do you just prefer this Venomancer to be the support or do you really do think it you know, benefits from being um, the core and getting those items? I do like core Venom. I think he's very tanky, very fast, really suits the uh, if you don't kill me, my team still has all of these auras kind of play style. <laughs> yeah. Even though he's slightly... I want to say he's slightly more ignorable since the Poison Nova rework, because it's not anymore like, oh, we can blow up the Venomancer and then, you know, he doesn't poison our entire team. It's like, okay, we can we can kill the Venomancer and then he's still, you know, we just killed the Aura guy, not the damage guy. Yeah, okay. Uh, I suppose it's still the same, even with the change out on the ultimate, you know, that as soon as it, like you say, as soon as he pops the Venom scale, the, the um, new ultimate, the Tainted Ooze, Tainted... No, the what? Noxious Plague. Noxious Plague, that's pretty it, yeah. Pretty close, I, though. I mean, sure. Yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, uh, on, uh, somebody uh, caught the Noxious Plague. Yeah. Oh, God, I've had it for about a month now. This cough just will not go away. Mm. Um, Algeria going back in for the Juggernaut. So, uh, I forget yeah. what my point was for the Venomancer. Um, I, oh, no, no. As soon as he throws his spells out once, you know, like you say, he can't, he's kind of just done. You know, sitting there just getting the poisonous things Ten off the plague wards but um team egypt if you see this juggernaut come out now are you running Five this venom on maybe even the blood seeker as the offlane hero or are you picking something specifically to deal with this jug just pretty hard to bully out of the lane unless you're willing to go for a ranged offlaner and in that sense if you're running the venom you've already got it yeah. hey, sure the venom can die here because most heroes after you get the spells uh, the Venno spells on them, they can't actually come back and trade in with you anymore because they're too slowed, but the Juggernaut can just pop the spin and go at you anyway. Like, that is the benefit of a Jug versus Venomancer lane. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, um, I, I think as far as, like, chipping, etc. is a uh, concern, that is, that is a decent lane. And no, we are going to go in for the LC. Okay, you know what? Fine, Egypt, you are correct. There are melee matchups that win this one. It's LC and Slardar. <laughs> And yeah, so how is Slada doing? I say that as if he's like, you know, your friend that you phone up on the weekend, like, hey, Slada, how are you doing? Here? But like, how is that hero doing in like, just in terms of it being an actual hero? Because I ain't seeing it being picked up at all. Is it not in a good place? It, it, it will get picked once Anti-Mage gets picked. Right. Like okay. that's, that's the thing. And since Anti-Mage is not getting picked, the fish is also currently still on vacation. So you're saying pick the Medusa and be like, oh no, we forgot to buy an anti-mage. So like you can bait them into a slaughter pick. Um, I guess, yeah. But then the problem is of course still that um, if your slaughter for some reason doesn't work out, then your Medusa is <laughs> tissue paper because you lose percentage mana and it's awful. True, true. So, um, Again, look at these two lineups. We've got Super Rudy on the Bloodseeker. I've already seen him do mm -hmm. well on the Bloodseeker once today. Um, the Legion Commander, a new hero, and the Spirit, new hero coming into this series, as well as the Crystal Maiden. So, looking at these two lineups, preferences before we get into game number two. I certainly like Algeria's lineup more this time around. Mm -hmm. But that is mostly because we have an LC without anybody to deal damage for her in the duel. There's no Skywrath Mage here, there's no Techies here. This is, you're going to get like some Oracle spells thrown out, I suppose. I get. I guess you have the, the Purifying Flames nuke, right? The Purifying yeah. Flames nuke is never something to sneeze at. So maybe I have to correct myself a little bit here. Um, it actually looks like it, well, it is going to be Meet Your Bob in the offlane, just not as the offlaner. And coming through with the LC in that lane. I mean, that's still a lot, even though you've got the Juggernaut that's got the spin. Um, Coming into level five, level six there for the LC, and with the, the Veno being able to put out the the Venom scale on the poison sting, you can still you know chunk down the heroes even if yeah. before the duel comes out you don't confirm the kills. You know that's still a lot of damage to come through here. The damage over time, uh, again, I know that would be to me that would be one of those lanes that I just would not want to play in. 
Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. And yeah. how do you, if you are this juggernaut crystal main lane, how do you try and deal with this off lane coming out from the side of Team Egypt? And you're going to lean really heavily on your first couple of levels. Get as much mm -hmm. done as possible there. Make sure your jug's nice and farmed. And after that, you retreat into the jungle very promptly by the time that the uh, the level sixes start rolling around, because that's when your lane is most likely over. Okay. Um, and Hurry always, always, he probably still says it, but you know, I know he used to say it as well, that around level two, level three, this Crystal Maiden is one of the scariest supports in yeah. the game, just because of the amount of power level coming out. Does that get amplified now with the Blood Grenades coming through, or yes. do you think um, there's a little bit more respect being put on the Crystal Maiden? The battle begins. I mean, certainly people respect the crystal maiden level two level three a ton like no nobody's stupid away. enough to think that she's just food right now the problem is of course that after that peak she's well she's still slow yeah. and people are allowed to you know if they do it is another question but i've already seen some infused raindrops in the previous game so both of these teams will buy raindrops and after the raindrop she's uh tasty okay okay and I don't know. It looks like she's literally made of ice whenever she dies and breaks down. So yeah. I don't know how interested the Bloodseeker is actually going to be in her. But, you know, kills a kill is a kill. As Nubi Show is going to try and charge through here, we might actually be seeing the first bullet coming out. The spin's going to be there from the Juggernaut. Oracle body blocks coming out as well. And this Oracle, well, you didn't see this one coming. As Paradox <laughs> will be able to pick up the first blood. I mean, he, he should have because his post four did literally the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in fact, like would would be doing the same thing if he could get away with it right now but he's uh it looks like is me your bob i think me your bob's just playing the five on the venom yeah yeah okay 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 um looks like it i'm here for i thought it was going to be the you know obviously with me your bob playing uh a, a really mean spirit breaker i thought he was going to be playing the the four but i mean there's no you know no nothing in the rules that say they can't play these musical lanes as well because yeah. I, I i've seen no, again they... They switched this up in order to have the uh, the fortunes end. Yeah. Over on this lane in order to dispel the crystal maiden frostbite with. And I suppose okay, you've lost the oracle twice. But yeah. This is so it's not working out, but in theory, that's why he's up here. <laughs> in theory, I'm just saying as well that even though you lost your oracle twice, you know you've pulled three heroes up to this top lane. Yeah. You know Rudy's got to be really happy with that, right? He's up to level two. His lane opponent only cracking that two just about now. He's actually almost almost three, so that's a great advantage here. And you gotta remember that this is a chip lane where this Phoenix is relying on uh, trading with these very slow, long cooldown spells. And yeah. Bloodseeker with more levels up, yeah, like the top lane is going to continue to be a slaughter because this is <laughs> this is Crystal Maiden Jug. This is the classic lane. This is if Dota had box art, these two would be on there. Yeah, I think the Juggernaut was like the on yeah. the splash art for a time, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he um, is on the splash art with Mirana though, I think. Yeah, can't get everything right, but th this used to be the lane that I'd run with me and a friend. That yeah. was like, so, you, you know, I'm going back, crap, I'm going back like 10 years. I'm old. Um, but it, it used <laughs> yes. to be, you know, you'd run the Crystal Maiden, you run the Jug, just go boots first, get that spin out and just get the first blood and then continue doing that until the offlane has left the lane. And back then, you know, you had the Poleman Shield so you could get that, go into the jungle mm -hmm. um, and, you know, live life that way and the Jug would be happy with just sitting in the lane. But, yeah, no, this combination, it's really darn scurry and I'm surprised that LC here isn't going to go for a point in the press of the attack because this is just going to keep going and going and going. And I know you've got the heals from the Oracle, but in the moment that extra movement speed now that the spell has been changed for the um press attack that could be you know worth its weight in gold and i don't know how much a spell weighs but still could be valuable it could be valuable indeed and i think the most the biggest mistake that i see mega o make here is that a juggernaut spin doesn't actually do so much damage that you can't dps at him through it mm. the biggest mistake you can do if make if caught by a juggernaut and especially when you have significant damage of your own is to not just hit him back. Yeah. Especially level 1 Blade Fury, just slap him back. Just slap yeah. him back. You actually trade better than he does. I promise you this. Okay, okay. Well, we'll see if he's listening in, whether he gets the idea to do it here. Um, and we'll see. I mean, bottom like lane. <laughs> There's going to be the charge coming through here. Did they get the kill Super Rudy? There's going to be a pause. It uh, mm. looks like Ender Spirit's disconnected. But yeah, in the bottom lane, 
There is some very tasty aggression going onto that Phoenix, and the Phoenix, well, he does have that Icarus dive coming up in a couple of seconds. He's used his full wand for the heals, so let's see. Let's just see if this Phoenix gets out alive, because the charge connected onto the Bloodseeker as well. I do believe, Marit, does he get himself away from this one? The Blood Grenade, it might actually be enough damage for the Venomance to take him down. He's going to get really darn low, and it will go down here on the bottom lane. But meet your Bob, he might have just put himself at risk. No, no be sure. Doesn't have a charge, but it's not going to be affected by the Blood Right. And well, the Venom Scale comes out, charge, he still dies. And this feels like a remarkable, almost mirror situation of the previous game, where both mm -hmm. of the safe laners are getting Radiant a fantastic start with fire. several kills. Yeah, and top lane. Actually, Magu's going to try and make a move onto Spy, and Spy, again, not the fastest hero in the world. Uh, it's going to take a lot of damage, though. It's going to be the overwhelming odds. Does get the kill. Uh, takes down the Oracle in revenge from the grave. But, you know, the LC getting that kill, I suppose, the two points in the overwhelming odds does pay off this time. And this time, Megu with the move speed, even past the... Uh, Juggernaut doesn't have any boots, so Megu yeah. is just a little bit faster, able to walk himself away. That's... that's... I think the Oracle is regretting purifying flamesing himself on the end there. <laughs> that was... Uh, I think he lives without it. Yeah. Just, just, a, just a little bit. Um, but... If uh, you talked about both of these laners... No, I... He does get to TP onto the mid lane right now. I'll put a big new guy onto Shushu, who uh, might want to take some revenge right about now. Yeah, and Forever's going to get pretty down low. Pops out Resonant Pulse, high fives, because you got to be polite as Mego. Uh, does the LC, I mean, only one point in the moment of courage, but is this where you just kind of go, I might just go into the jungle for a little bit? Yeah, yeah, and you're, you're, you've already said it. You're not built for that. Yeah. You aren't. You've, you're built to shove the lane back with overwhelming odds, and I can count the amounts of overwhelming odds I've seen on one hand, actually. Uh, so can the Crystal Maiden. Unfortunately for the Crystal Maiden, it wasn't in her favor, but still. Uh, Paradox is going to be chased back here in mid lane. How's Forever doing? Got to be careful because it could be a charge coming through here from the Spirit Breaker. Looks like there will be. Minute six, though. Actually, meet your Bob picks up the children and Shushu. Shoo. He does have these remnants slowed right down, though. So if they come in, it's going to be the Crystal Maiden coming through with the Oracle. Hey, but he's a little here. bit of a uh, yeah, conga line here that you didn't really expect, but it might just cost Crystal Maiden her life. And Forever able to pick that one up with Paradox on the top lane. I do believe that was the Omni Slash coming through, taking down the LC. And just again, 1 3 here on Megu, and really not loving life in this off lane. No, no, he's not. And the mid lane, we also have to be very clear about this. We haven't really looked at this lane because normally it's a bit of a 50 50. Mm -hmm. But this Ember Spirit has Radiant's more or less routed his lane opponent. He is 10 CS ahead of the Void Spirit currently. Yeah, and. Kind of denies as well. I'm just looking at. I can't remember the last time I actually. Like, I can't remember the last time an Ember Spirit went up against a Void Spirit. I probably can. I uh, just. I'm blocking it out for. <laughs> I don't know, reasons. Uh, Nubi Shu on the top lane, he might go down one more right click. No, the TP completes. He'll be able to get himself away. But yeah, usually I thought it would have been the Void Spirit coming out on top of here. But the Amber Spirit being able to run, get aggressive here with the Slight Fist. No points in the Searing Chains. So fully into the Slight of Fist and the Flame Guard here as well as the Remnants. But he just wants to shove this lane into Forever. And Forever, when it comes out, seems like he just can't handle the heat here coming through from the Amber Spirit. No, uh, literally not. It's it's the Flame Guard, which is actually pretty much impossible to take down as a single hero right now. You need to have all three spells as a Void Spirit and land all three of them if you want to be able to take the Flame Guard off, but you cannot. No, and forever? He's low. He's got the bullet charges, though. He's got one charges. He's got the, the, the rebottle coming in from the... Oracle, Slider Fist comes out here forever. You've got to use those bottle charges, mate, before you know you go back into the lane. A spy wraps around. There's going to be the, the blood grenade comes out as well. Now, Slider Fist, Void Spirit trying to get himself away from this one. The charge coming in. He's got a remnant if Shushu wants to drop it here. Trying to block it off with the Void Remnant, the Haste Rune, though. The charge, it's still going to come through from the dire side of the map forever. Trying to run himself away from this one. Does he get himself out now as well? Nubishu going to actually cancel this charge. Oracle might not be so lucky, but forever wants to come right back in onto this. And Spy, he might have just gone a little bit too far over the river as the LC goes goes down again in the top lane, but they do get the kill onto the Crystal Maiden. Did he take down the Ember Spirit as well? Ember, does he try and get himself away? Slider Fist, no! Turns it back around, forever will go down, 8-8. Eight to eight. Charge from the Spirit Breaker, he's looking at this Oracle, and this Oracle, he's looking really darn tasty. He is, when I think that's... Oh, I wanted to say the end of the violence, never mind. Both of the offlaners, <laughs> having been left alone, get murdered by the respective safe laners, because that, that is the theme of this series, I think, just offlaners. 
suffering forever. Yeah, and um, that's how my games usually go. So, yeah, we'll see if, uh, we, well, which one's going to be able to go. But I say that the Phoenix Elves 0, 3, and 0 will go back for the, uh, the Meteor Hammer as well. Meanwhile, back in the mid lane. Do they get another kill? They do. They take down Forever, and Forever has looked really good in the, the past couple of games, you know, in the last series as well. Obviously, a bit of a level advantage here for him, but Shushu here in the mid lane is just taking him to town, taking him to task, and, well, like you said, Void Spirit, he's completely lost this lane. He has, and he is now also... Which is which is wild, right? Because Void Spirit should be the better one after landing stage as well, as mm -hmm. Migo... Amigo. Press attack comes out. He's gonna be fine. I say fine. Yeah. He's gonna lose but, a lot of his health, but he's not gonna be dead. But Void Spirit is supposed to be a, a bit of an Ember Spirit counter because he can yeah. put a remnant down in the place where the fire remnant is, right? And the Ember Spirit will come back to yeah. find a disabled weight frame. It's much the same as with the Dark Willow. But right now it just seems that Forever simply does not get the chance to do that. Paradox, this this might be the end of it. Now, if he spin TPs right now. He's not going to spin TP. He's going to get aggressive now. The charge comes through. They see the LC, but it looks like all five heroes, they want to make a move. They want to make this first duel victory a thing, and hopefully it goes yeah. away the LC, because otherwise Mango is going to be super Omni unhappy here. Omni Slash, it bounces to the LC, but it bounces to the Oh, no. oh that is rough. They do get the kill onto Mango before he can get the duel off, and it's going to be the charge now onto the Venomancer. Blood Right, did he get the kill onto the Spirit Breaker? Spirit Breaker will go down. Rupture comes out. Up. Crystal Maiden just holds his ground here. Says, you want to rupture me? I'll just stand and throw my Fees and Field out here. Let's seek Rudy. Well, that's not what he wants to be, Rudy boy. And this just leads... I mean, the Phoenix wasn't even involved in this bottom lane. Pushing out this tier 1 tower. Doesn't have the Meteor Hammer Radiant's just yet. But we'll be able to put some attack. harass onto the tier 1. Yeah, that was like an ideal scenario for Shushu. He can just come on waltzing in when there's four heroes chasing his Juggernaut. So thirsty. And sure, you lose the Jug for that. But your Ember Spirit was already so far ahead of his counterpart, and now he's actually catching up with the enemy carry. That's that's 100% worth it. Give me give me the two carries at the top of the net worth chart with the gap towards the rest, rather than the one. <laughs> um, God, yeah, it's gonna be it was 300 gold away, and the difference between nearly 2,000 gold at 11 minutes. In fact, this net worth difference going away of Algeria, it's completely between the two mid laners, it seems. And yep. it's, yeah, you can see the Ember Spirit, he's living life here, he's taking advantage of the fact that he is so far ahead. And what can you do now if you're this Void Spirit? How do you get yourself back in the game? Well, the first thing you gotta do is start playing only reactively. The Void Spirit going in full tilt there is really. Not how you want to be playing this hero regardless, unless you're very far ahead already. Like, you want to be reacting to a dive, you know, TP in, step in, get your spells out, ideally have another step left to get out, that sort of sort of gameplay. So that's definitely what he should restrict himself to right now. And yeah, um, I don't know, buy, exactly, buy the Ogre Axe first. <laughs> Fair enough, as uh, we see the LC, oh, I'm going to see the LC as well. Moving towards the blade mail, that coming out. Only going to be the recipe away from picking that one up. Uh, 250 mm -hmm. gold away here, this LC. So, is this where, I mean, I know he tried it in that top lane, but uh, what heroes do you commit to try and get this first, ver you know, the first dual victory on the bag? Do you have to roam with the Void Spirit, try and get his burst damage to uh, be effective, or is it just the two supports? As it looks like there's going to be a smoke gank, so we will come back to this one. Slide a fist here and chains locked down onto the LC. LC's trying his best, but there's going to be another freezing field coming through here. Do they get the LC out alive? Mega is going to try and do his best here. Spy the dual does come through onto the M Spirit. Was that first damage to be out up with the Blood Right? It looks like it's going to go down here. No, Slide a fist. He dodges off the Blood Right. Will be able to get the remnant away. The he will be here onto Shushu, Shushu, trying to do his best. He get the kill onto three now, and he might not even get the Emissary. The Emissary is surviving all the way through this one. Even the tower not getting involved as the Bloodseeker does finally get the kill. But how low can you go on this Bloodseeker before you get taken out completely? Paradox is going to rotate in with the Omni Slash. It will commit. It's going to get everybody. <laughs> Algeria taking the game by the scruff of the neck and saying, you know what? That first game, it was a fluke, Egypt. We're going to show you how to really play this game. And, you know, take a full five-man wipe in that fight. It took them so long to play that, uh, to take that Ember Spirit down, and that was really all just down to the wire. Really, nothing except Shushu's play making it so that this Juggernaut has time to actually come in and wipe them at the end there. Because that they, if that fight lasts a couple of seconds less long, the Juggernaut comes down here to an empty field. Yeah. And 
Um, you know, the, I mean, in fact, the fact that the duel wore off just before the blood right came out and popped from the blood seeker as well. I mean, that was looking like it was going to be a duel victory, and that blood right comes out a second sooner. And you know, we're looking at Mego with his plus or plus ten on the board here, level eight. You know, no plus eight duel the bonus damage at level ten just yet. But yeah, this looks like. I mean, this is one of the sadder LC games that I've seen here. Mm -hmm. One six and one. Only just got his blade mail uh, power tries coming out as well, going towards the blink at fourteen minutes. No duels on the board. Moody. Yeah. Uh, this is a bait. Blood it might be a bait. They're actually coming in from the side. Yeah, Sunray's going to be there now as well. Do they have enough? Do they have enough? They're going to find a target. They're going to jump away, but the duel will come through. There's going to be the Meteor Hammer, but with the Blade Mail, they still get the kill anyway. And now Shushu, he's gone down as well. Nubishu, he's just trying to hide himself away. He says, if you can't see me, I can't see you. Or is it the other way around? But the boys, the Remnant grabs it. Nubishu, he's going to go down. And all of a sudden, Egypt, they fire back, saying we can do anything. Just as good one. They don't get a five-man wipe, so just a little bit worse than you. But they do take this fight. They're going to be able to get this tier one tower and they get the LC on the board with the duels. That was a phenomenal overwhelming odds there. That's that's when the max overwhelming odds pays off, when the enemy just all stands around you. And I, I have to, like, Shushu, I was just praising you for how well you dragged out the fight on bot. How how did he end up coming back into that fight? Like, that, that seemed to be, like, just a, a panic remnant press or something. Yeah. Um, bit of worry there on the M Spirit. Like I said, I thought he was away. Because I thought he it was, was going to be the uh, the LC target, but like you say, just not uh, just not up to to snuff the on the the old Raman charges, and yeah, it, it did get him killed. And this deep ward coming through here from Algeria and the triangle, you know, is this going to have any benefit? Because they have a sentry down here as well, or is this just going to see Rudy farming? And you know, there's nothing that they're going to be able to do about it. Kind of hard to engage into this lineup, especially with the LC threatening to have a blink dagger anytime soon. Yeah. I mean, 600 gold away. Yeah. Six, yeah, 580 gold away here for, for Mega here on the, the Blink Dagger. They might be able to get another one here on to Ember Spirit. No, no remnant was down. There was no catch after the fact. And uh, Mega just a little bit too far away. But they might still go for this now as well. Meet your Bob. Taking a lot of damage. The root comes out into the Phoenix. The Phoenix just trying to drop that Meteor Hammer. But everybody else is here. And Mega, you got to be that far forward without the rest of your team there. But back line, Spirit Breaker comes in. Nether Strike. He might be able to get the kill to the Oracle. The Oracle though. He's still got that um, false promise if he needs to drop it now as well. The Blood comes up. Paradox, though. The Omni Slash, it bounces onto the LC. The LC's going to go down here. And they're going to be able to clean up once again. It's just a back and forth here. We may as well be watching Pong with how this game is going back and forth. And it's going to be another cleanup here. Super Rudy, the false promise comes through. Do they have enough to get the kill on Paradox? Paradox, he's going to bring it down low. He's going to go down. And does he survive on Bloodseeker? Bloodseeker, he's awful low, but he might not die just yet. One more right click. It's going to be the spy that does get the kill here. Ember Spirit doing a bit of a job for him there as well. Bye comes through from the Oracle, but it looks like the Void Spirit. Does he survive through? Going to get low, Our but Oracle not hero. out of it just yet. Keep you away from the Ember. Did he get the run and grab? They don't. Half a second. And the Ember Spirit gets himself away. Scary. Very scary. I mean, it, mm -hmm. I got to just... I don't even want to commend the Juggernaut for having the full Milner here. It's like, <laughs> you don't have stats, my man. What, yeah. what are you doing? As soon as your Omni Slash is over, you're just dead. But... Um. The, uh, yeah, the, the, the Mask of Madness coming out as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, reducing his armor by eight, which when you've got a Bloodseeker and an LC there that's going to try and chip you yes. down, I, I don't know if the, the lifesteal trade, is that worth it? You know, I, I don't know the mask I mean, behind it. but I'm probably I don't know no. either, but it did work out during this fight, right? Like, as yeah. I can hate on the build all I want, but that was a pretty darn good Omni Slash, and the only reason that the Bloodseeker dies at all, is even with the Oracle ult, Pumping him up all that time is simply because the Juggernaut outputs so much damage. True, 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 true. true. Um, the Bloodseeker looks like he's going to copy here, going for the formula on you. He does have the BKB though. That is an eight second BKB. Yes. Mid lane, forever going to be able to go towards these. Yeah, gets the rune, gets himself out safe. I thought there might have been a fight coming out there, but Egypt, they were just backing up the mid laner, and yeah, Algeria didn't make the jump onto the void. And I Good think okay. if you're Algeria, you take it a little easier here for now. You're waiting on two Sanjas on both of your other cores next to the Juggernaut to yeah. get status resist and for the SNK to be finished over on your Ember. But that does leave a little window for Egypt to make something happen with that Blink Dagger of the LC now. Let's see if Mego finds something to turn his very unlucky game so far around. 
Yeah, and uh, the scan comes out now. Perfect scan here for Algeria. Mm. They're, they're going to be able to see. Obviously, they don't know who, but they know someone's there. So you see them as soon as that scan turns red, they just scatter to the top part of the map and away from it. Yeah, even the circle being drawn. Just be aware that that is here. LC, BKB will be next on the item block. In fact, I think they'll be able to get the wraparound maybe onto the Crystal Maiden. Blade Mail into the duel. Where is it? Crystal Maiden, though. There's nobody backing him up. The Void Spray can be able to get the dive in. And the Crystal Maiden will go down. 28 now onto the LC. Dive in, though. I think they'll be able to get the damage coming through from this one. The TP away. And it looks like that with the Emissary trying to get the lead. Trying to come back maybe with the heal to the remnant. But the Nether Strike here onto the Bloodseeker. There's going to be the False Promise going once again. That egg is down. But I'll, look at how quickly it's going to pop. Going to break. Going to be scattered. And that's two heroes dead on the side of Algeria. They did lose the Vanamancer on Egypt, though. Yeah, but they only lost that because the Omni Slash was popped by Paradox. Yeah. And Shushu had to bail there. The, the Noxious Plague really doing too much work there. I wanted to call it a Venomous Gale. That's, that's the other one. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just gonna, I'm still gonna call it Ooze. Um, Ooze. So, when watching the, the Spider-Man film the other day, there's like a new Ninja Turtles. I didn't know. And there's oh. just a bit in the trailer where they're like, yeah, we call it Ooze, Ooze, Ooze. And they just keep repeating Ooze. So that's in my head now. And... Okay, yeah. I, that's that's going to be in my head now too. And I haven't even seen the movie. <laughs> um, charge coming through. They did cancel it on the Void Spirit. So uh, Void looking back towards the Mantle. Not going to complete. You know, just going to keep with the Echo Saber. No uh, Harpoons coming out for the Voids. So straight into the Manta. And... How's he doing? 4, 3, and 7. Still yep. not completely caught up to the Amber, but it's doing better for the Void, right? He's doing better. He's... I don't want to say that he's at, like, normal farm levels for this point in the game, but he's at yeah. not disastrous farm levels for this point in the game, which is uh, is definitely a marked improvement. Yeah, and it's not going to be the, like, 16, 0, 27 or whatever <laughs> I'm used to seeing on the Void Spirit, but, you know... It, this is the the start of his comeback path, and you know you've got to walk it before you are yep. able to to get yourself up to these high numbers. Um, and I, I like the Algeria. You know they're just playing grouped up, they're keeping themselves together. Paradox even joining these fights. You know he didn't go for the the Battle Fury, so he does feel a little bit more empowered, even without a Magnus, to be able to come in these fights with them while you're coming out and get that attack off. So going to be the Skull Basher coming well, out here. He better be fast. Yeah, Jug the Blake. Fast enough. Oh, quick fingers. Ruptured though. Rupture. Paradox still gets ruptured. Gonna go for the spin TP. Magic, does he actually go for this one? Was that duel ended to cancel it? He's gonna try and get himself in. Did he actually go for the duel though? Maybe he was taking way too much damage. Yeah, they're gonna be able to get the kill on to two. Probably make it three here. The Blood Seeker going way too far. Supernova comes out. Is it gonna be four? <laughs> it is. And the Venomancer. Well, he's already trying to slither his way away here. The uh, Toxic Banana. And he's. Not going to be the victim just because he'd, he'd already left. So he's like, <laughs> no, I'm out. I'm done. Yeah, well, is it how, how out? Yeah, okay. Meet your Bob is out enough. But that was, I think they, they went in on that juggernaut and they, they realized, do we really want to do it? Yeah. And, and they did it anyway. And it was, uh, that was an unfortunate decision because, yeah, if you can't kill him in time, then he's just going to only slash him while you're all holding hands together. And just because it's not a battle fear doesn't mean that there's not a lot of AoE damage going around mm -hmm. with that Mjolnir. So, yeah. Yeah, Hurts. some good damage coming out here. At least... Uh, I'm just checking to make doubly doubly sure because, uh, you know, you can't. But um, at least the LC didn't go for a duel before he you know, got killed off the... And... Mm. Yeah, that would yeah. have been rough. I mean, I, I saw the tunnel vision. I saw it coming. You know, they were like, ah, the rupture's going. We're going to get ourselves in. It's going to be great. You know, we'll get the duel off. But Mega wasn't able to get himself in there in time. The blink was still on cooldown. And that, I, I'm not saying it's the LC's fault. But, you know, if there was a duel there, potentially maybe everybody stays alive and LC gets more duel damage. I don't know. I'm not trying to blame him, but still. It's, it's a possibility, but let's just yeah. say that the juggernauts that I've seen so far have always magically escaped death somehow in some way <laughs> in order to get an Omni Slash off and murderize absolutely everybody. And it's... You can tell me that I'm biased or something, but I could just tell you to go watch Nemiga vs. Boom and then... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I heard about that. A full 3-0 going the way of uh, uh, Nemiga just off the... The juggernaut pick alone, I heard that, you know, that, yes. that was it, yeah. That it was just a, a 1v5 for the entire three games, and he was able to take the game on his back. But... Yeah, sort of. <laughs> um, 
LC, another duel in the bag there, up to 56 damage into the Roche pit now. Interestingly, even without the Phoenix, it looks like Algeria they want to come in and try to contest this one, but how quickly are they going to get there? The backup comes through for the Phoenix, surely, surely Egypt knows something's up, and with them being oh, yeah. so low, um, they've got to back themselves away. Slide of piss here and change comes out into Venomancer. Venomancer, what's he going to try and do here? Because the damage on the back line is Crystal Maiden will still go down. Blade Mills out, no dual damage, Yomi slides come through. Pretty short on the Void Spirit again. And now, well, Super Rudy is healed up to full health, and I think he's trying to super get himself out of here. <laughs> Jump in, Remnant, was that Searing Chains? It's up in one second. But right does go down here, and uh, well, that's what you talked about, that Glamour Cape, as uh, some protection comes through. And it looks like they want to carry on chasing, though. The Oracle, is he going to be in danger? Well, they might be in danger of losing this Roche, because I'll j they're just going right, to go right back into the pit. Yep, exactly. So, especially because the Supernova was not spent. So even if your Omni Slash is not up anymore, you still have a powerful AOE presence for that fight. And Shushu is also going to be here to zone a couple of fools away. Yeah, and even yeah, Shushu as well as the uh, Nubishio is just backing themselves up and they jump in to take down the Oracle. They might even be able to get the Blitzy here as well. And uh, BKB, it will use the duel. Oh, cheeky, cheeky. Okay, I like that. 84 damage here as well. BKB mm -hmm. nearly done it on the LC, but it is going to be an Aegis here on the Jurg. And really, you're looking at that Jurg, he's so close to the level 20 as well. This is where, I mean, if he wasn't scary enough, he's going to have two levels over the Bloodseeker, and he's nearly yep. going to have that lifesteal as well. Exactly, and what the Bloodseeker gets out of his level 20 is much like the Medusa, not nearly comparable to what the Jug is going to get. Sure, you get 15% get spell life still, but now think about, you know, how much the Jug clicks versus how much the Bloodseeker casts spells, and then realize that the Jug gets 50% life steal on his hits, and you get 15 on your spell. It's... it's <sighs> No, yeah, it's, it's not great. I mean, your, your Mjolnir is going to do a little work for you there, right? But it's uh, it's yeah. really not the same. At least he has the, the Aghanim Shard, so he's going to have the extra max health damage mm -hmm. and and heal for, for the Which damage onto the Jug. The only thing is, the Jug, uh, again, didn't really build any stat items, so sitting on 1.9k <laughs> health, you know, it's not like... Uh, he's going to be going for the Scardy afterwards, but it's not like, you know, you're right-clicking onto... I guess you, the, the biggest target would be the no, newest uh, iteration of Ogre Magi that just wants to be a build in strength items. Yes. Well, at the very least, Paradox has the Scotty queued up right now, which is like, mm -hmm. you know, you want to buy stats, That that's the stats there. Are, yeah. are you happy now? That's that's <laughs> the item we're talking about. Nice. Forever actually gets caught briefly. Did he get a kill though? There's going to be another chase coming through, and again, Paradox still has this Aegis spin comes to win. Is he going to be able to get the charge here? Oh, yeah, Oracle being charged down. He's going to connect close to the tier 2 tower, but the Void Remnant does come through here. Should still be able to get the kill into the Oracle, even with this False Promise. The damage, it's stacking up. Yeah, he's going to go down as soon as this False Promise is gone. He probably does burst. He does burst. And now the tier 2 tower in the mid lane. Egypt, there's a buyback available, but do you really want to be dropping that if you're the Oracle? Because Super Rude doesn't even look like he wants to commit here. No, absolutely not. They were really just looking at how much time they could buy there. Rudy himself wants to get a Manta style. Mm -hmm. And the LC is going to be called to the base because overwhelming odds is very good at clearing creep waves. Yeah, uh, I was just watching because she was on the bottom lane pushed out to where the tier 1 tower was for the Radiant and had a courier about halfway there before you know the TP came back. And I was just watching the, you know, the, the die heroes moving towards that courier a little bit more, a little bit more. And that was the BKB recipe. But... Fortunately for the LC, it doesn't get sniped and the BKB will be completed. Yeah. Now I'm wondering, because I'm, I'm looking at this LC and I'm looking at this Bloodseeker and I'm wondering if I wouldn't rather that this Jug buys a Lincoln Sphere instead of the Scotty. That's mm -hmm. still a bunch of stats. And that's also two of the major threats to your life gone. Would it be... I mean, if you see the Lincolns come out, because I don't think the LC wants to be dueling the Jug, right? Or does I, I think you do, though, because the Omni Slash is the scariest thing on the field. And yeah. I'm also saying it because the Ember Spirit has unfortunately already bought his point booster and actually is flying in. Is he flying in the entire X? Yes. So it would take him a while to buy that Lincoln Sphere. He is the one, yeah, and he's queuing it up right now, but I would, I would have loved for him to have it right now. 
Okay, okay. Uh, Super Rudy could be in a little bit of trouble here. There's going to be a mass TP back. Slide of fist here in chains. Does the Bloodseeker get himself away from this one? The charge comes through. There's another strike in 26 seconds. So not now, but it doesn't matter because Super Rudy goes down anyway. And he might even be able to go for more. Sun Ray on forever. He's trying to get himself away with this illusion rune. He even picks up the Invis rune now as well. Dive out. But is the sentry going to be there? They have the control. They have the kill. And they even have the Omni Slash onto the vent. That's hate. That is a lot of hate. You know, Omni Slashing just for the Venomancer, but you get it. You take him down and Egypt now. Three heroes dead. No buybacks. Yeah, that was, I mean, you know what? That works. <laughs> They're all dead. And you still have this Aegis for 43 seconds. I like the, the neutral item picked up on the Juggernaut as well with the Defiant Shell. So even mm -hmm. if he does get dueled or if the you know the right clicks start coming out from the Bloodseeker, just go in, you know, uh, 1v1, you still have that counter attack to come out, which, you know, a, a, a free attack every five seconds. Can't underestimate that. I mean, I know it's a free attack once every duel, but a free attack is a free attack. It is, and I wonder if I'm going to see them upgrade to... What's the name of the other thing again? Ah, I forget. Whatever, neutral items have never been my strong suit. Uh, this is now display. yet. There's duel. Nope, duel comes through. I think he'll be able to get the kill onto the juggernaut now as well. It looks like it might go the other way. It does! Jug goes down, but he gets himself 28 damage on the board for his troubles. So just standing there. I mean, uh, if someone was coming around handing up damage to me, I don't know if I take it. I don't know what use I have for damage, but you know. Um, <laughs> for the pub. Yeah, yeah. But for a, for a jug, yeah, someone just going here. Take 28 damage on top of your crits, on top of your heals, on top of your basher. He ain't going to turn that down. No, no, it's not. And now it's really up to Egypt to see if they can actually make enough use out of this Juggernaut death in order to make that giving away that damage worth it. Otherwise, you just lost the middle tower. I, I guess you hold your racks here, right? Yeah. But uh -huh. this is exactly what I meant with the Lincoln Sphere. It is worth it to try and kill the Juggernaut before you can get the Omni Slash off. And your only tool that you have for that is the Jewel. Yeah, and uh, we'll see. I mean, the Amistrits both got both the, the Shard and the Remnant, uh, excuse me, and the uh, full... Scepter. So, just dropping yes. this one on the lane. You know, these creeps are going to take damage just from walking close to the remnant coming through here because it does the burn damage. He's, he's got more of them that he can pop down. Um, but they are going to be able to take this tier 2 tower down here. So, Egypt, they do get something from it before the jugs back up. And uh, 10 seconds, maybe not enough time to get a gank duel in. So, we'll see if there's going to be another reset coming through here. But what's the LC going to go for? Looks like it is going to be a Shadow Blade into an AC. Mm -hmm. So we're going to finally see some uh, some team utility come out from the Egypt offlaner this time around. I mean, he, he built all the auras in the previous game. It's fine. Yeah. And so if you're Egypt, uh, 7k behind, 7 kills behind. Roshan coming up in potentially a minute and 14 seconds. What's the game plan here for them? Because it feels like all the the die needs to do is just run at team egypt here and they're going to be under pressure but how did team egypt how did they answer back before they even get asked the question it's really rough like a lot of it depends on the vision that they have outside of their base currently and they have a couple of really nice words in order to get that information because the information will allow them to actually try and get a pick off off and that is what they're going to need to do they need to take at least one hero of algeria down before they get to their high ground yeah, and they can uh, back each other up like one, one of the heroes that we haven't really seen much of, I feel like, but is absolutely crucial to the fact that Egypt can't get a word into these team fights is the Phoenix. Yeah. Hey, we are talking Agnum's Phoenix here with the Heaven's Halberd. Like, that is brutal to fight into with your LC and your um, your Bloodseeker as well. Both of them, one of them is going to get disarmed. The other one is going to have to try and take down that supernova. The AoE that Algeria stands in if you don't kill off this Phoenix first is just theirs. Yeah. And how do then do... I mean, you took uh, the duels coming through, but if you do have that Heaven's Harbor, that's going to be pretty rough as well. And Roshan, two and a half minutes and two minutes before the man respawns. So, yeah, two and a half minutes before nighttime. So it looks like it's going to be maybe an upper part of the map Roshan respawn. We'll see how the teams are going to set up around this. I mean, it looks like Algeria just going to check around the pit. Um, just to see if it comes up a little bit quicker, but it looks like it is going to be a nighttime spawn here for at least a, a nighttime stroll for the big man up to his uh, holiday home in the northern part of the map. 
But until that time, I think we mostly see status quo here. Algeria has to be a little careful of not getting picked off, which is uh, going to make it hard for them to properly extend their lead here. On the other hand, though, if you're a Shushu, for example, I think you're feeling pretty strong just because you've been able to reflex dodge most of these ganks so Whoa. far. Oh, nobody shows him, but uh, the regrets get the reveal in. It looks like they might have the vision. The duel comes out. This is going to put him even hey. more on the board. And uh, that was just the Spirit Breaker walking into the trees and putting himself in trouble. Yeah, I mean, Mega even says affirmative. He's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that just happened. Uh, um, we, we all know who decided to die here. <laughs> I'm uh, surprised, because I was going to ask you, really, do Algeria, do they want to split up at all? I, they are still looking for the farm, but do is it not just better to be moving as five and looking to maybe yes. if these pickoffs try to happen, you know, just stick well, together? Egypt is going to give them a reason to be five, actually, which is probably the ideal scenario, except for the buyback. Yeah. Yeah. Bremen catches on to the Spirit Breaker, and then the strike's going to come through once again. The Void Spirit, though, almost like will be committed. Rubs on to Nubishu, so he's not going to be able to have the full effect if he wants to, but there's going to be the save here. It's coming through with the Supernova, and it looks like it's going to be more than one kill. Once again, Freezing Field, Bloodseeker's going to look for the BKB TP out. No bash from Paradox. They are chasing, so they lose two supports here. Charge. Nubishu's picking up Curry's. In fact, he might just have seen onto Mega, but Mega's going to run himself away with the Invis, and just, just gets himself out and detected here on the cell C. Spirit Breaker without a gem, my goodness. I mean, he does have the dust, right? <laughs> but that was already on CD. <laughs> and I just noticed the LC didn't actually get any more dual victory damage. Oh, she didn't. Weird. Nope. And now, and on a suicide mission, but stall. Leaf, what, what, what are you doing? I, mean, I think wants to pay back Ruby Show. Yeah, okay. You gave us a kill, so we'll give you a kill. I mean, they've given too many kills already here on side of Team Egypt, yeah. but I, think, yeah, I suppose first for... That's that's exactly what I was going to say. Like the <laughs> Giving Algeria a reason to 5v5 on the top lane is like, that's, that's the one thing you don't want to do. As soon as they yeah. show up there, you put two thumbs in the air and you run. <laughs> Yeah. Like hell. And you're like, haha, you're all in your base now. <laughs> um, it was a good bait back here, but like you say, maybe they stuck around a little bit too long. Super Rudy has his Ag Scepter up now as well, going towards a butterfly. And again, this Blood Mist, everybody laughed at it when it came out. Well, who's Dyer's laughing now? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know who's laughing. I'm actually asking you, you know, who I is mean, laughing now? Sometimes I am laughing because the scenario, it's its much like a troll warlord, right? Where sometimes yeah. your ult is fantastic and it saves you and everybody is like, oh my god, how is he still alive? How is he dealing so much damage? And sometimes just like you have nobody to hit and you're still leaking blood out of every pore. And it's really awkward. <laughs> And Roshan being started here by the side of Algeria. They're going to be able to get a free one off this, so geez, no contest here. It's, pre it's pretty damn fast. Lowest B80 in the game. Going to work. And now with the Aegis, again, Egypt, is it just base defense time? Is it counterplay time? What do they do? You know, what, what's the trick here when they've got to be facing the Aegis and the Cheese? Still the same. Try and find a pick off. Keep them keep them off their feet and yeah. they're they're unfortunately all five man here and they're going to get five men caught i do think look at those tps from algeria they're spread out so nicely if they find anybody here they can just tp more people without suffering too much yeah crystal man's not going to be seen here it looks like they are going to tp themselves in jug gets himself the abyssal now as well 2.5k health and they're going to be able to find the oracle oracle uh, even the venomous of venomous is just like straight up i am leaving but the searing chains connect and well unfortunately the veno couldn't get that TP out in time. Well, fortunately, if you're, if you're Algeria, you know, they're going to be loving that. Mm -hmm. But for the Venomancer himself, meet your Bob. Just not having the impact as the five in this game as he's as I've seen him have on the four for the three games previous. No, absolutely not. And I feel like in general, that landing state's decision felt very... Like it'll haunt him for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least until the next game, depending on how yeah. that one goes. You got you to gotta shrug it off, right? Yeah. Okay. And... Well... There you go. Just He's don't impish. breathe. <laughs> yeah, you just got to tiptoe your, uh, your way out of there, there as well. Just run yourself out. Oh, is he going back to the Bounty Hunter ways of just... This is it now. He's hunting couriers. He, do, you know, he's, he doesn't even... That's what the Shadow Blade's for. Just so he can get himself around the back, hunt the couriers. And uh, just hope he gets a little bit of gold that way. As his mid lane racks will fall. Team Egypt, though, 
Everybody's back alive. Age is still there for another three minutes. What are they going to be able to do? It looks like now, he wants to go to the back lines here. Maybe onto a Phoenix, maybe onto a Spirit Break or something. There's going to be the Blade Mail to jump in through it as well. Does he actually win this duel? The Rupture comes out. It's going to be the damage coming through. Another Phoenix. He has the cheese. He eats the cheese. He doesn't get the dual victory on the LC. And now, Supruti, they do get the kill onto the Phoenix. The buyback comes out from the Oracle. Leaves Omni Slash on the Bloodseeker. No one wants to share the load. He does have that buyback. But I think here we could be looking at the start of the end of game number two. Just once again. Yeah. Super Rudy. He's looking for the chase, but Algeria, they don't overstay the welcome. They know when to leave here. And really good timing on those fights, and they forced out two buybacks. Yep, that's beautiful. Especially because now you can simply wait for your Omni Slash to come back in the time. Like, you have plenty of time on your Aegis, right? Yeah. And you're just going to have that Omni Slash again the next time you go for base, and all you need to do is wait for that Bloodseeker to come for you. Say, so, right, fine, carry to carry, mano a mano, and you say, cool. <laughs> Meet my blade. Uh, no, Mega is hunting. He's far forward. I mean, Rudy. they did see him because the smoke broke from the ninja gear and then he went into the, the shadow blade after that. Charge comes through onto the blizzard. If they get this kill, that's a die back here on the Bloodseeker. And they're going to be able to take on an Oracle. And again, another, another hero. He did buy back. So, Egypt, they are going to be playing 4v5 for at least the next 70 seconds. Um, if it they is. can get a kill onto the Phoenix, they could even it up. But with Al they're coming in with a double damage rune on Paradox here Ooh. as well. I don't know how you Let actually get this go. kill. Yeah, so risky. Rubber hunt. Charge comes through. Actually hits onto the LC. Did he get the kill onto the voice right now as well? Yeah, the strike. There's going to be the rupture coming through though. Can they get this kill onto Newbie Show? He's going to be going through with the BKB. Do they actually get the kill? Bloodseeker. He's caught out in no man's land. Yeah, the duel no. on the back lines. But this is going to be death of Super Ruby. He gets, Super Ruby goes down. And now the LC will follow. Four dead. I think we might see the GG. There it goes. There and it goes. It's going to be Team Egypt being forced for the first time today into a loss. It is, yeah, and this is exactly what we were hoping out of the series when it started, right? We were like, Algeria can challenge Egypt, and they show precisely why in this matchup. And I I gotta say, though, is this like Algeria versus Egypt, or is this who picks the juggernaut? <laughs> well, third game, there's only one way to find out, and we'll see how that one is going to go. But um, about the early... It, it, did the early game just set the tempo here for the game for Algeria? Because it, the Oracle was being picked off left, right, and center. The LC was being taken down. Would you just have rather seen the LC skill more points in the overwhelming odds and go into the jungle? Hey, you're, you're really not supposed to lose the lane that hard, and I think yeah. it, one of it is just really down to the LC maybe not realizing. Like, if you, if you have the point in the... Um, in retaliate right you can return the damage into the juggernaut and especially if you take the the second point like it is possible to to stand there and hit him back of course your oracle still needs to deal with whatever the cm's throwing out right yeah. but you you have a shot at fighting him and this was just not the way to play that lane and of course like because we were following the top lane so hard we are neglecting to tell you here that the phoenix also got absolutely slaughtered on the bot side great escape here from nubisha um about the mid lane, I mean, Void Spirit being beaten up by the Ember Spirit as well in the mid lane, it just, I mean, the yeah, Blood Seeker did all right. But that is that supposed lane. to happen? Yeah? No. No, that's not supposed to happen. And I'm, I'm surprised it happened at all because it can only have happened in like the the pure 1v1, right? Because both mm -hmm. of the supports were way too occupied with the side lanes this time around. Yeah. And we see they just put, I mean, even the obvious slash jump into the creep, so it does cost him his life, but. Uh, the charge coming through, they were able to get even more pickers from this. So, you, the, the commitment from the side of Egypt at some point, you know, at some points in the game, it just felt like it was way too much. And because they thought they were behind, they needed to get themselves back in. They just threw bodies at this and lost so many kills just because they thought, well, we just keep on running, we'll we'll get kills, and it didn't work out that way. No, it didn't. But you have to realize that Algeria is not flawless here either. I mean, this this no, is the no. play of the game for me, right? This Ember Spirit living twice, thrice, <laughs> and the Juggernaut's still walking. There's this pink thing on the map who's still trudging, trudging along, trudging along, and his last teammate is dying, like, right there, and then he comes yeah. in with the Omni Slash and mops up. Like, that's... I haven't seen better timing in quite a while. No, no, it was pretty much uh, point perfect there from the Jug. So, um, before we go to a break, you know, any thoughts on this final game for either team, or just, you know, thoughts in general to sum up the second game? Uh, I, I guess I'd love to see the offliners live for once. That would be cool. 
and then maybe the supports will actually have time to influence the mid lane somewhat. Yeah. Um, which would, in this case, probably be good news for Egypt and bad names for news for Algeria, because it looks like Algeria really got Egypt mid laner's number. Okay, well, we'll find out if that is going to happen. We're going to jump to a quick break. We'll be back after this one as well, just to you know, see how the replays. But um, we'll be back with the third and final game, and the final game of the day here between Egypt and Algeria to see who's going to be able to get themselves on top. I mean, Egypt are still 1-0 up in the, the groups anyway. Uh, so Algeria mm -hmm. looking to even it up here, or Egypt, do they take this final victory and just force it to a, a death match between the two teams tomorrow? We'll find out after this break.
Welcome back, everybody, to the third and final game of the series, to the final game of the day. And after that last one, you know, Egypt, not completely invincible like some of us. I'm actually going to point the finger back at me, but, you know, uh, like I thought. Um, so coming into this one, Kips, you know, Algeria, they've got themselves on the board. How do they maintain that momentum now? What do they have to do to try and steal this one away from Egypt, who have looked so strong for the rest of the day? See, their previous game plan looked really good, but um, it, it involved Juggernaut, to be fair. And I have, yeah. like, a, a, an inkling that Juggernaut is not going to be appearing in this game. Just, you know, let's call it, like, a, a women's intuition. Yeah, premonition. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's seeing things that not everyone else is seeing. Okay, okay. Exactly, exactly. Um, but a lot relied on their mid lane out playing the mid lane of egypt pretty hard even while mm. both of the side lanes were going the way of the respective carries so as we move ourselves into the draft here we can see that algeria actually has decided on exactly the same mid lane matchup as before and team egypt is not dodging that which is odd because uh well they they did get their uh their stuff rocked in the mid lane in the previous map and i i Will they put this Void Spirit elsewhere? Is this a Tusk mid lane? Are we going to see a Void Spirit Morana support you or something? That that could be a pretty wild uh, flip of the script. Yeah, I feel like I've fallen back in time about six months, eight months to the Morana Tusk up. pick coming out. Um, used to be, uh, I'm saying this as if like it's ancient, you know, but you know, the Morana and the, the Tusk in the last patch were 
really evenly on die and really popular supports coming out here so a bit of a flashback here as a faceless void going to be committed onto it by algeria right off the bat and uh with the magnus coming through you don't even need that battle fury you could go for something like the maelstrom if you wanted to rely on that and power but speak to me kips about the moran and the tusk how well do you think these two are going to do here you know what is it about these two heroes that team egypt might like coming into the third and final game with lives on the line silencer yeah, I was, because cause what they want you to say is that's a support duo that can go for kills, no matter, you know, which two you, like, whichever lane you rotate those two towards, you're always going to have enough damage to kill. But that's, that's not a support tusk now, is it? I'm pretty sure that that is a core tusk, and that's going to go either on the off lane, which is sort of doubtful with the fastest sword, or to the mid lane. Yeah. Like, I'm starting to like this idea of uh of flipping the tusk and the void spirit lanes here a lot like i'm wondering if team egypt is thinking the same because tusk is going to just slap the ember spirit around there's absolutely no two ways about it like he can't take the flame guard off and he does not care and the void spirit is going to i mean you're not going to have like a great lane up versus the faces void but you can't kill each other there yeah uh void on void violence <laughs> i don't know how yes. i feel about that and i don't know does that, if they get close enough, you know, the two voids, do, are we just going to see some sort of, does, does my game die? Does my screen just be pulled into the ether? You know, I'm kind of worried about if they do lane up against each other. And not just from a game perspective, but, you know, how two voids collide and will affect, yeah, how like, will affect me. The fabric of space time and that sort of thing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I think the Dota world is already in, like, a problem where, like, you know the the same battle gets played out over and over and over and over again so maybe maybe two voids colliding into each other and deleting the entire thing will be a mercy maybe that's it maybe that's just the very last dota game ever that, that nobody can press the play queue after this and it's all thanks to team no. egypt and team algeria um <laughs> but thanks it, like it's a blessing maybe it is it may, yeah maybe i mean I, I don't know if they could do the same with diablo 4 just for a little bit because i Ooh. i have a crippling crippling addiction developing there as well um but algeria coming through here you know is there anything you're looking for because it's going to be a, another support right because they've got all three of the cores on team algeria mm -hmm. so is there something you're looking at to finish this lineup that's going to be you know having massive impact and winning the game single-handedly and you know that might just complete the lineup yeah, most likely you're going to be looking for an illusion carry here if you want to play up versus the Faces Void. Mm -hmm. Of course, like a lot of your your good non-illusion options have been taken out as well for me to say that. Like the kind of heroes that could take the uh, the mano a mano versus him are no longer available, specifically the Monkey King. So most likely what you're going to look for is the fact that the Faces Void is mostly a single target hero, except for the Chronosphere, and you're going to, to have to deal with that. Oh, no, no. I mean, it would have called this pick, by the way. With it, well, that's not an illusion hero, but that certainly makes use of the fact that uh, that there's some uh, some single target focus there from Algeria. Unfortunately, of course, you're also up versus a Magnus Ember Spirit, so it's not. I wouldn't call this an ideal Meepo game exactly. Um, but Kips, 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 Kips. Just just what? check the name. Check the name over the Meepo. Oh, there's an offline Meepo. Yep, yep. Check the uh, the name over yeah. Marana. Yeah, Marana yeah, yeah, Carey. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, you know what? Since you noticed that, you can explain it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have Sorry. seen in the, but I'm going back to seven point three two, and I'm going into Division Two of the Eastern European region. I have seen the Marana Carey come out. Um, I think, was it Shigetsu that played it? I want to say, you know, it came up a couple of times. And you know what? It wasn't the worst thing as long yeah. as you kept that momentum up. You know, as long as you kept the pressure up. It looked really good. And maybe this is what Team Egypt they are just going to go like, you know, minute two, we're, we're fighting. You know, get it. So mm -hmm. you're right. One of those was not the support, but it wasn't the Tusk here. It's going to be a carry Marana. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be a carry Marana. Um... Because I'm, I'm sorry for throwing you under the bus there, by the way, but I've worked with uh, Miracle, if you remember, and he would actually play 
a and it's like I guess it's a carry Murana, but like he would play it on the offline because yeah. the matchup versus many melee carries is actually very good because you are a ranged hero that is hard to kill and does a ton of harassment. So there's a possibility that Super Rudy is actually going to lane this on the same lane as the Faces Void and give his safe lane to the uh, to the Meepo. But as I say that, Meepo Omega looks to go towards the mid lane here for the maximum experience gain. And you know what? Much like a Tusk does, a Meepo also certainly beats an Ember Spirit six ways to Sunday. Yeah, um, maybe it is. Just, you know, Mega just, he is the Meepo player on the team and he just feels a little bit more confident. So we might see, be seeing the offlane void, but with Forever still playing it. Um, you know, so I'm interested to see which way this, this one actually is going to line up because I still have no idea. Me neither, but I normally it's the, the micro players are on the offlane these days, right? All right. Uh, okay, well, don't tell anyone I play with that because uh, I, I can barely use my hero. You tell me I have to use other units as well. So, so Beastmaster? Nope. Come on, like a, a boar? One nope. pig? Nope. Not even a single pig. Yeah, for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I play the uh, the Dawnbreakers, the Dooms come out, the... What else am I playing in the offlane as well that's going? Underlord, Tidehunter, you know, that's all very single <laughs> heroes that do very well, and I do very well with. But, it look, yeah, no, it does actually look like Super Rudy's moving himself up to the top lane, so... Uh, we'll see as Nubi yep. Show's getting low in the river. Forever, does he get the kill? He doesn't. Indeed, so looking for a matchup versus the Void. And the Void is actually going to go to the top lane. It was for a second, I was yeah. like, oh, well, but he's bought. No, no, that's. The map is a donut, and I keep forgetting. And I've just realized as well, with you talking about the, the face of Swipe being on the bottom lane, we no longer. Oh, I'll come back to that in a second, because there's going to be a lot of damage coming through onto the Skyrath here. Um, but, yeah, we no longer see the, the musical lanes where you watch one carry, you know, the mind game coming out and that, mm -hmm. where you watch one carry go halfway through and then turn back round, and the other carry TPs up to the top lane, and, like, the, it takes, like, ten minutes for these level one carries to actually find where they're going to be, and then someone, in the end, gets sick of it. With the Twin Gates, you just keep popping back and forth. Yep. Yeah, absolutely no use to it anymore. The only switch you yeah. you can pull now are between mid and side lanes. So, how's the damage coming through here against the Scarath? I mean, Scarath is taking a lot of damage. Um, he's being harassed right back, but it actually might be the first blood on the other lane. A spy will be able to get the kill on to meet your Bob. Kips, I'm having flashbacks. Tell, tell me it's not going to be the same as last game. Yeah, well, at least this time it's not going to be the offliner himself suffering. Just because of mm -hmm. Void uh, and Dying Lane has absolutely no way to take down a Mirana. I just... Unless Super Rudy misplays massively here, yeah. he is not going to die. And you know what? That actually fits That fits the requirements still, because these are the two safe laners from the last games, technically. So in order for the pattern to continue, we have Merwan on the Magnus, and I, ge I guess the, the Meepo would need to die? That's not going to happen. So we're going to nominate uh, Forever instead. Okay. Uh, we'll see how that's going to go here, because I mean, it looks like Forever, he's happy about getting aggressive, but when... You know, we're going to see Nubishu with a, a couple of more levels when that Ancient Seal starts to come out. How happy is that Void Spirit going to be with that, really? Not very. I mean, the Silencer is good to stop off any kind of trades, right? And a lot yeah. of the, the damage of the Magnus in these lanes is dependent on him trading better because he's tankier and he has more damage. But this is an offlane Magnus, on the other hand. So we are looking at Shockwave Spam. We are looking at a Point and Skewer for possible pickoffs under Tower, which is a lot less potent than the... Empower Max in mid Magnus. Okay, and coming through, we got a bit more. Again, these voids, remnants keep flying out and keep catching the targets here. Um, we'll see the Scarath Mage come in for the backstab, or is he going to be front stabbed here? As the silence is just doing a lot more damage onto the Scarath that he's trading out, and it looks like he's going to be out of mana regen as well. I mean, this silence is coming through, just being able to, to stop the Scarath in his tracks. You know, the, the Scarath usually, it's he, he comes in with clarities and mangoes and throws it all, you know, just carries on throwing damage and damage and damage. But it seems like the silencer in this lane, he's just got the Scarath's number a little bit. Man, yeah, like, clarities, those are some precious resources. I'm not sure we can spare those for, like, just a chicken. <laughs> what did you expect? Yeah, that's true. Um, bit of lag coming out here. Hopefully we won't 
uh, be too long on that. But yeah, so what is this Gareth Mage? How does he want to try and play around this lane as the position four? You're playing into a silencer. How do how do you even start to deal with that? Uh, you're, you're giving me your your toughest battles right now. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> Listen, if you don't answer, I have to make something up, and nobody wants that. Yeah, okay, sure, but now I have to make something up. So, my my real answer here is that, actually, you're... I don't want to say you're kind of screwed, like, you're still you're still a range hero, mm -hmm. but you're not going to be playing the Skyrath Mage spam out game. You're you're yeah. just going to have to do a lot of work with clicking. You know what? No one has, uh, has the solution for pesky silencers. Run it until it's dead. Yeah, two, two points into skewer now. That is a little bit surprising because usually, yeah. you know, you see the two into the shockwave and then the empower starts to come out. Is this purely just to get on top of like the, maybe chase down on the void spray and get on top of the silencer and get that harass damage out? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, to me, it feels a bit opportunistic. Like, okay, I, yeah. I did the calculations and that's the only way I get to kill. I'm not sure that's worth it. Okay. Uh, well, we'll see, you know, if it is going to be enough to, to keep the pressure onto the Silencer. Silencer coming with, in with a full reset now, and Nubishu, uh not a lot of mana left. Actually going to go straight to the Void Stone, so once that Pavis, and we'll benefit from that with the Void Stone coming out for the spam. Um, Silencer, I'm interested to see if we're going to see an early point in the, the Glaives for the Silencer. But top lane, chase down Super Rudy. It's going to be a lot of damage coming through the Bash. Mia Bob, the arrow doesn't connect now as well. You've got yourself a lot of damage here onto the Tusk Tusk. Just throw the shards down, but he won't be able to get himself away. Super Rudy trying to take down that Tombstone, but has to go for the second leap away. These zombies, they want brains, but they are going to be taken down here by Super Rudy. And the Tombstone, it does still stand. Is he going to be able to finish the job? Well, one more right click should be enough. Get some yeah. gold from that, but it seems like he's suffering a little bit here, this Marana. Yeah, but it's got double bracer as well, which is not really what you want to have to do if you are... And, uh, I mean, I, I, guess, I guess you're universal, right? I wanted to say an agi hero, but you're not an agi hero anymore. No, uh. no, no. no. Uh, Braces are fine. Yeah, I had to check that as well. I was on my way to the menu to check that to, to see just which way the Morano was going. But I mean, 800 in health, you are losing some to the case, so you're not going to get the full benefit from these braces. But Spy comes in. Good rotation from one of the Meepos. And while the other one sits in the lane and looks for the farm, so really nicely done uh, with Mego to be able to get this kill and maybe get something back on his top lane. No, I mean... Actually, no, because the Mirana is seeing a lot worse than I, I thought. What? They're really going to have to start putting in the pressure a little bit just to get her to space to farm, because so far Paradox is doing really well here, and you cannot say the same about Super Rudy at all. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Uh, Meanwhile, he might go, he will go down. So Famous can be able to pick that one up there. And it was just a forever diving under with the tower with the Resonant Pulse as well, be able to chase the Magnus back. And with the Scarath Mage not being here to protect, Omega's going to show... As you got a Meepo on each rune spot as well, goes top, so it's gonna, actually going to be the Undying making his way over there, but it is Me Mega the Meepo a little bit faster. He is, picks up this haste, and might be able to chase down onto the Undying. There's going to be the one point in the earth find, but instead Mega goes right past him. They get a kill onto Paradox there as well in the lane. TP comes up from Scarath Mage, but it looks like they might be able to get themselves in there once again because with that Earthbind, they've got the lockdown. Do they have the damage to get the kill onto the Scarath? Scarath, a little bit too far forward is his chicken cooked here. The leap in, one more right click, and Mega will be able to get the kill. And that is the hero that we have been talking precious little about in mm -hmm. this whole laning stage, right? Sure. At least Shushu has not been getting slapped out of the lane by the Meepo, but that's because he hasn't really bothered. Instead, he has already been moving his second Meepo around, farming these camps, and he is a kill threat versus this Ember, no matter what, because you have the Earthbind. And look at look at this Ancient stack here as well. Yeah. Mega has been doing really well for himself. He's got a nice little piggy bank built up. He's even going to be able to not stack the I think they were just in the, the spawn box there for, uh, when they came back up. So... It's still, what is that? That's uh, double, triple, quad stack? I, I can't count it. Yeah, uh, I'm seeing, well, I'm seeing a Thunderhide. I'm seeing an Ice Golem. I'm seeing, well, I'm just no, seeing two big dragons, two big dragons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, chase down now, but 
Meepo, Bob, he's going to be able to run himself away here. Uh, how's the Meepo looking? He might actually come through, trying to help out the side lane once again. They did get the kill into Paradox as well in the top lane. Or is he just going to go for the farm on this? No, he's going to move himself up. Yeah, he's still looking towards that Dragonlance. Chrono Sphere comes out. The Tombstone has been dropped, but <laughs> there was already a Snowball there. And oh, that's going to be feeling bad as the Faceless Void tries to give himself away. Cannot. Super Rudy picks up the kill. Sonic Fist comes through. He do take down Meteor Bob, but that's going to be a tusk for a, a, a Faceless Void. Not really worth the trade here. The Tombstone gets taken care of again. Silencer might go down to the Emissary. The Emissary trying to get what aggressive he can. Just get the kill here, but the TP from forever. Does he want to try and get some revenge after that last? game onto the Ember Spirit as Shushu comes back in. Super Rudy's low. The Remnant dies forward. Super Rudy hung around a little bit too long here and now forever out of mana to get the kill onto Shushu. Or does Shushu turn it back around on him? Well, he's going to have the TP coming back in from the Tusk. So he has something coming back his way. But yeah, I don't know if forever would have been able to commit to the kill though. He got so slightly low. Mm -hmm. I think forever baited Rudy into his death there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you ever ever have the damage in order to fill the, uh, kill the Ember Spirit off, because you're certainly not going to disable him for long enough. What's the build coming out from Marana? So, he did start off with the arrow, but this is the build I'm used to seeing on Marana's anyway, the yep. three points into the Star Storm. Um, gonna be the Rod of Atos to come out. Universal Hero, those stats, they do pay off, and the Magnus, you know, it might pay off right now, as he does get silenced, but the Skewer was already on his way out. Mm -hmm. and in the meantime, Mego is uh, smoked and poofing those Ancients. We're switching around a little bit to maximize clarities, and now he's finally ready to actually start smacking him. And yeah, already that's... has the dragon lance in his pocket, which is th that's still so funny to me that even all this time later, it's been like two years since we've seen any meepo anywhere. Dragon lance is still the best value for stats. Yeah, and you know you've got the. Blink Dagger coming in after the fact, so is this just a, even with the Dragonlance coming through here, do you expect the Meepo to get aggressive and start to look to roam to get the kills? Mm-hmm. Yep. All three of these cores rely partially on their mobility in order to live, but especially the Ember Spirit. Yeah. Having uh, the threat alone is going to be worth so much in terms of farm differential. And of course, Mego actually had a second, he had a backup. You know, he was stacking the other ancient cap down as well. That was a triple stack. So he's going to be able to get, well, with the, the refresh now as well on the timer. I think he got about eight and nine stacks of ancients out of that over the course of about two minutes. So And that puts him by far as the highest level hero on the map, which is very nice. Yeah, they're going to be able to get the kill onto the newbie show here as well. Ah, chicken dinner. <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't think he'll feel that way, and it's only chicken drumsticks, because I think from, like, the waist up, it might be, well, depending on what character you're playing, but, you know, looking towards a little bit of, uh, just straight-up flesh, though, and not, you know, the, 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 the chicken legs. I was gonna say are cannibalism, humans, but I, I don't Are humans actually... white meat or red meat? Uh, it tastes like, apparently... Uh, from you know what everyone I see yeah, everyone chicken, but right? from what the rumor is they taste I, I thought it was pork, oh, pork? They, they're supposed to taste like pork I wouldn't know I, I don't know I, I, I there's no way and of verifying that keep on disappointing me but um yeah because <laughs> uh, that's what it's it's called long pork right yes yeah that's oh, long joke. pick long pick um oh, long pork long pick long pork. Uh, I've, I've heard both no it's um, right so anyway Take all that from it, what you what you will. Mm, nothing. I'll take nothing from that. <laughs> right, setting up on the mid lane under that Moonlight's Shadow. Uh, Shushu, they gotta chain this perfectly. Really oh, wait, good no, level stance come through, yeah, to get the kill onto the answer. And they're gonna be able to go for more now as well. Newbie Show could be dragged back here by the Remnant, but the tower taking shots at the Void Spirit. So they just they, they call it at the Ember Spirit. They're gonna be happy with that one. Meanwhile, the top lane, me, me, the Mego Meepo. Do we see the Aghanims and we see the Mego Meepo? The Mego Me the mega <laughs> mega meepo i can't even say it the first time i don't even know why i'm bringing it up and trying to curse myself this way i mean that that looks like an agnum scepter to me i mean it's also just plain good stats right but mm -hmm. i i am so hyped for this you have no idea <laughs> the uh the the mega zord wow. uh, the, the meepo zord here as the, the shot is going to come yes. through i think it's going to be able to kill good the snowball back into the lane so close oh, sure. Never mind, Paradox will go down, and the catch out comes through, but they are going to pay with the Tusk. Yeah, they are going to pay with the Tusk. Good Nobody trade, cares. though. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, the, tus the tusk is like whatever. That Fizz's Void thought he was clever with this Chronosphere there. Chronosphere TP out, but it really doesn't last long enough. Instead, we get net into Arrow. Yeah, and Mego, how close is he to starting onto that one? He's got, again, with the blink coming through. So it is going to be, like you say, that Aghanim Scepter into the Skadi. Just pure stats here. The original Universal Hero, ladies and gents, mm -hmm. on this Mebo here. Top lane, though, the Silencer will go down. So, you know, that's, that's pretty nice. That's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those little chip kills keep coming in. That does mean that the Ember Spirit is going to have a very decent timing on his Maelstrom. Which yeah. is really the only item you need on Ember Spirit. Uh, but he will get more, sure, after that though, right? You know, it's not just going yeah, to Yeah, I'd, I'd hope so, but it's going <laughs> After that, the world's your oyster, really. The Slide Fist comes out, but the Nets are still going to be there here. And this is going to be a kill again onto the Ember Spirit. He's going to go down. Forever does claim the credit for the kill, but set up there from the Meepo into the Arrow from Super Rudy. And once again, the rotations, Ember Spirit gets punished for it. And it's going to be Egypt pushing through now, looking, I assume, to that Tier 1 tower in the top lane. And Algeria, how do they try and play around this Meepo? Because what do you really do when this hero is missing on the map? Is it, do you just have to play on Division? <laughs> Yeah, I think so. And this is exactly why the Blink Dagger is so powerful, because you only really need a couple of kills with it. And after that, all you need to do is just be absent. Yeah. And Algeria is going to be holding hands and being afraid. Of course, taking towers usually does require you to show up with everybody, and your lineup is not exactly suited to it. Yeah. So that does mean you expose yourself to a possible Magnus retaliation. Now, luckily for you, Merwan has... Oh, yeah, Blow comes out. They're going to be able to get the kill. I mean, yeah, the Magnus is trying to do what he can. The Emisprit's already dead, though. They get two. They're going to get the tier one tower. And sorry for cutting you off because, you know, the, the fight was breaking up. But I think that was the example right there of what you were trying to say as the jump comes in on the Undying. And they're going to, going to be another cleanup for Egypt. Yeah, so that, that was very nodded for Algeria. Yeah. You have a couple of mechanisms to make this game move, right? You have a possible Chronosphere on the Void. Uh, next time, all they need to do is pop it when the Skyrath is actually near, which is something that we haven't seen happen yet. And of course, next to that, you have a beautiful response with an RP, but it has to be a skewer in RP now because you have an Echo Saber on your mag. Yeah. Um, and not, not a Blink Dagger yet. And otherwise, up until that time, you're going to be waiting on said Blink Dagger and relying on your Ember Spirit, who is... Mm, much more afraid than your mag to do things like that. He's he's made for chipping, but his remnant, like his base remnant that he returns to, there can be an arrow, there can be a remnant from the Void Spirit. I think they can be, be a Tusk save. Yeah, there's going to be the Snowball coming through here. Do they get forever out? Oh, it looks like Meteor Bob might be the Sacrificial Lamb. Or well, the Sacrificial Wall is trying to get him, is the rest of his team out. Water Spunt will be committed here. They will eventually go down. They lose the Tusk, but they get everybody else out alive, which, you know, swings and roundabouts there on that. But if the Tusk does go down, saving his teammates, that's worth at least, you know, maybe one tip from anybody. No? Nothing? No? No. Ah, no, no, shame. like, when you get up to this level, man, that's just expected. Okay, okay. A run of eight toast. They're going to get the catch onto the Magnus now as well. They jump in from the Meepo, and they get the kill onto the Mag. Not a happy camper here at all, this Magnus. Absolutely not. And this bleeding seems to just be continuing with all the items that they have to empower the Meepo. And yeah, now the, the top side of the map is completely free. And you can't even really take the bottom outpost there because you're not, or outpost, excuse me, the bottom gate there because you're not really in position as the Dyer. So you just, you're going to lose this rush and look at all of this damage with the tag team. Like this, this Tusk is just max tag teams because Meteor Bob is a team player like that. Yeah, and this Roshan going the way of the LSA. Algeria just not, not in any position to try and contest. The Faceless Void still trying to go to the Maelstrom here. Um, taking a look at the net worth, it started off all right for the Faceless Void, but I mean, the Faceless, he's about a far, as far away from the uh, the Meepo as the is Silencer is close to him. And that's not a good thing. You know, the, in context, that is not no. a great thing here for the, the Faceless Void. No, and you're looking at an, an enemy carry that you're going to have to deal so much damage to here as well that you have to... But yeah, he's he's going to BKB afterwards just because otherwise all of these catch items over on the enemy team, especially the roots, are just all threats to him. Yeah, and this is going to be... 
The worst part is that normally you would want to build yourself a Manta style there, but with the amount yeah. of threats that they have, a single Manta style is simply not enough because you're also looking at the Global Silence, which hurts you. You're also looking at an Ember Spirit who could, or sorry, excuse me, a Void Spirit who could very well buy himself an Orchid if he would yeah. so desire. As a, you need to buy BKB, and BKB is not damage. No, it's a little bit of damage, but it, yeah, I know, I get your point that it's yeah. not what Capital you you Lions want to be building towards yeah uh, yeah it's it, it's rough it is real rough that that's going to be your second item or i suppose third after the master plan is coming out here and mego he has that agnum scepter you know we might see the mega me clothes coming out now and smoke coming through they want to get something from this but which way do they go because nobody's going to be here on the top lane so do they change targets do they change the mind they're making a move down towards the bottom lane tp coming in from the meepo but the atmosphere is already away he is smoked still and might find himself a chicken. I mean, maybe maybe yeah. he will just do Radiant's some Megazord action for us because we've been such good little casters. We yeah, we deserve a treat. We as, do. Uh, uh, you, you, can, you can talk about it, though. I don't think I can get the, the Mega, 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 Mega Meepo off uh, <laughs> when it's going to be the, you know important. So... Yeah, tongue twister for anyone at home. The Mega Mega Meepo. I'm not even gonna try. The Mega Mega Meepo. Yeah, well, show off. Uh, yeah, Harry tried to get me to do sea. No, now I fucked up. Sorry. <laughs> she sells seashells by the seashore. Seashells, seashells. I kind of, I have a bit of a uh, a thing, you know, the lisp. So it comes out. Uh, a bit of a Sean Connery. You know, it comes out she anyway. Mm, so she. It, yeah, she, she, she. So it's gonna be. He's selling she shells by the she shore anyway. One, he's gonna be trapped out here. This Magnus, do they get the kill to get the rotation in? They do take down the Magnus. I like the the Mega Meepo is how how do I how do I explain this the best? I suppose you should just really see it as I don't want to say Mega Meepo again, but it. <laughs> what Meepo normally does is blink dagger at people and then poof everything on top of it. And then yeah. with the Mega Meepo, you get to stand on top of each other and then throw people in. Chronosphere comes out here. They've got the catch. Snowball's going to come through, though. Global Sans will be there. As the initiation came through, Faces Void, he was on the edge of a Mask of Madness. And it's going to be the Wall's Punch coming through the arrow, though. It doesn't connect. TP out from Paradox. Do they get the vision? Do they even... Nope. They don't disrupt this here. Um and will be able to get himself away but it forces Radiant's everybody back on the side of dire right back behind this tier two tower and now the net comes through they call out the undying the police will be there because they have the protection rp comes through they have the the lockdown onto the meepos meepo actually does he go Mega down meepo? well no he doesn't he's gonna be the megazord of meepos here the jump comes through has that aegis if he wants it now as well the rest of his team looking to try and catch up help him out here do they have enough because they're gonna be running low they take down the tusk as well the meepo on the back lines one tp is one TP going to be enough as the rest of them look to get the poops out? The damage coming through. The silence, they've caught one. They're going to be able to get this kill. Uh, yeah, and there you can see a good demonstration of the utility of the Mega Meepo, where all of them stacked together are ridiculously tanky. And then, of course, you're supposed to be, you know, yeeting them around and slowing people and poofing over to them, etc. Yeah. But. You know, when you're the only one in the enemy base and your team is actually kind of <laughs> fragile, like nobody on his team has that many hit points, so they can't really cross that tower like the tier 3. Never mind the fact that the tier 2 is still up, right? We we have to not yeah. forget that they started a fight behind the tier 2 um, at 20 minutes. <laughs> so, so in, in hindsight, do you just, once that fixes his voice out, do you just kind of give that one up? I mean, in, in hindsight, definitely, yeah. Of course, like... I just wanted to see Operation Rescue Meepo. Okay, fair enough. And it, ooh, I can't even say it was close, to be honest. Uh, because they lost the Tusk, you know, they were losing heroes. And Mega Meepo, it wasn't enough to keep him alive. And then he did get locked down with the Ancient Seal after the fact. So wasn't able to get that final poof out. And unfortunately, well, most of the Meepos died in the fountain. And he just um, he, he can just solo the tormentor. Yeah, no, of course he can, because yeah. it's Meepo. So it's Meepo. Exactly. And he doesn't really benefit that much from it. Mm. But you know, Magnum's chart, yeah, sure. The glaive yeah. silence, you never know when that's actually going to come in handy. 
Yeah, and it does up the stolen intelligence from two to four as well. Notice another mm -hmm. silencer doesn't actually have any stolen intelligence on the board. So he's, I mean, three, three, and six. But how much do you like this build where the silencers go for the, you know, the four, zero, four builds? Mm, not really. I actually think that the glaives in lane are a very powerful tool. And you see that most often these days. Global silence here. The atmosphere is he going to be able to get himself away? The BKB is going. He's going to have a run to jump away to. He was so low, but he wasn't able to claim that kill. The global silence this time, just not enough to help out here to get the kill onto Shushu. Which is, I think that's a fair trade global for the BKB. And of course, yeah. you're, for oh. both sides are happy that Ember is happy to live. And Arya is going to be happy that, you know, the BKB has one less second on it next time and you're just, you've already started the process of whittling it down immediately. <laughs> yeah, true, true. And if you're looking through, I mean, did the Faces Void actually get his off? He's still building towards that BKB now as well. And again, net worth wise, 3k behind, you expect him to be behind the Meepo. At least he's caught up to the, to the other Void here, you know, the mm -hmm. Void Spirit. Uh, is doing decent and especially the Murano. Super Rudy is doing this very interestingly where I thought for sure that he was going to get at least a Maelstrom for himself yeah. to keep himself a little bit in the game for the farming department but no he's just complete utility right now. Rod of Atos, Guardian Greaves, he is leaning fully into that offlaner role and I feel like he had the time to build a, a maelstrom in between there just to secure himself a little faster farm and a little bit more scaling for these camps that he's eventually going to take anyway. Uh, uh, just in case this game goes very late. Yeah. I mean, it, look, he's got the pipe queued up here as well, so he's, he's fully committed to this kind of offlane build here. Um, the, the utility boot that I've built coming out onto the Marana. Where's the, the Void Spray? It's going to be the... Desolated to come out after the after the Echo Saber, after the Manta style here. Void Spirit wants just to go straight into the Deso. And this is what I usually see from the, the carry Void Spirit. So we'll see if forever, if he's going to be able to take that position one roll and kind of run with it here in this game. Because 303 already on the Void. It's not, I mean, 25 minutes in, it's not awful here for the Void Spirit. No, absolutely not. And one of the benefits that you have of building these Deso on the Void Spirit is that he's technically an AoE hero with the Astral Steps. And that means that if he steps through a team fight and hits several Peepo, uh, Peepo, <laughs> Peepos, Meepos, Peepo. you know, yeah. Yeah, if he hits several Peepo, the Meepo can choose whichever Peepo he attack. wants to uh, meep. Dyer's top and is under attack. we're going to see a group up here from the side. Uh, does he want to actually push onto this tier three? Surely they don't. The Meepo's not the, or most of the Meepos, no, all of the Meepos aren't there here. So uh, the smoke comes out, moving attack. themselves through on the Dyer side of the map. They've got to be careful. There's some nice vision down here, but obviously not going to detect the smokes on the die side. Exactly. No, that was just Rudy forcing reactions and being like, this is this is the most successful way of doing that, right? You yeah. just you show up with a hero that can jump out. You hit your tower a couple of times and they smoke their entire team at you. And yeah. Uh, uh, best, we'll best scenario is if you live, of course. He does actually scout out the atmosphere here with the Moonlight Shadow going. We'll see if this is going to be the engage coming just on through. The point. They get the jump in. There's going to be the global sounds coming out now as well. The BKB is already there for the Faces Void, but it doesn't matter to get the kill into the Faces. Big RP oh, though. Gonna... What can he get off the back of this? There's going to be the Mega Meepo coming out now as well. And they take down the Magnus. This Tusk doesn't even drop. Void Spirit, he's going to get low, but he's not going to be picked off here. Ember Spirit trying to get himself away. Rodovators comes back. He's already used his BKB. The arrow connects now as well. The Undying will go down. And it looks like they want even more out of this. The Mega Meepo is going to be down but the jump in from the normal Meepos they get the earth bind out they get the kill onto the ember spirit and now with this creep wave pushing on the top lane as well they might be able to force out a tier three because no buybacks on the side of the dire <laughs> wow okay i can't believe how much survivability that mega meepo actually Dyer's gives top top <laughs> that yeah that's pretty wild and i thought for sure that that was going to be the turnaround that was going to change the entire dynamic of this game but instead Amigo lives and yeah. the, I, they can't stay here just because it's 26 minutes in the game and a respawn timer is yeah. too short <laughs> I mean they do a decent amount of damage there. it's the best case scenario right team wipe into a, uh, a decent amount of damage into the tier 3 you can move yourself back as well Roshan he's back in his pit so they might be able to get themselves an Aegis and Cheese on the board here and there's nothing that Algeria is going to be able to do to contest this one at least I don't Dyer's think so. Scanning. How are those BKBs looking? 13 seconds, Dyer's 2 seconds. Okay, maybe they can actually come in and contest. 
Yeah, they could. I mean, the bigger deal for me is that the RP is not up. I, yeah. I think that without the RP... Sh Shushu was this close to copping a four-second arrow to the face. <laughs> well, they are moving in. Smoke coming through, though, from the side of Algeria. We'll see if they're going to be able to... Arrow uh, doesn't go the right way. Spy, though, is going to get the jump in. Meepo, sounds comes out. Do we have enough to get the kill off? It looks like they might be able to take down the Undying. Do we have the Chronos? They do. They catch out a lot of the Meepos, but can they do the damage over Before the top of this hit? one? They've got this RP coming out in four seconds, but with the Global being up here, it's going to be the drive back here from the Magnus. The Magnus on that Void Remnant. The drive back comes through onto him. He might be able to take the kill. They will be able to get the kill onto the Embers right now. RP comes out, catches onto near enough everybody, but they don't have any follow-up from this. And it looks like Magnus maybe just committing this RP to try and get the Faces Void out alive, but that's not where you want to be dropping that. No, absolutely not. And that looks very unfortunate there. Like, I'm not sure who was blocking the Faces Void, but it seemed like his pathing actually messed him up there. He chronoed everybody and then got passed out of his own chronosphere because he didn't have a direct line to hit him. That's rough, buddy. That is absolutely yeah. rough. That sucks because they got the Meepos before they all yeah. mega up. Yeah, no, they caught out every single Meepo. There was no way, you know, um, if they would be able to do the damage, you don't face this void, they'd probably I take me uh, Mego down. And that fight goes a completely different direction. Yeah, but instead, you don't really have the RP yet ready for the follow-up yet of mm -hmm. this very unfortunate Chronosphere. Your Ember Spirit dies before that as well, so that's one of your big DPS heroes gone. And everything gets worse and worse for Algeria, which is... Ah, that's a shame. Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to get the pause again coming through to a very nice display screen. It's going to show all the stats, all the items. Uh, 28 minutes, 55 seconds, one to one here in terms of this series being played. But at the minute, with a 17k net worth lead and 22 kills to 12, Egypt are looking to close this one out. Um, looking at these items, we've got the double pavis. That can never feel good when you, both supports have to go for the, the pavis, the pavis, pavis. Yeah, so how do you say um, visage, visage? How do you say it? Well, I change it up every time I, I say the hero's okay, well, name. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then you also get to change the purpose <laughs> up every time. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, the uh, it's also Aegis, and you know that's the only one I think because it was a oh. bit of a you know hoo around that one. But even like Aegis, the, Aegis, Aegis of the Immortal. Yeah, uh, that one, and then what's the other one? Is it Aeon Disc, Eon Disc, yeah. uh, Abaddon? Abaddon, you know, where you put the emphasis in there as well. I change it up every single time just to keep people on the toes. Mm, yes. It's important that they not get complacent. Yeah, you can't let people get comfortable. It, it, it'd be like they'd almost nearly be able to enjoy my casts. <laughs> and do, you're doing them a favor, really. Like, you get comfortable, he die. Exactly, yeah. That's it. If you can't adapt, you know, if you can't constantly listening out to the, the silly names um, I call things then what are you even doing please don't leave though <laughs> well another smoke coming up here with Mego fully in the lead and they found Paradox again can you believe it uh, I can I absolutely can he does get the time walk away this time though to safety uh, has the BKB back Dyer's off cooldown trying to get himself into the uh, Lonya and you look at the difference now, though. Even the face of Swoid, he's fallen behind what technically is this offlane Marana. As the Marana actually grieves yeah. into... Looks like it's going to be the Sheepstick here and not the Dyer's pipe to come out for Super Rudy. Yeah, I think after a couple of fights, Super Rudy has realized that actually they don't have the damage on Algeria anyway. So why yeah. bother with the damage prevention and just go for the full and able to get the win now? Yeah, the control will be nice here from that Marana. And... Really, if you're looking at this as the side of Algeria, you know, how do you play back into this? Is it literally just trying to catch out the Meepos before Dyer's the Mega Meepos in the Chronosphere and just yes. have the Scarath Mage and everything just, you know, rain down damage? Exactly. You just lay down everything you got. I mean, yeah. the real problem for that is that Aria, the very Dyer's famous Aria, tower. has oh. just flown in <laughs> his Refresher Orb. Oh, neat. Okay, cool beans. So, yeah, yeah even with a BKB, you are going to be suffering as this Amnesty, yes. as the Faceless Void. Yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. Suffering in silence as a Paradox escapes again. Oh, yes. Burly. 
but there's going to be the rotation. Time walk comes out now. The blink comes forward. Walrus punch here. They've got the lockdown, maybe. Yep, he's going to go for it. The Chronosphere into the BKB, but Snowball, do the, they don't have anything to stop it through that BKB. So, but I mean, again, you trade out a BKB and a Chronosphere there for pretty much nothing. Yep, that was literally everything you had. And now really all that Egypt has to do is just push a wave into your base. And they're going to feel super safe sieging. I, mean, I say super safe sieging like there is not a Magnus with a blink dagger over on the enemy side. Like th to be Fire fair, Mag skewer back is always a problem. Not not if you kill him though. On the bot lane. Yeah. Oh, that good. was cute. Yeah, just watching uh, to see him go. I'm sorry. I was also checking out the Meepo shot because it's. Um, I, I don't see a lot of Meepos, especially with the new changes. So no. I don't know what the shot does. I mean, he's, he's very complicated now, basically. Yeah. But yeah, you both get to group up and bounce around and, you know, to toss yourself and then get back together again, which is something that Mako did there. Yeah. Um, and then he gets to bury himself with a shot. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Okay. They get a lockdown onto the Undying with the net. The boy's going to throw that remnant out, but with the net keeping him close, uh, keeping him locked down. In fact, he's not going to walk away walk towards Team Egypt, but Mego, he's still got this Aegis now for the next minute and a half. They are looking for a tier 3 tower in the mid lane. They're going to be able to take it down. In fact, Egypt, do they even leave this base? Is this just their base now? Uh, the Chrono will be back. They have a timing on that, I'm sure. 45 seconds, though. Yeah. They're going to play it safe, though. They are going to back themselves away. They're not um I see nothing. It's a Fakest fake back I ever saw. <laughs> Looking for Just, the regoose. Exactly. They bought this one in some like back alley in Shanghai. And uh, Shushu has to move himself away. Has to be really careful because there is the rotation coming in from these Meepos. It looks like the poof comes in. The net goes in the wrong direction though. And he's going to be right back into his base here. But again, the mid lane has been broken. You have this Aegis now for another 43 seconds or so. So it looks like they, they are going to back at least one Meepo off though. Let's give the skewer back here onto one of the Meepos. The Meepos in the base. They're going to be able to get the kill. Where's that respawn going to come through though? Ah, uh, it's, it's on the Ancients on the, literally the, the other side of the map. Yes, it's going to respawn on the main Meepo. So he did that pretty much on purpose. It's like, yeah. hey, I, I still have this Aegis, you know. We might as well get, the get so. Yeah, before yeah. we uh, dash them. And gets the Murano shot now as well. So this is the weird fire breath thing on the leap, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. To Which is, I mean, it's it's nice to have. Um, I haven't exactly seen it make a big difference in any games just yet. Yeah, but the, bon the bonus well, charge does the most, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking, when is the Marana to you? I suppose when you want to get the Star Storm off. So you do. There is actual precedent to leap into the fight and not just away from the fight. The extra attack you, speed you, off. You arrow somebody, you leap in, hmm. right? Breathe in the face, yeah, make them super yeah. uncomfortable, so they take psychic damage. <laughs> is, I mean, it is a really big cat, like, I presume their mouth spell absolutely horrid. Yeah, and I, I know, well, I mean, I know that I take some physical, uh, some, you know, psych psychological damage for cat, you know, like, a, a literal tiger jumped at me and breathed in my face, yeah. There'd the, the be a little bit of that, um... Oh boy, that I didn't want that to happen, you know. So, but it's time. yeah, Egypt is taking over the map here. There's gonna be a rotation out. No smoke just yet from Algeria, but Marana and the Star Storm form here. Paradox has to go for the time warp back. Oh, the arrow! What? Like just the absolute prediction there from the Marana. To see the angle get the kill on the Ember hit with a max range arrow. That's 100% yeah, predicted, 100% calculated there by Super Rudy. Will not take that away from him. But Ember Spray, that, that is going to be the, the biggest feels bad of this game. I mean, I, I suppose he escaped very luckily early on. So may, maybe this was karma, but. Like some final destination stuff, catching back yeah. up to him. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You were always going to get hit by that arrow. It's just worse now. And 
Now go. The Russian respawn is another minute though, so in that regard, I think he died at pretty much the best possible time. And it yeah. feels weird to say, but he's he's not looking to buy another big item here like immediately. There's no big fight coming up unless his team somehow gets caught. There's just a respawning Roshan that they don't know enough about right now, but they would get a shot at contesting it if they move out as soon as he's up. Okay, and we will see. I mean, yeah, at least 28 seconds before the big man's back. So we'll see how panicky they get over maybe trying to contest into the Roshan in case it will be that instant re respawn. And we'll find out. Uh, 3 to 2 until daytime, though. So is it going to be in time here, Roshan, or is it going to be a long one, maybe forcing a trip to the other side of the map? And you can see that, I, I think, on the side of Algeria, they're just very scared to leave the base, even as five. Oh, three whole minutes. It is a long one. So it's going to be about the time, yeah, that we shift to daytime. Uh, so that is going to be a, um, a daytime Roshan, uh, more than likely, unless he can get the kill in, what, a matter of 10 seconds, which I'm not ruling out. But, you know, it's mm -hmm. it, it might be a big ask, even for Egypt. Yeah, and to be fair, like, this gold differential only keeps on creeping up. I fully understand that Algeria doesn't feel safe coming out here at all. But every, every minute that they get is one where Paradox can at least work a little bit further towards the Manta style, so... Yeah, who I'm, knows? I'm just going back through the, uh, the scoreboard timeline here. You know, the, the little dots that you get given. Mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing that they've not had a kill since about the 21 minute mark here um on the side of algeria 12 you know 12 kills into 24 and so we're looking at what nearly fit over 15 minutes now since the last mm -hmm. time they were able to get a kill that's that's got to feel i mean it's got to do some sort of mental to you that you know you've not been able to pick up uh, any kills whatsoever in the last 15 16 minutes and you know it We'll see how the team bounces back onto that. If they have that mental fortitude to say, no, we are going to smoke up when we go try and get out the side of the base. We're going to look for a gank here. Because again, like you said, they don't have the information on the Roshan. They don't know when it's respawning. So as we're speaking now, uh, Egypt could be taking Roche and Algeria have no way of knowing this. So we'll see if they are going to maybe group up and look for an attack here in that Roche pit up to the top part of the map. I think the fact that they haven't moved up until now, though, is indicative i think of the fact that algeria is just going to wait until they hear the roshan sound yeah um, and then they'll they'll know exactly where egypt is okay and do you then because just sticking around in your base here though that's going to be a bit of a death sentence here for algeria right yeah i mean this is um, we see this paralyzation more often with teams outside of like the the dpc but in the dpc hmm. we now have what we all know as the hail mary smoke right yeah and that hills Mary smoke is precisely desi uh, designed to do or to avoid this scenario. Like it's just you throw, you throw in the towel yourself, or you make the last attempt at a comeback on a point where this is still possible. Whereas right now you're looking at a sixty, excuse me, thirty-six k net worth differential. You haven't had any item progression on Paradox whatsoever since the last time you fought. I mean, yeah, you have, you have a Yasha now. Fine, I guess. Yeah. Um, do you think, are, are we getting close to that Butch and Sundance time here for the side of Algeria, or is it still a, a lot more if they get a couple of items, you know, can they pull it back, it's a 36k lead, you know, yeah. I, I'm no, thinking it's... that the guns are being, you know, lined up here, and uh, we, we might be seeing this uh, final stand be coming out, coming out from Algeria. Mm -hmm. I mean, this void, this faceless void, I should say, like, can always go later, right? It's best yeah. point he can always, always, always go later. The problem is, though, that he hasn't had any item progression either, and he's been the yeah. only one who's been mopping up all the creep waves. That's the only thing he's been doing. Okay. And it's a, uh, it's a nighttime Roche, so he does respawn here with the Refresher Shard, which is going to be given over to the Void Spirit, because, I mean, the Silence already has a full Refresher Orb. Um, yep. And yeah, having the, the second kit on the voice right here, you know, the, the second grab on the Aether Remnant, four Astral Steps, the Resonant Pulses to come through. Um, if you'd have had the 
except, you know, he would have just been able to keep, like, the... Well, I mean, I think this Gareth Mage would have been dying on his first Resident Pulse Silence, but, you know, just having yeah. that control, maybe sticking on top of the Magnus with it and just keeping him um, from being able to get off an RP or, like, a, you know, Chronosphere or something like that. Um, but, yeah, the, the Shard comes out. I think they might have wanted the Scepter a little bit more. Uh, but now, Egypt, is this where they tighten the noose and maybe... Yes. Just put the you know the, the knife in and i can't come up with any more metaphors for, for ending this game so you know looking to actually close this one out yep this is where uh, they asked the fat lady to start her concert please okay okay well we'll see how they're gonna go about it again tier three in the mid lane is already taken down here it looks like they're gonna put some aggression onto the tier three tower in the top lane and again algeria just trying to play around in the base as the creep waves come towards them but uh, are they going to go for this jump out? Is it going to be enough? Maybe with this Aegis, it is a very tall ask. And I'm looking at the uh, the win probability, 97% in favor of Egypt. So there is still a chance. But are we in those that 3% of the universes where they're going to be able to fight back and maybe force this game and win it 2-1 two, two, or out of completely nothing, it seems here? These arrows, man. So I think you need, like, skewers back. Yeah. into the base and then nobody from Egypt actually being able to follow up for whatever reason and you'll also need to avoid both of the hexes that are currently on Egypt because there's not only one on Rudy now but also one on Mega and of course you also need to avoid anybody getting kicked out of the base by Meteor Bob who is probably very excited to help people meet their maker indeed <laughs> oh just as he said it, it was close with the harpoon drag back now as well to the tusk to the tusk he oversteps his boundaries and he will be taken and punished because of it yep that's uh that's what you get for trying to end the game <laughs> yeah how dare you try and win mm -hmm. uh, to be fair you know i think everybody would answer back with the same thing here and yeah, just the harpoon on the Magnus being able to, again, with the, the skewer in tow on that, the harpoon drag back, it's like a full screen of distance you get that you can, you know, pull your target away from his team. It's, I like the animation a lot as well on the harpoon. It's just like a, a little, little, no you don't. <laughs> <laughs> nope. You think you're getting away? Nope. <laughs> yeah. um, and... How do you like the, the Harpoon as an item? You know, do you think it maybe is, is a little bit too strong or do you think it's in a mm, good place? I think it's very necessary yeah. because a lot of these melee heroes would be completely inviable in the current meta without it. Yeah. Especially like anything that looks like melee strength, but also a bunch of agility heroes. I, I gotta say though, like how many melee strength heroes do we see in general these days? Because it's even with, with the Harpoon, it is absolutely sad like you can either be an offlaner or you can be on the bench yeah i'm kind of yeah bring back the life stealer you know bring give give me back uh my i, I like the life stealer carry and i've just CK. Uh, yeah i mean i'm seeing a few ck's and they're doing quite well as well mm -hmm. yeah um, one of the reasons is harpoon <laughs> yeah no yeah the reality ripped into the harpoon and you're constantly just pulling heroes out of position it is a, a bit like you know wait I, I feel sorry for the players that do get pulled around like that because they, they must get dizzy watching their hero just bounce back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the trick is to keep your eyes on a fixed point, right? And only turn the body. <laughs> is it, it the the fixed point is when your head's in your hands and you're just like, oh, what am I doing here? You know, because you're already dead. Uh, no, I was thinking more like the thousand yard stare where you're just like, your eyes are unfocused <laughs> and you're looking through the screen. Yeah, yeah the hands come off the keyboard because exactly. there's just nothing you can't get dizzy like that. Do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and we'll see. I mean, the smoke's going to come through. That Aegis is still up for the next 30 seconds. And, oh, this could be the jump this in now as well, the kick. This time it yeah. does land. But this could be the skewer back. Global Sans comes out. Do they have enough here? They're going to have all of the Meepos here. It's not going to be the Mega Meepo either. Paradox Second dead. Global Sans comes through. Paradox trying no, to run himself not. away. Chronosphere, he does able to get the purge with the, <laughs> the Man style here. As well as that BKB. A lot of damage out to the Void. But the Void has the cheese still taking damage. Joe, is he going to survive yes, through this one? The Void Spirit. And is it going to be enough to kick back onto the Ember Spirit now? The BKB still going. Will wear off as that Remnant does come through from the Void Spirit. Should be able to get the kill onto the Ember Spirit. The Hex comes out now as well. The Control, they've got the kill. He buys himself back. Jumps himself right into the fray here. The Hex comes out the second time. And oh, mate, that might have been a mistake here. The Arrow will connect. Let me try to turn it around. Gets the Control. And all of a sudden... We oh, get a pause. So, completely killed my momentum. Yeah. 
yeah, it's, it's, sometimes it's, it's just like that, right? Yeah. <sighs> okay, what can you do? I'll, I'll keep the fight going in my head, you know, so I can jump back into it. But um, mid-fight breakdown? Yeah, mid-fight breakdown is that... The problem for the Void Spirit is that he had both cheeses on himself and cheese as a cooldown. Mm -hmm. I thought he'd split the cheese up, but no, no, he has both of them. And that means that he actually has to buy back here as we unpause. Well, we'll see how it is going to end here. It's going to be really taking a lot of damage. It's going to be rooted out now as well. Has those Greaves in two seconds, though. There's going to be the jump onto the back lines. The punch once again. They've got the lockdown onto the faceless Void. Void, though, with the time will come to the high ground. Meepo, he wants to come in the Ancient Seal. Will be there. They still have the Earth Vines. They have the kill. They might be able to take down Nubi Show as well. That Scarus Mage. He's going to be deleted. Buyback comes through from Paradox. The Aegis is gone on the Meepo now as well. Second life for both. I'm going to call him a carry here, this Meepo, because he is the carry of the game. Yes. And we'll see. Just what Paradox, we get another pause, but no Chrono, no Manta, no BKB. Do they have a chance? Oh man, I love this this little stack of Meepos here. Like if you if you put it right, it also looks like the Mirana is on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Just getting the camera down there. It's 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 grouping up. Sort of this thing goes, man. Every time you get reminded that Dota also has a vertical axis is a little jarring. Um, yeah, it's it is a bit weird, like especially when you're missing skill shots because of it, and you're like, no, that was on, and then you realize, well, you're looking at a, at a, an angle. Hey, mm -hmm. But yeah, Meepo, seven point, I'm seven point eight k healthier um, as this Mega Meepo, and we'll see just if he's gonna go back in. They they are towering, the wobbling, but it looks like they want to. Bring up maybe what? a sturdy fight here to end the game. The oh, the kick. Amusement. The animators must have felt. <laughs> With the wobbles. <laughs> yes. The hex comes through onto the face of Void now as well. That's going to be a dieback if he goes down, but they've got to catch onto the Meepo on the back lines. The Tusk is no? already dead, Money? has no buyback. He's dead, but he has a buyback if he wants to come back into the fight. It looks like Egypt going to back themselves away. There is still a single singular cheese on the Void Spirit. They forced out a couple of buybacks now as well. They take down the Void Faceless. And the Meepo, if they buy back, they might... Uh, they're not going to use it as a resource, but I was just thinking, you know, you commit that, and just maybe look to end the game. But if it goes badly, then that might be the game thrown here. So Egypt, they're going to be happy with the dieback here on the Faceless Void. He's got no buyback for the next seven minutes. They can wait for the Meepo to come back up, wait for the Tusk to come back up, reset, and go back in, potentially look to end this game. Yep, they can, and this is this is precisely Faces Void Gaming, right? He is mm -hmm. so hard to kill that in the process, at some point you're bound to lose some heroes, even when you can kick him out of the base. Yeah, and the follow-up lockdown being down, you know, the, the global science was down, the refresher robot hadn't come back up, so he was able to just time walk himself back in, and like I say, that while you're focusing on that, the Magnus jumps in, snatches out the Meepo, takes the Tusk as well, and you know, you get two kills out of that, so... It's not completely done here for Algeria just yet. There is signs of life. Whether they're going to be able to capitalize on another fight to win, especially with this Faceless Void buyback being down, we're going to have to wait and see because Egypt, I think if they start to win this fight, they're going to use this buyback as a resource and might just look to end the game with those buybacks that they still have. Yep, they will. I'm honestly a little surprised that that's not what happened here, but... Yeah. You know, it, it's up to them, and I think the biggest argument there is probably the Global Silence and the Refresh zone. Mm -hmm. If either of those was still up, I think they would have gone for it again. But instead, if they have no way to stop this Magnus from dragging the Meepo into the fountain, like maybe they actually have to focus on killing the Magnus instead of the Void. I, I actually think, the more I talk about it, that the Magnus is the present threat and not the Void. Yeah, he's, the and key. he's gonna go for a refresher. Uh, no, it's gonna be the Lincolns. Okay, never mind. Uh, I thought he would have gone for a refresh, you know, that second RP to control the Meepo, but um, wants to actually go into the Lincolns here on this Magnus, so some extra protection to come through for him. Um, but, yeah, no, the, the double refresh on the, the Global Science, he's got to... I mean, he has to wait that out, right? Is that the, now the, yeah. the 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 game, like a Cold War between the Science uh, and the mm -hmm. Magnus, uh, between the, the two Globals and the, the, the RP coming out? Yep, absolutely. I mean, you have the, the BKB over on the Mag, right? But you get, yeah. like, a... A small window, and then <laughs> ah, he can just get silenced again anyway. Yeah, and it's not like he went for the Greaves as well. You know, he did go for the Power Treads on the Magnus. So it, that isn't going to be coming out there either. 
Exactly. So no, it's a. I don't know. My brain likes to think about it as an onion, but that that metaphor hasn't worked for a lot of people. Where the team fight, like there are certain layers you need to peel away. Yeah. Before you can see what's underneath. So the team fight is like an ogre. Yes. Yes. Very much so. Okay. Okay. And green and angry. Yeah, and just goes everywhere when it kicks off. Well, we might get to see that again as we have Egypt once again gathered up. Like, please don't tell me they're going to wait for the next road. <laughs> I mean, 50 seconds. I I could tell you that, but I'd have to tell you it slowly until the next rush is up. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know if I can stretch that out for 40 seconds. No, no, I, I don't think he can. And also, I don't think it's a good idea. And like, in general, like Egypt, Egypt, you are... I understand playing it safe, but at some point you are being cowards. I mean, we have already established that this faceless void is not a damage threat. The only thing yeah. you're afraid of is the Magnus. Like that's that's literally the only thing. And your Meepo is not actually going to get much bigger anymore now. Like you, you've got the Aghanim Scepter internalized now as well, so you can put mm -hmm. one more item on top of this, and that's. That's it. That's it. And the Void has a lot more space, and the Magnus has a lot more space. Like some of these fools are still toting their Wraith Bands around. Yeah, and we'll see. No, oh, they're waiting. Yeah, I mean, it's a quick Roshan respawn. I think it was like a 50 seconds max respawn here. And I mean, he has the slot, so if you do, you may as well. And Meepo could be able to come in. The, the Void Spirit might get himself another cheese to add to his collection. Um, and it's not like it's going to take a long time to take okay. a slot down, down either. Block of cheese. Block of cheese. <laughs> you know what? I'm sad that we're this far in the game. Yeah, and there, there isn't any of these lotus, human lotuses left. I've actually been using them, which is, you know, it's fair. Those Absolutely. nerds. Yeah. Use them. But yeah, it's it's unfortunate. There's a, there's a greater one on the sky, Wrath. Maybe you'll want to donate it in the name of science. Has Do you know if there's been like a block of cheese in the pro game yet? I haven't seen one myself. And we, we, I, we would have heard about it, right? Yeah, there would have been clips on it. It would have been on Twitter and Reddit. People would have been bragging yeah. about it. You know, the, the casters were casting it. Would, that that would be like the, you know, the they could retire after seeing that block Exactly, of like yeah. a guaranteed invite to TI for the casters. Yeah, yeah. Hold um, and Caboodle. But no, it doesn't look I don't think think I've seen one in a pro game anyway. I think, like you say, they, they're, they're the nerds. They value the healing of the, the lotuses way too much. You know, oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to pop the lotus and heal myself instead of saving it to, you know, for maybe having Glory. a block of cheese in like 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> How dare they not think ahead to the game going for an hour long and we might see a block of cheese. Mag waiting in the back. I actually see a Cedic Scap. I would have expected the Magnus to always be Rocket Ninja Gear at this point. He's well, risky. That, jump that's... in. He gets the drag back though onto it. The Global Sounds comes out now. So he's already used the BKB. And are they going to be able to take the kill? They take down the Scarath Mage. That's going to be one Chrono Sphere though on the back lines. Do they have the damage to get at least one kill on the Marana? The Earthbind comes out with the Marana. Going to be able to bounce himself away from this one. The second Global Sounds comes through once again. They're going to be able to get the kill onto the Faceless Void. Faceless Void is dead. 86 seconds. The Nets onto the Undying now. And you see no one hiding in the trees. The RP comes out. But what damage did he have? They're going to be able to get one. Do they pop the Meepo now as well? Again, the Meepo has this Aegis. And the Void Spirit's going to be diving in. They get the Remnant onto this Magnus. The Magnus is going to be controlled. They get the kill. They get everybody apart from the Amber. The buyback comes out from the Magnus. But again, no refresh from here. So no. it looks like this might be getting close oh, to a closing time. Terrible. They get the lockdown. They get the kill. They have everybody. This is going to be GG being called. And Egypt, they're going to go 2-0 in terms of series being played and won. They did get stretched to it here. You know, a 53-minute game coming mm -hmm. out of this final game. But in the end, they will take the victory. They will, yeah. And I, I have to say that this last fight was a little bit of an indication of why I was calling them cowards before. Like, I, I don't think that was harsh language. Yeah. They, they they also know that they were just really, really being a little... They were pussyfooting around it, as, uh, as you say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, playing safe, you know, making sure that they had that backup plan just in case the Meepo went down once. But overall, um, I think the game went a little bit better for both offlaners here. You know, they weren't being bullied out of it. Um, but 
coming through into the, like you say, into that late game. Egypt maybe playing it a little bit too safe. You know, maybe if the um, Algeria had had uh, a little bit more faith in themselves, they might have been able to take advantage of that, get themselves out of the base. Because it felt like for the last half an hour or so, they were just kind of pinned back into the base. Yeah, they were, and that was really not just due to the amazing map control by the Egyptian side, but also definitely just Algeria hoping that Egypt would come for them, yeah. and Egypt very wisely deciding that that was simply not going to happen. And man, this was only the first of a long series of chronospheres, and I don't think, I mean, I'm sure we saw like an aggressive chronosphere somewhere, right? But it feels like. Most of them throughout this game were simply runaway chronos. We saw the chronosphere oh, outside the sad of the chrono. Roche pit. Yeah, the sad, the sad chrono, chrono. That, that we, I'm pretty sure faces would much rather us forget about. But we did yeah. see that one and there was no follow up to it. But I think, yeah, that was the only offensive chronosphere. Apart from that one at the very end where they were trying to take down the Marana. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it really didn't pay off here for the faces world getting this chronosphere out. He just never really was able to capitalize on it and get anything from them. And this is the, the early murder spray of the Meepo as soon as that that blink dagger came out. Great tusk save here as well. Yeah. And um, there was you know the, the I mean the tusk was on point every single time he needed to get mm -hmm. snowball off from either Scarath Mages or you know snowballing across the chronosphere, forcing the faces void out of it, you know. Every single time it seems like this tusk he did die a decent amount of times, but he was sacrificing himself for the team, you know, he knew when to make those plays. The pull pullback here, this is where I thought it might turn around just a little bit as the Meepo gets dragged back and can't get himself away. But again, from that Algeria just were not able to get anything from the uh that little bit of momentum they, they maybe got from getting that Meepo kill. Yeah, and again, this fight was so far. Look at look at the tier two still standing there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is how far that Meepo was in at that point. And it was just again a big jump in here. The Meepos are all grouped up. They're trying to get the Empower Cleave yeah. coming through as well. They just and then they mega up. Yeah, and all of a sudden this Meepo has seven k health. Then you can't get the kill. Absolutely not. And they, they immediately turn tail and run as well, which is completely the correct decision because there's nothing you can do as the Meepo unfolds again. As uh, oh, that, that right there, I think, was the sad chronosphere, but we, yeah. we will not get to be sad about that chronosphere once again. Because I think it's honestly time to uh, to congratulate Egypt here on their win because they that was just really well played in the end. And I love that Meepo pick. I love the flexibility coming out from their players, just all shifting up their lanes so you can get your offlaner in that starring role on the Meepo that he is clearly very proficient at. So, yeah. yeah, a very, very strong win there from Egypt, I'd say. And a bit of a scary one. Now, everybody going forward has to keep in mind, like, oh, by the way, <laughs> they play Meepo. Yeah, there's a Meepo pick in there, you know, by the way. And you don't, you know, it's not the actual mid laner, but it will be going mid, you know, maybe mid, mid, mid more often than not. And, yeah, like you say, being able to have that flexibility in a team. So Egypt, they're going to qualify. They take the win. Um, they get themselves to the top of the board there as well. So they are through here. Um, but yeah, the, the team themselves having that flexibility to be able to shift the roles and have the confidence to say that um, this is a, you know, the, the third and final game of the series. This is a series decider and we will be able to shake it up. That is a, a really good way to play. I mean, you know, to see them do that, actually see them get that last match, get the win that way. Um, that's going to be confident inspiring for themselves as well. So, yeah, deservedly, they do move on. and I think they've got that qualifier spot in the bag, though. Yeah, they definitely should, and I am I'm not uh, not all upset. Like if I think back at the South Asia qualifier that I casted previously, and if I look at the um, the quality coming out from Egypt here as well, I do think that they would still uh, have a decent chance against some of those teams. So yeah. probably a lot of experience for them in the tournament to come. Of course, like you will eventually be going up against literal DPC teams made out of Filipinos, but you know. That's uh, that's for another day, I think. We're not that far in just yet. No, they can take the victory. You know, they can be happy with that and what they've done today. You know, they, they get to be proud. There was a bit of a, a longer break as well. So I wasn't sure how they were going to respond to that one, if they were going to maybe switch off a little bit. But no, they maybe got, you know, a bit of rest and got a bit of a food and, you know, mental reset as well coming into the series. And they were able to pull it out of the bag. So well done to Egypt. Uh, they will be moving through. Um, and we will should be able to throw it back to the studio soon, I do believe, as we are going to say goodbye here. At least for today, there's still plenty more of Dota to come over this weekend but for now thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time we go live but for now goodbye
Ok, ok. So, guys, uh, Egypt was finally able to win this matchup against uh, Algeria. It was a very tight scoreline, 2-1, uh, but they were able to do it and uh, qualify for the main event. So, uh, congratulations on their side. Uh, with uh, Morocco and uh, Algeria, we will see this matchup tomorrow uh, at 4 p.m. And, yeah, there is no other spot uh, for these uh, two teams to actually be able to qualify. But just for the ranking side, this matchup will be played tomorrow at 4 uh, well, thank you very much for watching our stream today. Uh, we will